All right, folks, welcome back. It's day 23. As always, we're trying to keep this streak alive. Once again, Akudes, Onnichiwa, Yokoso. So, let's do some total recall from yesterday. These lessons are getting quite long. These units. Yesterday, I shared my thoughts about my deep rabbit hole. That is the word. That is the, I guess, the function. Function character deaths, right? Did a little bit of story time. It was been a while since I provided some story context or some educational material, right? So let's see if I remember this stuff. It's gonna be a mix of Japanglish all over the place. And maybe some uh kanji kana all over the place because we're trying to piece everything together until you really use these things it'll take a while to really iron out all the details generally uh, in this case most people would use the thing that they are most comfortable with and then move along with that like i kind of generally like to connect everything so i like to be able to visualize the romaji with the kana with the kanji as opposed to just going with whatever the final end game version is. And that's just something that I'm more interested in. It won't really make me a much a faster learner per se. It's a more enjoyable experience. So let me think about let's think about like vocab, right? vocab um something i can dredge up it's probably not gonna be written in kana or kanji for that matter i don't actually think we got in kanji formally so we haven't looked at our kanji section yet i don't think there's any new formal kanji so the kanji we got was this and send uh written this way and thousand right send Um, whoops, I think it's actually flat. Hold up. Let me try to pull it. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is, this should be shorter, but that's fine. <laughs> Kind of hard reaching to the top left of the pad. I gotta shift my, shift my uh, resting arm, but that's okay. This is close enough. Uh, Yaku, yeah, Yaku. Yaku or hundred. Okay. Um what else can I bring up? Uh this is from two days ago. And then it's old, and then we add the we add the e to make it the an e adjective. So it's being used as an adjective here. 
and we have oops out of stroke order my bad All right who do we so who do we is old it was from two days ago oh right uh the thing they use is the F. So, Huru. Hurui. Hurui. Mm. Oh, this next one's a bit rough. Let's try it. We actually kind of, uh, we did all the kanji, these kanji things, largely for the first time. I saw the stroke order. Uh, something like this, right? Something like this. It's it's a little off, but that's okay. And then this is this needs to be slightly bigger, extended down. But this is, and then we add this to it. We're using this as an adjective, so right. So, uh, atara, atarashi, ara, atarashi. Um, so let's. Do the my A's are bad. Sorry, my odds are bad. Uh oh, that might be the wrong stroke order, but it's fine. Uh, uh oh. We'll put a placeholder here. Atarashi. It'll come back to me when I see it, I suppose. Um, I like to say, all right. Atara, Atara. And. Yeah, see, I now nowadays I just prefer to write the kanji because this is where we actually formally written anything. So all the stuff that's formally written, so we're going, we're uh, exhibiting that same pattern of you're choosing a preference as opposed to writing it out. So I can see the kana, but rarely pull it up, and I see the kanji more often. And whenever we practice and it goes back to the kana, it takes me a really long time to find the kanji. I mean, the the kana, when we go back where it's, and it just shows the kana, it takes me a while because I think of the kanji before the kana. That's kind of a loose end. We'll probably practice some kana. Now I have a desire to practice kana over kanji. Uh, it's To me, I like being comprehensive but not com comprehensive as I go as opposed to being comprehensive as whatever is efficient right and then I like to say this is uh new atara is opposite so we're learning antonyms right antonyms are great I can't spell antonyms though we're just gonna say this is how you spell it. Oh, it might be antonyms, antonyms. English, English is rough too. I, I'm starting to slowly fade away <laughs> in English. Okay, so um, this brings up a great point, but let me continue. I think that we have five. I could have, I'm pretty sure we have five kanji so far in unit eight. I'm missing one. Let me think of what that might be. 
but largely it's these we'll stick with these these are the four kanji um i want to make a comment about this stuff um yesterday we had a great discussion but constantly a point that was brought up a, a ton of times in our discussion or one way it's a one way it wasn't a discussion it's a one way exchange because basically when i was getting to the point and stuff someone kept bringing up the the whole thing we'll talk about it. actually let's save it for a little bit later well i'm gonna continue recalling before we go into that i don't want it to be too long today i kind of really want to learn some japanese at the moment gotta focus up i do want to do a little bit of a summary of some thoughts from yesterday maybe it'll be 30 minutes 30 minutes to an hour uh so now no specific order what else did we learn oh uh cheap so every time i acquire new vocabulary i go the other direction i start with the english word cheap then i try to envision the kana Uh, Yasui. Yeah, Yasui. I think that's cheap. Uh, some of these might be mismatched. I just have a picture of the kana and the English word, so they might not be attached at the moment. So we do have the word for expensive. That's a blank right now, but we do have the word for expensive. Hey, Indy. Thank you, Deska. So we have expensive and then we'll put blank here. Just as a visual placeholder, I must fill it in in my bookshelf here. Uh, the nice thing about teaching based on antonyms is you associate the names in the first step. But this is always my first step. You take the English. Second step is the kana. Right. And then the Romaji. This is the order I have now. And then once it's act acquired, I go from Kana to Romaji back to English. So most of these things up here with the Kanji, you have one last pivot, which is Kanji. And Kanji can lead to Romaji and English. So this is a pivot so in both directions. What the heck? And once it's acquired, I go backwards as opposed to forwards. Uh, so that's Genki Deska, right? The first one. What is the second one? Or Genki Desu? No, or I'm doing well. I don't know. I'm healthy now. And then what was the... Boss? Oh, wow. Wait. Do I rec- well, she must, uh, she must, so it's like a question. The first one is Daijobu. Ah, I keep forgetting, it's Daijobu, okay. Yeah, I've seen Daijobu in Kana, uh, uh, just recently I saw Daijobu in Kana. Okay, so, uh, okay, so it's the last boo. Wait, I don't understand where the boo is coming from. The second is today I walked. Uh, so the shimas, the shimas helps with the verbiage. I walked outside. I see. Is outside the first kanji? Oh no! Wait, today. 
Wait, today I walk is the second one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then outside is the third. Or, no, oh, no, no. What is the third one? Something me. And you? No, that can't be right. <laughs> it's good to see these things. I see the root words. So all the, like, the particle modifiers and stuff. That's not the non-stem stuff which is good picking up on the shimas and the knee and the des right wait or not the des wait yes the des wait so is it like uh the first one that's all daijobu like the whole thing is daijobu or is it Daijobu Des? You're you're just being polite, right? You're asking me, or you're uh, you're saying you're oak. Okay. I also have a question about Daijobu. Actually, Daijobu, Daijobu is is are you saying with the Des you're just in, inferring that you are okay, Daijobu Des, or is that why the desk is there? I'm doing okay? No, that's not... <laughs> well, eventually, eventually. I'll just remember that as Daijobu and... Day I walk. Thing. And Soto. Okay. Got it, got it. You're saying I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's serving as the copula. Okay. Um. So we have cheap, expensive. I have no idea. It's going to kind of have to come back to me. And then we had what? I still got to remember uh, Kuroi, right? So, so far, I'm at the Roma, Roma G stage in this one. Kuroi, which is black. I have a lot to say. I, I thought about a lot of things as we we're learning the, these things. So, Kuro, Kuroi. The second, the second thing should be... Da. Oh, because uh, you're conjugating it, right? You're conjugating it to you have walked already or something like that you're you're changing the tense or today you have walked or you walked today or however you want to translate it to english Uroi. yep I've taken a walk. Yes, I've taken a walk outside today. Yeah, the shta, uh, the shta is the conjugation of des, or one of the conjugations of where des is the predicate. Yeah, that stuff was all yesterday. Yeah, sample, sample is taking a walk. I see. I see the knee particle in there. So today. Sample today blank ni sample shta is is the two kanjis before shta sample and then of course today is the first kanji because you want to put the that there and then the Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, lots of guessing. It's all right, though. Oh. Nice. I'm glad you also... Oh, so here's the thing, right, Indy? You are also getting a chance to use your kanji. Just saying. You get to use your Japanese, too, in the same, in the same time. Now that is how you get used to language. Uh... Let me throw in a few things though. Let me recall a few more things before we start entering chat mode. Um, 
Cheap, expensive. Oh, hideous. Uh, Dasai. 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 Yeah, so we have hideous. I'm not gonna write the kana. Oh, but Dasai. They're almost simultaneous. When I'm thinking of hideous, I, I thought of Dasai first. Actually, slightly. Because it reminds me of docile, which has really no relevance to, <laughs> to uh, docile. Dasai. Um, we got some, like, objects, right? Uh, Doresu. The reason why I remember Doresu before dress is because I keep thinking it's Doresu. But it's Doresu. Doresu. Uh, I struggled with, uh, Ja, uh, Jaquit. Uh, Jaque. Yeah, I keep saying Jaque instead of Jaque. And that actually deals with English accents a lot of times. So, jacket, uh, jacketto, right? Jacketto, jacket. Uh, jacketto. Let's throw in some sentence related stuff. Some sentence related stuff. So, uh, wachotto, right? Wachoto. I'm at the Roma G stage of Wachoto. So. Whoops. Wa. I did that backwards. No one see. No one saw that. <laughs> Uh, uh, cho, so cho, and then uh, I actually didn't ever formally learn this stuff, but I'm guessing you put this thing here at half, and then to. Blank. <laughs> So, wachoto, and then we did like they they really grind in the like the whole uh sono sono kono thing, like tons of sono kono things, uh, which makes them more it turns the thing into a subject in its position, and then you can add a topic. Right, so these these were often in the subject position by adding an object to it, and then they expanded it by adding a topic by combining it with the wa particle. So you can expand and create that. So you have a topic into a subject, which is combined with an action or predicate. Hey, not. Yeah, I think this is good enough. Uh, I'm missing a lot, but it'll all come back to me and I will talk about it. Uh, Total Recall. See, one of the comments I really... One of the things that maybe it's a little frustrating to me... It, I, I haven't ever really expressed it frustration too much when it comes to learning. Uh, learning... See, learning is active, in my opinion, right? And then once you stop learning, you're going into storage. And storage is a passive thing a lot of times. And then when you try to recall, is going from a storage position, uh, a passive position to an active position. And one of the, this process is to me uh, the most underutilized. It's the most under practice situation I have for myself and possibly for other people but I don't want to speak for other people and the reason why is total recall the recall is only for me is only as effective as how often I recall it so if I'm constantly taking doresu jaketo uh, jaketo and like dase like if I have been recalling it frequently and I get faster at recalling. Um, 
unfortunately when i'm taking the store taking it out of storage it has to be an activity that spawns the recall so storage uh this recall needs an active trigger and that's why i'm practicing this every every day i start stream i'm practicing total recall because even english when someone asks me something with uh if i'm sitting here trying to create something right like creative writing if you ever want to test yourself as a native speaker do creative writing it takes me a really long time to come up with something on, on the spot because my recall is active it, it needs a proper trigger so if someone asks me to say something or do something or create something with a topic in mind then it's fine because it's triggered when i'm trying to come up with something out of blank space that's kind of like the last stage and i don't think that has a very little i personally i would exclude that from fluency because generally speaking even native speakers if you ask them to creatively come up with something using their language you get what i would typically say writer's block when you have no no uh core of inspiration and that's what i'm practicing here total recall basically out of the blue find as many associated things as you can from yesterday without any context or trigger and then the moment we get into the lesson it'd be like oh yeah this oh yeah that's like that's kind of so if there's any part of thing that i feel like i am frustrated about with the way the things i give up right i focus a lot on active learning so i just don't have the powerhouse anymore to just brute force things and oftentimes people love to use this the brute force method where you memorize things and then you just pop them out memorize them in a vacuum and pop them out and that's usually something grammar is excellent at so if you and this will go into my little segue of yesterday's discussion so yesterday's discussion, well, not really discussion, but yesterday's one-sided comments was the idea of grammar points. So I thought about this yesterday a little bit. Today you've discovered that I need to take more time when I'm thinking of, about Japanese. That's great. Lecture, sermon, uh, sort of, just a little bit of refractory, uh, reflection but yes we'll keep this to like i don't know what this topic is called so i don't have like a video idea for this topic but we'll see where it goes i haven't prepped this i actually slept kind of well yesterday so one-sided the this is the phrase the phrase that really spawned my thoughts here are called grammar points and it's not going where it thinks it's going however a lot of times you know, we want abstraction. We want abstraction so that they there's less interference, in my opinion. So this is, bear with me, it's kind of, uh, it's going to take a little bit. So abstraction has less interference. So for example, uh, when we were learning a bunch of things, we we're talking about deaths, right? We were talking about deaths yesterday. A lot of times it keeps going Duolingo, Duolingo teaches, teaches things. And for those people who are focused on grammar points, you would put in quotes, teaches things, right? Teaches things without grammar points, without grammar points, right? So here's the thing. Um, oftentimes, as we grow older and we acquire more knowledge, a lot of times teaching is the act of deciphering something or being able to fundamentally create something. And grammar points, grammar points allow us to construct something, right? And that feels more like teaching. When you're learning something, you want to be able to construct something creatively, like a sentence. Sentence is one of the more like a sentence structure or an idea uh, gives framework. 
right? And oftentimes it feels less satisfying when you have to think of words abstractly where they have no tether or no puzzle or structure. And I absolutely feel that way. I There's emotionally, I'm definitely with everyone who has that. And of course, like most things, when I feel a certain way, right? And I, I have to test it. And I'm going to say my classical phrase, how do you test things? Null hypothesis testing. So the hypothesis here is, why do I feel like I'm just struggling with total recall because I'm adding a lot of things that Duolingo is not right at the moment, which is association things that and to associate and bring things together, grammar points help a lot. Grammar points is one of the foundations of abstraction. It creates a framework that then you can put everything in. It's like having a bookshelf. If you have a bookshelf that's organized, you can slot in and categorically help yourself sort all the craziness, right? All the chaos. You, you'd be like, here's a new word. I'm going to shove it into this category and it helps organize things. It's one of the wonderful things about getting older and having knowledge. You start sorting things, right? Sort. Sort categorically. And I most definitely love doing this. In fact, I love doing this so much. I sacrifice what it's like to be an observ observational learner. So what is an observational learner in my opinion? Well, when you were a kid, this is your only method. Your only method is ob observational learning. When you become an adult, when you grow older, you rely more on this idea of sorting categorically. So you rely on your experience and that is a great thing to do. So I would, I do actually highly recommend that if Duolingo was open to it, they would do two different types of tracks. One, they'll ask loosely what the age of the person is, like what their experience is. So in there's a little like questionnaire or survey in the, in the beginning before you started Duolingo. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't too comfortable with disclosing their age, but let's just be real. They probably already know your age at this point on the internet, right? Um, so, uh, inconsequentially, you can reveal your age and pass a certain age, uh, using grammatical points as the foundation, uh, accelerates an adult's learning process. It's you using what I used to say a lot or yesterday, it's using the foundation of your knowledge to create framework. And that framework is what you do best kids. When you're a kid, you have zero framework. You are completely observational. So what am I doing here is that I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell people that, or I'm trying to demonstrate that I'm actually rejecting doing this grammar point thing, like this grammar point approach because, and I said this so many times yesterday that Duolingo's target audience and it's uh, organization is kind of focused on a very specific subset, which is like younger people and like young adults. And yes, most older people who are experts or multilingual or poly will have criticisms about this. And is it intended that way? Well, I like to challenge that it's, it's probably intended this way. You they're focused on observational learning versus grammar points. So they didn't start with grammar points. Look at the evidence, right? Stop saying grammar points. If the unit literally says it doesn't go over grammar. So how do you evaluate something if you're not willing to even participate in its method, which is what led to the whole desk discussion and whatnot. So right now I'm doing observational learning and that's actually something that I really enjoy. You do that in video games. 
if you play if you pull up a favorite puzzle game the first thing you have to do is observational learning that's it like all the rules are out the window so pull up a puzzle game right go into talos principle or portal even talos principle and portal operates on some sort of grammar point right like for example talos principle operates on some fundamentals of light so you still have some grammar points that you can bring in and grammar points in in video games are considered legacy skills so in portal you know what goes up must come down you know that objects preclude light Talos principle you know walls and objects preclude light but then they change the rules and those rules require observational learning and generally speaking observational learning leads to the proper development of problem solving active problem solving and critical thinking which nowadays when people rely incredibly on explicit instructions and rules it bleeds into their communication skills it bleeds into their situa situational awareness like when you talk to someone who is emphasizing grammar points you are talking to someone who doesn't react dynamically to communication so when a when uh when a conversation is starting to go south their adaption is just to follow the rules follow through with the rules that they have as opposed to dynamically altering your your like communication on the spot so kids are incredible observational learners when they screw up they immediately stop screwing up because they're relying on observational meaning like they fall down this is bad let's change it right now you have no interference of what you call grammar points or uh, grammar points or legacy skills. It takes a long time for, in, as you grow older, to un, quote unquote, untrain something or change something. And I said the whole thing that I change things. I don't undo them. But changing things still take a quite a long time. And the more experience you have, interference from grammar points, the more difficult it is. So no, in a way, I don't focus. I do find that as an adult, if you participate in observational learning, you do actually remember a lot more things. However, later on, you do have to reconcile all your interfering knowledge with the way you're observationally learning. So I am not concerned right now about understanding grammar. I am concerned about how much I totally recall in abstraction, in a vacuum because I spent this evening or the previous evening and this morning doing just that because I was curious how do I get this experience where I understand something with zero grammar points guess what yesterday I, I've talked about this a lot uh, someone mentioned that they speak a lot of languages and that's great but for me Fujianese is the language I speak arguably as much as English or be and here every day I have zero grammar points there are no grammar points in my understanding of Fujianese and the reason or I want to say near zero because I'm illiterate right I can't read Mandarin doesn't help now here's the thing does it stop me from constructing sentences no, it does not. So what is that? That's observational learning. And I still do that today. So I, uh, as I'm learning Japanese, I, I have always wondered, like, how, how can I structure my Fujianese with that? And I went through and I told myself, what? I looked up, like, what kind of vocabs do I even know in Fujianese? And sure enough, if I Google this, like, you know, just rapidly run down word banks, as much word banks as, as I can, I was surprised that I knew nearly 99% of whatever is available for Fujianese. And it's really just casual stuff. Like, you can't get advanced Fujianese stuff because it's not, 
formally there right so just because i don't know what the like when someone puts like refrigerator in front of me i'm like i don't remember what that sounds like in fujianese and the moment they say it's like that's refrigerator so this is what kids do they observationally learn you duolingo starts with that that's what they do they give you sushi ocha no context no structure it's the it's the raw nature of you have to be in the mindset that you're trying to remember those things you're being exposed to those things so the difference here is instead of focusing on actively engaging like some sort of grammatical or higher level function they're engaging you by mere exposure And what is this concept of mere exposure? How effective is this? Well, you watch anime, don't you? The way you train your ear is by mere exposure. My parents, I cannot recall some of the specific words in Fujonese, but I know when I hear them say something, I know what it means. And I can't even express it back. Like, so if they say something, I can express it back perfectly with a native language that I can recall more efficiently. So I will use English to respond. And it comes off as Fujo ni glish, you know, Fujo glish kind of thing. So here's the idea that we balance, at least, at least as adults, we balance observational learning to intellectual learning. I'll just call it intellectual, like higher intellectual learning. And the more I think about it, the more I ask myself, do I understand how to construct a sentence in Fujonese? And do I have grammar points for Fujonese? And it come sure enough, it was really fast that I have maybe 2% understanding of what sentence grammar points in Fujianese. However, I have at least a 90% success rate at communicating what I desire to my parents and their friends. So the, an the answer, so this, what this does is this supports the null hypothesis even though i'm an adult who feels that i need grammar points i need structures grammar is my favorite part of language it's the it's like the technical aspect i'm a very technical person but this supports the null hypothesis that do you need grammar points to become as the starting point to build a foundation on how to understand to communicate someone through a language the answer is no and guess what not only this, the way you learn as a kid supports the null hypothesis. You start with vocab because you're a blank slate, right? You're you're a uh, observational learner. And then you learn grammar. So what did Duolingo do? Just that. The thing is, I'm an adult. Lots of people who are second languaging right second languaging are at least young adults so effectively their first criticism would be where are my grammar points and why did i mention the route that i understand things so at first i said i start with english then I jump to Kana. Now I jump back to Romaji. Right? Well, if you think about the process of the way you're thinking, you could say uh, of language, you could say vocab, grammar, and speech. We'll just say speech. We're not going to even go to writing. Writing is, in my arguably, kind of interchangeable with speech but i actually think the true end game is creative writing or creative speech so they're kind of like 
up to your aptitude and exposure. Um, generally, though, now, since you're already here, guys, you know, as adults, you're already at speech and writing, you naturally want to go backwards to the closest thing, which is grammar. Then you go back to vocab. So you ask yourself, what is the most challenging thing about an English speaker trying to build up Japanese? Vocab. That's when they give up. So yeah, they start grammar. Mm, give me that good stuff. Because it's the closest thing you have most practice with. It's, it's, uh, I'm talking about the psychology of comfort. So yes, I would love if Duolingo went from taking, uh, starting with grammar because one step back from what I typically do in my native language now is work on speech and writing. I don't spend 99% of my time building up my vocabulary. I spend 99% of my time speaking and writing. And the next closest thing to that is understanding the grammar structure. And then it's vocab. So we retroactively go back because that's the closest step. It's like expecting someone to say, hey, can you go from kanji to romaji for me? Well, you would go from kanji to ana, then to romaji. Because the closest thing from kanji to romaji is kana. So as you go further away, it's kind of like someone who's getting older. They are farther from their younger self. So it's going to take a longer time to establish empathy to someone who is farther in age. But as you go further and further away, it's the human condition. You're traveling backwards to the closest things you have because memory consolidates that way. When you do total recall, you're recalling the tethers that lead back to that memory. And that's typically what I do. So for this, yes, I am learning much slower because I'm doing something that I haven't done in a long while. And adults, the older you are, the more language you have acquired, you're likely to have the same criticism. Like I would learn faster if they just started with grammar points first. Grammar points provides the foundation of which I can learn anything and sort them. So actually to me, I am expecting most multilingual people to complain that they don't start with grammars, sentence structure, and like building blocks first, building concepts before they start vocabulary. Now, how does this relate to why I thought about Fujonese? I know nothing about sentence structure. It just comes out, right? So here's an example. Uh, I was trying, as I'm learning my Japanese, I'm thinking, can I say that in Fujinese? So let's, uh, a lot of, to, I was watching, uh, I, I'm going to shout out this guy because he's, there's just something about him, what, the, the trend, in my opinion, I think this guy started the trend, de facto, he's the zine, like the core of the current viral trend, and I'm sure some of you have already heard of this guy, but he goes by Xiao Ma, right? I think that's what he called himself, Xiao Ma, right? And occasionally, whenever I do language, one of his YouTube videos are going to come up. And it's so uh, wonderful because what he learns is he observe, in my opinion, he observationally learn uh, conversational, conversational, like fundamentals or fundamental conversational, uh, phrases first, and then use that as the building block. So as opposed to going through like tens of hours, of uh, focusing on structural structural and grammatical points right away right so how did i learn fujonese and still retain at least 99 percent of the casual fujonese stuff without any understanding of grammar points 
I started here. Conversational fundamentals through observational learning. I see that my mother constantly say, uh, constantly say like, when I need going nowhere, right? Uh, how do I do that? Well, I didn't learn it by using my intellectual noggin and worry about structural grammatical stuff. I heard it a bunch of times and I know when to use it and how to structure it. And eventually through observational learning, you actually develop patterns yourself. And those patterns lead to grammatical understanding. So when someone says, oh yeah, well, that's not how DES works or that's not how the WA particles works, but it's a pattern that exists. And that pattern, understanding when that pattern occurs, you can easily get to something you're used to, which is structural and grammatical. You make the transition to that quite a lot easier if you spend more time observing, seeing the patterns, and doing that if you're not if you're not observing the patterns then i can see it can be very tough because you won't be aware of quote unquote your bad habits as in you won't be aware why you see this pattern or you do this pattern that's a little different from observational learning you're not actually learning anything you're just doing the thing without knowing why you're doing it so when you know why it's easier to flip on the switch where you're saying or it's easier to put the puzzles together so you have all these puzzle pieces you don't know how they fit together but you definitely know that you notice the grooves of the sides of the puzzle pieces but once you start really narrowing down you know where they place together so when i was reading the grammar on desks it was a, it was a walk in a park in my opinion the lots of the like comments are like oh yeah but bear with me this can be hard to understand and stuff it's like well i've seen the pattern like for 20 days straight i've seen so many patterns that duolingo has had and that's how i learned fujinese uh legitimately i have no formal more school schooling and here's here's the weirdest thing i don't know why this sounds normal to me but if you be thinking like a lot of times grammatical points give you structure, right? We think about, uh, I don't know, noun, noun, verb, uh, noun, verb, object, right? English. And then we think of noun, object, verb, or predicate, if you want. Some people are pretty stickler about that, but predicate. Predicate, right? Japanese. At least that's like a fundamental starting place if you were gonna do a lecture on, hey, we're not gonna tell you any vocab. Here's the grammatical structure. This is where you, this is commonly where you start if you're an English speaker. Say, like, hey, noun verb object becomes noun object verb for the most part. That's where our first building block is. No vocab. And what happens here is, you do a trade-off. They'll insert Japanese words right in here. And what happens is you learn a lot of grammar and you learn no vocab. It, it's a trade-off. And the idea is to find out which way you learn better. And I would argue that adults, yes, if you go to grammar points, they might absorb enough patterns in vocab to remember vocab words, right? On the flip side, a younger person will be exposed to vocab and they will notice patterns, which then leads to grammar development. So let me do a demonstration for Fujianese. So for Fujianese, I can't even explain these things yet, but let's use a Japanese phrase that I learned recently. Well, actually, I, I can't even do that. Like, I can't even recall. So let's talk about eating, right? Uh, uh, tabe mas, right? Tabe, uh, tabe mas, uh, to eat. Um, a lot of times you would ask, are you hungry, right? Or have you eaten yet? And in Fujianese, it would be, uh, uh, uh or ni right you're at you're literally asking the person you're 
is your stomach empty? Right? And then you start thinking, oh yeah, so in the question, oh, what did I literally say? I say, I said your stomach is, is like, I'm saying your stomach empty. Like, and then I add the is, is your stomach empty? So you're starting to, now you're starting to think, oh yeah, what are the grammar points? Like, how did I know, like, to ask someone if their stomach is empty or, or if they're hungry, do I put the predicates there? Yeah, that's how you say it in Japanese also. Yeah, so so I'm like, so how do you know? And then here's, here's, now here's even, even crazier things. Um, there's evidence where I would structure something in the English structure. And, um, like, um, like, I want to go outside. I literally said, I want to go outside. That that's it. Like in that order, I want to go outside. Why shouldn't And now you start thinking, what are the grammar points for that? Like, is it just because the whole thing is a predicate? So is it, I, I want to go out. Want to go out is the entire predicate, right? So then you're gonna say, oh well, that's just a sentence that has a noun and an object. Which is still like Japanese, right? You could make that argument. What am I doing here? I'm making grammar rules. I'm making observations about patterns and making grammar rules to fit those patterns. That's what kids do. Kids do that. You observe patterns and you try to explain the patterns. And that's what I did with DES. That's how I learned about DES. I saw as many patterns, I spent more time looking at the patterns than thinking about all the grammar rules in which it fits. So when you spend a lot of effort doing that, you're thinking like an adult. You're thinking about, oh, how is this related to English? Or how is this related? And then you start using nouns, verbs like, oh, this is a noun, this is a verb. That's not what I was thinking when I was learning for the first 20 days. The first unit, I was not thinking that. I was thinking this vocab word right here is always in this position. Like always at end of sentence. And then sometimes it's wrong, right? Sometimes I don't have a desk there and somehow it's wrong. And sometimes that's pattern recognition. I looked at the pattern. And then when you go and look at grammar, it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's great. And it's like, wait a minute, but there's something off. What about this situation? And then you go look for it and everything, things start falling into place. And that's why I loved when I learned about English, I had tons of vocabulary though. The, like in English, I talked about this already. Someone asked me what my English comprehension is. I don't think my English comprehension was great. Like in terms of grammar points, my vocab was off the charts. Like I just soaked in vocab. So here's a, here's a interesting story. Cause I still remember it because it was the only time in my life where I met with a, uh, psychologist. Oops. Wait, what the heck? Hello? Oh, okay. So it's the only time in my life that I met with a psychologist. Actually, weirdly enough, I want to say I was between the age of 14 and 15, possibly, uh, is when I transferred uh, between schools or between areas, really, between schools. And one of the tasks was they asked me to define words, like define English words, because we are in English, right? Define words. And oftentimes they would ask me, uh, like words that I couldn't possibly like 
a kid wouldn't really use these words yet, right? Like, uh, we would go with, like, superfluous. And the task was not to define it in terms of grammar points. I'm saying grammar points here to illustrate a point. All right? When you think of grammar, you think of rules. You think of what it is and what it isn't. So oftentimes when someone see a word, they're trying to define the word by what they remember. Grammar points is based on total recall. You either remember the grammar points or you don't. It's either you remember the whole thing and it's right, or you don't remember the whole thing and it's wrong. When I was asked how I define these words and I don't know anything about the word, I the the person told me just say what's on your mind. So, you know, I say like super. Hmm. I know the super. Super is like extra. Right? Extra. And then fluous. I, I mean, that's kind of like fluid. Right? Well, if I have too much extra fluid, then too much? So, too much. What's another word for too much? I mean, like, excessive? I knew the word excessive already. And that's how, what I gave the person. I told the person that I would probably describe it, this word probably means something excessive. What's the definition of superfluous? It has no, it has, uh, it has feelings. I, I'm going to say feelings of being excessive. This is a memory that I remember very clearly. Like the way I defined words when I was a kid, I took, so I'm using my observational learning, but at the same time, I'm using parts of it with grammar points that I have. Right. And what happens to that? What does that tell the psychologist, at least in my opinion, because I've never seen the psychologist again or talked to the psychologist. What I would imagine is this is telling the psychologist that I'm thinking older than I am, like my kids, kids my age. And personally, that's a really, really maybe a little disrespectful generalization of what an intelligent quotient is. So basically like what are you what age are you roughly thinking at over comparison of the people your age? And the intelligent quotient just you know, it's a ratio between those two. That's why it's called an intelligent quotient. So the idea is I was spotted as a gifted person only because the way I, the manner in which I tackle problems involves both the processes. Like instead of saying, uh, oftentimes when you ask a kid, like how you define superfluous and they just say, I don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. That's, that's grammar points. If you don't know the grammar points, you don't know the grammar points. Uh, if someone asks me, how is desk being used? I would observationally, I would observationally tell them all the times that I've seen desks. Like all the times that I notice desks, right? All the times I use it and describe some of the patterns that I've noticed. This is, this is problem solving. And critical thinking it's not it's not a projection of biases when you think of projection of biases you're talking about opinions and opinions shape how critical you are so when someone keeps saying duolingo oh yeah, there it goes again duolingo introducing something without grammar points it's like that is how you learn, for sure, as you grow older. And it also tells me that this person is not, no longer an observational learner. And that's fine. It, it works because by that time, you probably accrued, it, accrued so much knowledge 
that you can more or less not learn to learn anymore. Right? You don't have to relearn anything. <laughs> there I as far as unlearning things, I'm not a fan of unlearning things. But I am a fan of reconditioning and practicing foundations. That involves relearning things as well. How does one relearn to be an observational learner? Stop like you try very, very hard not to be an intuitive learner, right? Grammar points struck intuition because intuition is built, built on XP. So for us, people who are very successful, probably at learning a lot of language, you probably develop enough strategies to intuitively build on, on top of that. So yeah, I would start with grammar points. If the last thing you did that was very successful are grammar points. For me, what I'm doing now with Duolingo, I am struggling quite a bit. Like if I had to be, uh, if I had to be frank, I'm not going to use the word TBH or the phrase TBH, but to be frank with myself, I'm learning at a very slow pace. Is that a problem? Absolutely no. Why is that? Because it wasn't ever about speed. Why isn't it about speed? You might ask. Is because I'm learning differently than I usually do. Even though I'm trying to add all the things I normally do what does this what what is this it's called a challenge and if you take up that challenge voluntarily it leads to good stress if you don't take up that challenge voluntarily it leads to bad stress what does bad stress project as Bias criticisms. Emotional compromise. Right? Bad criticisms. Uh, emotional compromise. And what do I mean by bias? Sorry, not bad. Bias criticisms. You're looking at what lacks. What lacks which ironically is probably what you lack because it's a projection of what you desire. And also it leads to destructive, destructive advice. So let me, uh, let me illustrate some things. So, oh yeah, this Duolingo doesn't, uh, doesn't teach language the way I want it to teach. So when I go and use Duolingo, I feel like I don't have control over how I'm being challenged. So Duolingo is forcing me to do this boring, inane thing that I don't want to do. That's a challenge, by the way. Leads to bad stress because you have no control over it. You have no control of the way Duolingo uh, do things, regardless. So what you do is you accumulate bad stress, and then you start making biased criticisms like, oh, yeah, you know, this is not the best way to learn things. This and then you project your emotional compromise, right? You're upset that Duolingo sucks. So you provide criticism based on that and say, that's great. That's healthy. You're allowed to express yourself. But what it isn't is that it's destructive criticism because it's a projection of what you lack. You are not making Duolingo work for you. You want... uh. You are not making Duolingo work by what they offer. You want Duolingo to offer you what you know works. So what happens is it's a projection of what you lack. You cannot make Duolingo work. So you focus on all the things that it lacks and then offer destructive advice as in, hey, oh man, Duolingo should definitely change up their section one all altogether because 
the science, which is you, you're the scientist, you have determined that this is not the best way. Versus what I would probably argue the true science is that in any parallel universe, there's absolutely no way you have more data as a single person than the people at Duolingo. So when the, and I just read this recently, the path, this learning path was changed like not too long ago, like two years ago. And people made, a, it stirred up a lot of controversy. However, let's be, if you want to be scientific about this, you cannot say in any realm of logic that you as a person have more data than Duolingo. Like the organization Duolingo has far more data than you. So what they did was they changed the path and order of what things are learned based on the interpretive nature of their data, like how they're interpreting it, right? Do you have more data than Duolingo? You don't. Alternatively though, it would be kind of cool if they like shared the data and then you can make a constructive criticism, right? Like other linguists can look at the same data set and see, oh yeah, okay, I see where it's coming. So there's no transparency. So transparency is a little bit weak. However, we remember that Duolingo is also a business and that data allows them to continuously get an edge, right? They are entitled to that data because you are using their product. There's a lot of morals and ethics and stuff involved. But what you can say is, if you think taking on a challenge, constantly using language that's indicative of bad stress, offering biased criticisms, and therefore projecting your own inadequacies, in my opinion, and what I mean by inadequacies, I mean these people feel negative when things don't work out for them. Fair enough. It's Duolingo's fault. It's not your fault. That's, you got to hear that. You got to hear that to yourself. Are you blaming the system or yourself? Regardless, you're justified in feeling that way because it's part of the human condition. But no, for sure, that generally speaking, the stuff that comes out of your mouth is destructive. You're trying to change something based on your own preferences. Now, where does this go for me? For me, this challenge has been a challenge I've taken up voluntarily and I feel great about it. Like I'm stressed out pretty much every day now because the last two, I have to say in specifically unit eight, whew, I've slowed down a lot, like incredibly a lot. And I have no problems with it. It's not a deficiency, in my opinion, of Duolingo. It's not a deficiency of Duolingo. Why did I slow down? It's because the skill that they're trying to tax on me, I'm just terrible at it now. I I'm so terrible at just taking in things and then relying on pattern recognition. It is so exhausting. Um, the, the easy way out is to be told why the pattern exists. And sure enough, this summarizes, I would say 80% of advice that I have been given in the last 22 days. Just it's easier to help someone by telling them what the pattern is, like explaining what the pattern is. And I absolutely agree with you. And I absolutely love it. Like I love when people feel that they can't help but alleviate the stress. I just want to make it clear that when people see me stressed out, they think it's negative stress most of the time. And I see negative stress. And when someone goes out of their way to passionately do that, I let them do that. You should do that because you're expressing negative stress as in all the bad things that happen to you. Like, hey, I want to help you out with this advice because when I was learning Japanese, this made me feel bad and I don't want you to feel bad about it. But remember that I know I'm not representative of a lot of people, but as a learner, someone who desires to learn, 
it's all good stress. It might seem like I'm exhausted and stuff, like, but it's good. I feel good doing something that I suck at. It's not Duolingo that sucks. Is I haven't done the way Duolingo suggested, and Duolingo has more stats. They legitimately have more stats than me. No matter what I say, no matter how long I lived, they are exponentially getting tons of data compared to me. So if I had to be the most logical person, I can at least humble myself and say, absolutely, I would be able to contribute constructively, constructively if I had access to that data set. Right? And that's what video game designers do all the time. So here's a little fun little uh, extra thing. So how do I understand, how can I offer constructive criticism, right? My favorite thing that video game designers do right now is roadmaps. Roadmaps? Commentary? And patch notes. This is what they can elevate, in my opinion, or lack of a better, like, phrase for the dad jokes out there they can elevate their game by having a tab where it says roadmap this is what's coming up this is the stuff we're working on patch notes the, the la like maybe the last year of patch notes like what has changed historically and that's development cycles so i do think what is really lacking is not necessarily what it's doing but what information is being transparent, right? Um, and video game developers in the last, I would say five or six years, definitely in the last five years, where the industry standard now is that you keep your community up to date about what's going on. And for me, the first thing I thought about is like, wait, I just realized there's no patch notes like I can't tell what they added or what they took away or when they did it so I had to spend yesterday I had to spend like an hour to two hours finding out when did they what was the last change they did because now we're always there was a the reason why this came up is because someone asked add language like what new things do they want to add or why did some of their favorite languages have fewer sections and they would say like well the last time they added it was introduced in 2018 like that's those are the questions that crop up the second most common questions that crop up in my experience there's no patch notes no patch notes or roadmaps as a as a developer as an active developer comprehensive or not comprehensive but enough sufficient roadmaps patch notes with commentary is excellent it reduces that speculation that most people do where like oh yeah they don't care about german language they don't care about japanese language or they don't care about my favorite language and with commentary and patch notes and roadmaps you can alleviate some of the guessing game so even though those are ad hominem arguments you're in the internet you're going to get ad hominem arguments for batch stress batch stress is ad hominem when someone says duolingo sucks they mean the developers suck not the program most of the time it's by transitive property they're insulting the people who make duolingo not duolingo itself because duolingo itself has no feelings right you want to hurt something that's hurting you and for me constructive criticism i know this sounds like a cliche but generally a constructive criticism doesn't sound negative or positive most of the time it really doesn't it just sounds neutral like when you hear someone who is actively constructed criti criticizing something it's incredibly dry it's not emotionally charged because the person really doesn't feel bad or good about it well here's the things that duolingo lacks guys Guess what? When you start off in Japanese, uh, you're going to spend at least on average the first 200 to 300 hours not learning about grammar. 
if you're learning at my pace obviously but uh that's what duolingo does does it make me feel happy or sad not really like it, it's a challenge i accept it and when where does this good stress come out as at the back at the back end i reflect on it don't know what data Duolingo works their system on, but in mine and lots of other language learners, the universal opinion of Duolingo is bad in so many different ways, be it personal preference or actually better ways of approaching. Many governmental organizations also have language learning programs for military and di diplomatic personnel, and all of them use immersion as their main tool. Duolingo can't offer a full Netflix catalog of materials. Sounds like you know what you're talking about. Fair enough. Uh, can I unpack any of that? Um, I agree with you. That's what I observe. Uh, governments and militaries offer a lot of extra things, right? Uh, uh, alternatives, alternatives, not substitutions. And then be it personal preference and all the models, which that's the case, which I haven't talked about here. This has nothing to do with that. And then, uh, you know, uh, you can cite as many universal opinions and stuff. I agree because they say it's bad. I don't represent those people as per usual. And Duolingo is bad in so many ways. I agree. Or I agree that other people say that. And no, Duolingo cannot offer the full Netflix catalog of material with the business model they have now. So that in itself is a big digression as well. Um, so all those parts, I agree. That's what I observed. Uh, I agree with you. That's largely what I observe. So am I talking about any of that in the sense that I'm saying they are not saying that or they are like, I'm not making commentary on what other people are saying. So there you go. Thanks for the share. Allow, I see that you probably are exposed to a lot of opinions on it. So thank you for the share. Although I am very much aware of that. So where was I about the commentary thing? So I do like that if they add more transparency, that's kind of nice without sacrificing. I don't like that argument because you aren't going to get access to military or government tools for language learning. It sounds like you can only look at what is out there and not what you can actually access. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, just so you know, since we're already talking about accessibility, right? When you're talking about accessibility, that was one of the talking topics. Okay. So that's one of Louis, Louis Vanon's. I think this is how you spell his name. Louis Vanon's a point accessibility. And well, in this case, for all intents and purposes, it's not bad. I will, I will just use this phrase because a lot of times someone that typed a whole paragraph about a one-sided argument suggests to me that they already have an agenda and some, probably some emotional compromise, uh, emotional take on it as opposed to some neutral statement, right? Neutral statement that says what it does offer and what it doesn't offer kind of thing. Also, the pacing is too slow to have any meaning, meaningful, which meaningful is one word, but meaningful progress, less repetition would be better. Duolingo is nice for getting into language learning, but you will quickly stagnate. Obviously, this person's coming into a situation where they decided that they understand everything about what I'm saying. Uh, there are programs that offer similar experience. You can also create your own small program. Fair enough. Those sounds, those sounds like that last one is kind of humorous because that's also the same exact criticism you can say about all the government programs and all the expert masterclasses offered by universal experts. 
but hey cyclic arguments happen too so fair enough hey guess what with all that discouragement I'm still gonna use Duolingo I'm sorry like you think you meeting full progress is pretty funny because I just thought about I just talked about what I'm learning that Duolingo is inspiring me to learn and it's the same thing as making your own program but hey if the program doesn't offer everything you need I'm sorry to hear that this is your personal experience hence the bias so your personal experience is citing so your personal experience is citing all the confirmational all the confirmational opinions of other other experts experts to place weight on your personal bias experience or I, you could be talking about just the part where like it's too slow to have meaningful progress, less repetition. I agree that's personal. And I agree with you, that's how I feel right now too. The stagnation thing, probably haven't gotten there yet, but yeah, you're probably referring to that. So fair shake here. Um, that makes sense that you might be referring to the whole, it's pacing is too slow meaningful progress, less repetition would be better. And it's nice to get into language, but you'll quickly stagnate. And I'm guessing you're referring to that personal experience. However, your first statement is not based on your personal experience. And most of the stuff that I'm talking about are not based on my personal experience, just based on my personal experience, I suppose. So I, I am also doing the same thing. Although I am not spinning a one-sided argument so like you're telling me that there are no people or like lack of people lack of people that like duolingo and use duolingo So, yes, I agree with you. Experts, experts, government, and military programs have offered competitive alternatives, right? Competitive alternatives to, to uh, learning language. I agree with you. Competition is great, by the way. Competition is fantastic. Um, are they different? Absolutely. Duolingo doesn't offer what their competitions offer. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to be competitive, right? They are alternatives. Uh, saying one is bad elevates the other by diminishing one is bad. It's not saying what it doesn't offer, but what it can offer, and then what the other one offers and what it can offer. So instead of demonstrating that the other government programs and other experts offer different things that allows the person to excel you start off by saying how bad a product is in order to elevate the other ones so you start off by putting something down to elevate your position i'm just looking for the most efficient way to use my time to learn a language that can be fun duolingo is not that for me sounds like you found other alternatives excellent um so you're talking so back to my personal project right the lecture you are projecting and i respect that sorry to hear that duolingo did not work for you right sorry to hear that duolingo did not work it's not efficient for you right so efficiency is 
less than desirable for you. Perhaps even not even less than desirable, but maybe even bad. Right. And it's not fun. So you just said it's not fun either, probably. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like uh, Duolingo is definitely not for you. Uh, what I was talking about is just this part. So I wasn't really even talking about Duolingo per se. I was talking about the mindset of projecting bad stress. So the mindset, the last topic I was talking about is how when you're projecting, it's often a result of bad stress. And then if that bad stress re re results into advice, that often comes at destructive criticism. Destructive criticism. And often when you're busy projecting bad stress and offering advice that is destructive criticism, uh, that advice doesn't take into account, doesn't take into account other people and the people you're talking and the person you're talking to so am i using duolingo to learn japanese kinda yes what am i really using uh, Duolingo for understanding this stuff. So uh, while you dropped in and wanted to project your negative stress about Duolingo and offering a destructive criticism based on experiences that are not personal and personal, and then offering an advice that takes into doesn't take into account other people, as in the millions of users that use Duolingo and continue to use Duolingo, versus the millions of users, probably still millions of users that are dissatisfied with Duolingo. You chose to align and only represent the millions that are dissatisfied versus also taking into account millions of Duolingo users like myself that are still using Duolingo. It's one-sided. So yes, I definitely understand all of this, but this is not my point. Projection is my point and how bad stress can is just bad. I feel that it would be nice in a ideal world for someone like you to have a product that you like a lot. So hopefully you found that product in the vast ocean of military and alternatives to learn language. Am I learning Japanese? efficiently right now? The answer is no. So it's not the most efficient way to learn Japanese or learn a language. So your goals are incredibly expressed clearly and Duolingo doesn't do that. I don't actually think that's the strength of Duolingo. Uh, the strength is that whole idea that you said alternatives are incredibly accessible and that it is very fast right brute forcing efficiency brute efficiency well i'm not the smartest tool in the shed so i apologize if i'm not that smart right i'm not that smart so uh duolingo for me is moving at a pace is moving at a pace that I can choose to go faster or slower but most of the time I talked about this before Duolingo is a free product so they must cater to a lower baseline a lower baseline and then build up from the lower baseline 
if you're looking for the most efficient way, more most efficient way, you're looking for experts. Experts and specialized programs. And this is not it. I absolutely agree. Duolingo is not a specialized program. Not at all. Not even close. So, this is the scenario that I've been in when I was a young, young, wee young lad. And it really made me a, a, a very impatient person. So, think about it in, in class. So, you have a teacher, right? A teacher up in the front. And you have a kid that wants to go fast because things are too slow. And you have a kid that's going slow and it's just right. Actually, I'm not going to even do negative situations. There's a third kid that it's the thing is they're too slow or they learn something differently. So Duolingo is this professor that needs to find a way to cater all of these. Usually they pick a baseline between just right and too slow as opposed to catering to someone who's incredibly fast which requires a specialized program where was I in this situation I was one of these kids I was the fast kid so what did I have I had a bad temper I projected negative stress Like, dude, man, this teacher is going over the same point again because there's some there's some kid in the room that just doesn't get with the program. That was me when I was a teenager. And uh, all the advice, not except for Indy. Indy is fantastic. But uh, th there are a few people that I've met over the years. I'm incredibly privileged to be patient with me, right? They're patient with me. I'm a, I am love educating and I love being a teacher in, in every way possible. So what do I prioritize? I prioritize the baseline. I do not cater to specialists. If you're a specialist, if you're, if you're a specialist, if you're a specialist, go and do special things. I love watching people like you on YouTube. Like I love watching Xiaoma, Xiaoma like learned 36 different languages and show that to the world. I love watching that. I'm an educator and a teacher. I pick the one baseline that is sufficient for most people but if you're moving way faster than all of this stuff then i'm not evaluating those products those products are beyond my expertise as well so they will be going too fast for me i spend most of my time in the communal lane not the fast lane i used to do that when i was a kid and ultimately it just led to a lot of bad stress for me so for me i don't usually uh, spend that time like oh man this game is too easy man why can't they just make a game for me like super hard game because this business i'm the customer so i they should be making hard games that cater to five percent of the population instead of 90 percent of the population and then offering step up buildups of difficulty in a slow pace but they can maybe try to skip forward so as a teacher, I don't cater to specialists. They're already smarter than me. You already know more than me. A coach is a coach, a teacher, a, even a psychologist, in my opinion, is already aware of that. If your client walks in and they're talking about things, they are the ones with the problem. They are the ones that know it better than you. So you need to ascertain a type of approach that reaches them in a baseline approach as in it has to be well enough to get your foot through the door and Duolingo is a foot through the door how fast you drop Duolingo is probably how fast you pick up language 
So if you only spent Duolingo three days, then you're probably out the door and going to your, I don't know, your military grade, like your military expert linguist programs. Absolutely. I'm not here to evaluate that. So most definitely you are correct in all your observations. And I hope you find some good things. I actually don't know enough about language. Uh, learning programs to suggest anything that is on like expert level stuff but i know that the stuff that people have been recommending to me i cannot pay for it yet so yes i have uh zero dollar tools that get you from zero to watch x in J japanese good for you absolutely you have tools that gets you not me so let's since you already learned a lot of language, let's use that language and not presume someone. So, yes, you have found zero dollar tools that gets you personally from zero and watch X in Japan, uh, in, in Japanese. With some help is enjoyable, not using subtitles. It sucks for the first few months, but yes, absolutely. Guess what? I am a native speaker of English and I watch my English programs with subtitles. So where does that leave me when I learn Japanese and need subtitles? I will still use subtitles in both English and Japanese. It's part of my wonder of how I enjoy things and experience things that you find optional. So there you go. So if you added that thing with like with some help is enjoyable not using subtitles it's not enjoyable using subtitles i actually literally turn on subtitles because the act of reading i talked about this a little bit earlier like yesterday the act of reading written dialogue in a language you are fluent in it's creatively different than reading a book with narration and descriptors. So I actively love reading even the language that I understand. I find that enjoyable because when I think of video games, video games often have letterbox dialogue. And I've always wondered how I can portray a country bumpkin in text. Portray someone who has a Scottish accent in English. Can you write those right now? If you're a native English speaker, can you write that dialogue? Right? Yours is Anki and card deck? Sounds good. Content of choice to use Japanese skills can get better over time. That sounds like a very effective strategy for you. Point with sub is just example what is possible if you give it full effort. That's implying that you are suggesting I'm not giving full effort. So that's kind of a weird projection. But hey, I'm putting my full effort into Duolingo. So if the point of the sub was that you put in full effort in learning things, then I most certainly am putting full effort into the thing that I want to learn using Duolingo. You haven't as you're projecting all your things and inferring certain things, right? You're inferring certain things. I can't help but think that you're trying to offer advice, personal advice, right? Based on personal experience, but I can't relate to you. So I can't resonate with you. But if you're thinking about putting full effort, I put in a lot of effort that isn't just learning language. Like I didn't, use Duolingo to put full effort into learning Japanese. I'm using Duolingo as a platform to talk about how people perceive and offer advice, how they are motivated to provide advice. So yes, I'm putting in full effort. No, I'm not half baking this. You can put in full effort regardless of the contextual tool. Don't take it personally. I'm just making it coherent sentences. Okay. 
Alright, so you're telling me I should not take you seriously. You walked into the wrong streamer, Dima. I always take everyone's words seriously. Do you know why? Because I use full effort to talk to people. Ironic, in my opinion, it's ironic that someone who puts full effort into language would think that to encourage someone to not take yourself seriously. Trust me, I'm not taking it personally. That's perfectly fine. Like, if you think you're hurting my feelings, not that's not the case. I'm offering a counter-argument. So, all I read right there is you're just making coherent sentences. So basically, you're not taking it seriously, nor should I take you seriously. Can we talk about- yes. Right here. Right here. This is the goat. I absolutely love these animations, by the way. So, alright. Why is it that every time this stream comes up on the carousel, you're arguing with someone? Well, why is it that you're always here and you're still here making a comment about that? Because I can tell you that 20% of the time, I am not arguing, I'm discussing with someone at the beginning of a stream. The beginning of the stream is intentionally for discussions. So perhaps you could ask yourself, why do you always show up when that's happening? Right. Uh, that's confirmation bias. Hey, but we're not arguing anymore. Uh, well, actually, the guy told me not to take him ser take this seriously. Yeah, no one wants to argue. So Kima here. So here, here. Let me uh, summarize what Kima said. Kima found found success after like using Duolingo for a little bit and found out that Duolingo is not for Kima. So Duolingo is not for Kima. So that's fine. And then they found that Anki, Anki plus like, a, a, like a, another way to immerse because uh, that's a really great word that people use at the immersion technique be very effective at learning Japanese so and uh, Kima also managed to do this without spending any money so um, I'm trying to take in all the points and the only thing I can say to Kima is that I do not relate to this so it's not that I don't understand what the person is trying to express I just do not relate to it. So I did say, I, get, I did give the impression that it's personal. But not personal in the sense that I'm offended. It may seem that way. So one thing I wanted to correct is I do put in a lot of effort. Just not in learning Japanese, apparently. Um, so I remember all of what Kima says. It's just I want to tell Kima that I do take everyone's word very seriously. I put in full effort all the time in critiquing and discussing what people share. If you are not into that and you don't find if you find that very discomforting, uh, there are definitely just like other Duolingo you like alternatives to Duolingo, there are definitely other streamers who don't take people seriously all the time. Yeah, it is your wisdom, for sure. You're sharing your wisdom, and then, you know... Oh, wait, here's another great story. Uh, it's related to where it's sharing. So, in English, oftentimes sharing is using being used 
uh, being used synonymously with exchange. So I would like to evoke the idea of exchange. And I am also sharing because you're sharing. And you just told me that you're just making coherent sentences. I don't think you're just making coherent sentences. I think your senses are super important to me. So I actually really appreciate your your coherent sentences. So because I appreciate it, I'm doing an exchange of my own personal ideas. Uh, it doesn't. It's not personal in the sense that it's not personal in the sense that if you reject what I'm sharing, I will feel sad. Uh, it's okay. I, if you don't believe anything I'm saying, that's perfectly all right. I just care that you're sharing. So in a way, it's implying an exchange. So I'm also sharing my counter like, counter perspective. I'm not rejecting your perspective. We're mutually sharing our own perspectives. Hence then, uh, once again, the peanut gallery has shown that it's about argument, but no, I personally do not see it as an argument, but more of a sharing of contrasting, uh, contrasting viewpoints and not even contrasting viewpoints because I'm not concerned with the same goals. Kima's goals, Kima's goals is to learn language efficiently. And Kima is offering advice and wisdom on achieving this goal. I'm not. So I'm using Duolingo as a platform to talk about people's own motivations, motivations, perceptions, in the context of learning language. So my wisdom is not the same wisdom as Kima. So we are not arguing about a point, about any particular point. We're discussing about our wisdom and we have different goals in mind. And my only observation about Kima is that this is that person's wisdom, specifically this person's wisdom. So that's pretty much where we are left off, right? So let's wrap up this thing. I wanted to uh, wrap it up with the idea that um, the classroom experience, the classroom situation. So fast learner, average learner, and slow learner. And this box here is a person or an object or a tool or what have you. So oftentimes I'm thinking about what what techniques would be useful to the average learner, to the slow learner, and the fast learner? And clearly, our guest here is a fast learner that has a tool that I focus on most of the time. And that's problem solving and critical thinking. So when this person found out that Duolingo is not useful for them, they problem solve and found other solutions. They quickly think about what Duolingo is lacking for them personally, and then they fill those situations up. So this leads to great alternatives, alternatives that best effectively maximize their learning potential, right? Alternatives for learning potential. And this is why I have lectures or lectures to myself. I'm not actually building any masterclass or something for learning. I don't, 
I personally don't think I have enough experience or professionalism to do any of that formally anymore. Okay, so anymore. It's not my professional career anymore. Um, so not only is our guest a fast learner in this situation, they are also, they have grown up and become adults with problem solving skills and critical thinking. And that's the whole idea of making your own programs. And when I mean programs, I mean figuratively, not literally. You can solve problems regardless of the situation. And this is the uh, great appeal of successful people. So if something doesn't work, they find something that does work. Now the slow learner might still be trying to learn, right? They'll try to take in things. So it will be a quite a long time before, a much longer time before they can develop program, problem solving, critical thinking to find alternatives that help them aid with why they're slowing down. So the slow learner is going to have problems like, how do I speed up? If I am not aware. Because in this situation, that slow learner is already having trouble learning with the slow thing, right? To the fast learner. Relative to the fast learner, this is going too slow. But the slow learner is already having problems. Are they naturally going to have time to develop problem solving skills and critical thinking skills to find alternatives for their learning in order to be successful? Well, that's also one of my focus, right? Because my focus is creating awareness of problem solving and critical thinking. So people that I offer advice who struggle with like mathematics and chemistry, I try to put effort, right, my full effort if I can, into developing strategies that maybe I can circumvent the contextual nature and help them with their problem solving and thinking skills first as in offer them a level of comprehension that they can have time to develop these strategies. And we're talking about young adults here. So not adults that, so right now, all the things I've discussed doesn't impact the fast learner and one that already developed problem solving and critical thinking skills. And then we have the average person. The average person has complacency problems or complacency inconsistencies. So average learner is like, yeah, this is just right. I like doing this. This is just what I need. And what happens is there's no motivation to develop improved problem solving skills or critical thinking because they don't have a problem with the program or the tool or the professor or the teacher. They don't have a problem. So if they don't see a problem, they don't practice problem solving or critical thinking skills. So how do I engage the average learner, the learner that the program is targeting, which clearly the Duolingo program is not targeting a fast learner, right? At least we can make an agreement that Duolingo is not targeting fast learner. And we have to remember that just like this is a compliment to the fast learner, the fast learner represents 20%. The slow learner, I'm being generous and conservative, really, uh, 20%. And then the remaining 60%, let's just say it's average. I don't know. I'm making this up. We're, we're talking about normal distribution. It's more like 80%, 10%, and 10%, right? Just Let's just assume normal distribution or Poisson distribution, right? So uh, what am I focusing on? Well, everything I do is focusing on imparting the wisdom of getting someone who is slow, who is fast, really not this, to be honest, because if they are fast learners, they're not going to stay here. So someone who comes in and say, I'm arguing with someone, that's a fast learner. Someone who clearly has problem solving skills and critical thinking skills that won't ever listen to whatever I say. So it's they, they don't stick around too often or they don't stick around long enough to actually know what I'm doing. Right? 
because it's not helpful to them. And then uh, the average learner, which I'm the average learner usually, because I'm not very I'm not very sharp, not a sharp tool in the shed. At least I feel I'm not. Sorry if some people think I am. That's we'll just chalk it up to imposter syndrome, I suppose. So here, when I'm thinking about what I was trying to get to today, is that there's a contrast between observational learning. Let's just summarize because I went an hour over what I was expecting to do. So obser the duality of observational learning and intellectual, intellectual learning. So let's talk about observational learning. Duolingo is structured in observational learning. It's not structured in intellectual learning. So what is some of the hallmarks of observational learning? Repetition and usually slow, slower pacing. And it does represent that at, at this point. Um, what am I doing in this context? Why does this remind me of this? Because I do feel slow. But at first I thought it might be the slow pace and the low, slow repetition. But I actually, this had come to allow me to realize that I haven't been doing this in a very long time. So observational learning. Basically, can I just take in a word without needing the urgency to contextualize contextualize uh move along and do diligence and this part yes it did slow me down quite a bit and it's both. And what I can only see say is, while a lot of people focus on its slower pace and its repetitious nature, rarely do people think about the thing they stop doing for a very long time. So intellectual learners tend to, in their adulthood, in my opinion, in their adulthood, usually ends up becoming faster. They're incredibly efficient, fast, high paced, and if they're great problem solvers, they're, they're easily, in my opinion, easily in personal, in personal projectors, projectors, in personal as in unsympathetic, not empathetic, but unsympathetic projectors of wisdom that may or may not help the slow learner or even the average learner. So one thing I have to say is I really appreciate Kima. I really appreciate the advice. Uh, however, I find it unsympathetic because I don't relate to the problems that you are projecting on your wisdom. And it may or may not help me as advice or wisdom because uh, I don't really find myself as a fast learner in your context. So I'm probably not a fast learner in your context because your advice has to be appropriate, right? Contextually appropriate for that person. Uh, since you have a high pace of learning and a high comprehension, most of your advice is very impersonal. And let's not forget that it's 10% fast, 80% average range. These are arbitrary, but we know that average is the bigger pool and then 10% slow. While I don't think I'm a slow learner, I definitely think I'm more average than I am fast in this situation, especially language. I'm probably a pretty average language learner. So as a compliment to you, I want to remind psychologically that you are exceptional, probably, 
if you so think so. You are as exceptional. But I don't find your wisdom relevant to me. Which makes us two different types of uh two different types of pool of people. It's not that you are a fast learner, it's just a good tool method makes you a fast learner. Ooh. I disagree with that. So now we're having an argument. Yeah, we're I disagree with that. Yeah. I think it's both. One can be a fast learner. And use fast tools. So if you use tools, you can't actually know if you're a fast learner. If the tools are making you a fast learner, how do you know you're a fast learner in the first place? You would have to take the tool away and compare yourself to another toolless person. Uh, one of the separating characteristics of someone who is fast versus someone who is slow, right? Versus someone slow is often how quickly they solve, how they, uh, how proficient they are naturally at critically thinking and problem solving. And to me, I'm not saying you fast learn because you pick up things very easily. I'm saying you're a fast learner because you can solve problems. So the fast learner has had a lot of time to be able to solve problems, find alternatives. So if you have a problem with Duolingo, you solve it. A slower person to get efficiently to complete their task, it will take them a, lo a longer time to find out what is it that will allow them to discover the tools necessary to be a fast learner. So, not only do I disagree about this binary statement of uh, one versus zero, tools or no tools, I actually think you're both. You're both a fast learner that uses tools as opposed to a slow learner, a slower learner, or even an average learner that uses tools. You can't know until that happens. So, it can be both mutually and based on how quickly you uh like make counter arguments or like counter points whatnot uh i actually think you do have a lot of elements of critical thinking and problem solving skill that's actually kind of a nice thing to have right uh for me yeah I'm a person who used tools. I don't... I, I'm going to say I'm above average. Above average. Not quite fast, not quite not quite average. And I use tools to help me with that. So I evaluate tools for that, for that reason. I evaluate tools and methods. Because my general concern is the baseline learner. And the baseline learner is usually the target audience. So what is the target audience? Well, your assumption is the target audience is becoming fluent, fluent in Japanese or like do enough Japanese so that they can maybe, maybe this is it. I, I'm not sure. So, uh, you know, fluent enough to enjoy content without subtitles. Uh, without subtitles, right? Fluent enough to enjoy without subtitles, for example, right? Uh, for this, I agree with you. If you think the target audience of Duolingo is for people to become fluent in Japanese to enjoy without subtitles and anime and stuff, yeah, I agree with you. If I look... So now I have to test if this is true by finding examples, evidence that would say the contrary, no hypothesis testing. So here's my profile, right? Like my leaderboard. 
And even when I'm thinking about XP, which is a construct, it's a plain construct, and you look at people's charts and stuff, regardless of their stats, all it points to is people aren't really doing that. Uh, they just want to learn some phrases and stuff. So like, like the comment that Xiao Ma, Xiao Ma talks about quite a bit that I really enjoy. Uh, it's just fun learning some stuff. So we're going to take the average person's perspective. Um, that mentality is very different too. So that's another, in my opinion, that's another, uh, detail that I feel that leads to me thinking that you're a fast learner. The volume you want to learn is a lot and very quickly. I mean, I want to learn a lot of things too, but I'm definitely not as fast as you. As in like the desire to be as fast as you. In fact, I'm having a blast just doing this all day. And I have no anxiousness about this. I've already had this comment from other fast learners. Because fast learners seek out helping other people unsolicitedly. So another pattern of fast learning is they seek out uh, people they can help. And that's a really great thing. It's a very passionate thing. They go out of our way to offer uh, unsolicited advice. Because they want other people to learn really well and efficiently. Uh, when you're a fast learner, you get used to being very fast. I am not fast per se because I desire not to be. I typically slow down to appreciate other things. So here, a fast learner would be like, dude, and I already had this response, dude, you just wasted, wasted the last two hours, two hours, not learning Japanese. Well, I guess um, you could say I'm a country, this comment, yeah, uh, dude, you just wasted the last two hours not learning Japanese, and you can say I'm a country bumpkin. I am a country bumpkin, and a opposing, a, a opposer, opposing Italian. I'll let you get cultured for that, I suppose. I'm a country bumpkin. An opposing Italian. And I like living life. Living life in the slow lane. We'll call it in the average lane. Because what makes learning language incredibly rewarding to me is that I get to have the opportunity to interact and learn from and hear from people who like Japanese. And that's it. So what does that mean? It means meeting, meeting people who disagree with me so that we can discuss about it, right? Share. Meeting people who hate Duolingo. Not you, obviously. I, I don't think you project it in a manner that you absolutely hate Duolingo, but I have already met people who hate Duolingo. Or actually even blame Duolingo for wasting their time. And, uh... Regrettably, this is kind of dealing with the whole, like slower learner but also lacking critical thinking 
and problem solving techniques. Ali, loving this conversation? Oh, thanks. I don't get that comment too often. Breakman. Breakman. Uh, usually, um, most people tell me that I'm talking up my butt. I'm talking up my butt. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to stick with it. Talking up my butt. With three T's. I always spell butt with three T's. Because I have a big butt. I, I give a lot of big butts. Uh, I'm a very big butt person. Okay, that was kind of lewd and out of context. But, but with three T's. Uh, but thank you. Uh, I dawdle a lot. It takes a very long time for me to talk about things. But in my opinion, learning is more fun at a slow approach. You know you like the whole thing of it. Enjoy the journey. I, exactly. I love enjoying the journey. Thank you. Understanding the ins and outs since it ain't a marathon. You, you know what's funny? Most people think a marathon is too short, right? So oftentimes the idiom is it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Enjoy the journey, right? But now I have to say uh, something bigger than a marathon. It's not cross country. <laughs> Hey, it's cross country. You gotta enjoy the view, right? When you're running cross country, you gotta enjoy the view as well. Breathe it in, look at the sunlight. I totally understand the whole internet hustle culture, right? So yes, absolutely. Internet hustle culture, if the hustle culture is for you, go do it. Go be as efficient as possible. Find your one goal. What, what do I get from enjoying the journey? I get to meet a lot of people who have different paces in learning. A lot of people who have, are upset, unhappy, really happy, enjoying the, the experience, uh, developing bonds, right? And I talk about this a lot because I'm a person who had burnt out before. So in other contexts, I have talked about burnout before. Am I above average? I am above average. Not in what I do today. The stuff I'm talking about today, all these things, I have learned to slow down and enjoy things I'm not good at. Uh, so I'm above average before as a kid. I was above average into my, uh, I'm going to say into my late 20s. Into my late 20s, I have always been above average. Like fast, high paced, got to gotta hit the ground running, right? And now I'm almost 40. I'm almost 40 years old. So I've learned, I've slowed down. I, I've done this already. And now I'm no longer pressured to do so. It's no longer about maximizing my time in terms of the goals I can see. It's now about slowing down. Uh, it's, it's now about slowing down and maximizing, maximizing what I'm not good at because it creates serendipity, which I can't spell. So we're just going to spell it this way. <laughs> Serendipity. So yes, I want people to argue with me. I want people to tell me that I'm wasting my time. Wasting my time with Duolingo. I want these encounters because I'm enjoying the journey. I'm enjoying hearing things that I wouldn't otherwise hear if I was on the fast lane. And I lost that. And how does that relate to that? It relates to burnout. I was, uh, I told my, I told people that I, one of the crises, one of the crises that I've met in my life, the one of the crises that I've met in my life was 
I was burning. I wasn't just a candle burning at both ends. A candle burning at both ends. I was Icarus that already slammed into the sun and started swimming. I was Icarus that slammed into the sun and continues swimming. And I hit a, a breaking point. I'm going to say around my 30s. When I took a look in the mirror and I saw this guy who was underweight, like well underweight, uh, juggling like 18 out of 24 hours of stuff. And then the last, last six hours was used to uh, maximize my quote unquote free time. So I gamed within those six, uh, six weeks. So what did I do for those 18 hours? Well, I did science, lots and lots of science on top of juggling and mentorship and stuff. So I was most definitely always finding the fastest way to do things. Uh, is the fastest way leading to the best way? That's arguing, that's arguable, but usually I don't even use the word best anymore or fast or slow. I tend to use appropriate. Appropriate is the word I use now. I go at an appropriate, appropriate pace and I offer appropriate advice if solicited. I generally don't offer advice in any other context other than to myself. So why if I'm streaming and people happen to be hearing me rant about something, it's not advice for the people who are listening. It's in, um, they can choose to uh, use it if they want. I'm actually recording my learning sessions and streaming sessions for myself just for posterity. And I hope that maybe something comes out of it. What does that sound like? It sounds like serendipity. So I'm not selling anything. I don't even have a goal in mind. Like I don't I'm not going to educate you. I'm I don't have the goal of educating you in Japanese. Like, don't get me wrong, that would be kind of really great as a skill, but I'm not here to educate you in Japanese. I'm not even educating you in how to learn. This whole digression was about me reflecting. The start of this entire uh, discussion was me reflecting on Fujianese. And how I observationally learn. Fujonese to this day and that's what dual and it reminded me of how Duolingo structured their first section which I haven't completed yet section one is how I learned Fujonese I just took random things like they just throw things that occur very regularly my parents I they always talk about food they always talk about going somewhere coming back buying groceries and they only say thank you, hello, and stuff like all that out of context, no structural grammatical points. And that's how I retain Fujianese. And any record online, both military and government and Duolingo or anything, when I was looking yesterday for five hours, I think I managed to peruse like the 80, 80 or so hits in Google search. Obviously, that's where I'm going to go. As a starter, 99% uh, of that stuff covers the things that I use in Fujianese. Um, and I have no formal training in any of that. And what I was saying about Duolingo is section one reminds me of that approach. And that's usually an approach that came when I was a kid. And now what happens when I'm doing that approach? I'm so slow at it. It just sucks. It really sucks. <laughs> It really sucks, but I wanted to remind everyone that this is positive stress. As opposed to negative stress, which is what, and then this is when Kima, Kima came in and talked about 
how it's negative stress for that person. So that's understandable. You would want to quit something that's giving you negative stress. It's too slow. It's too repetitious. And for me, this is positive stress. I am very slow at this. It's reminding me how I used to learn as a kid. The way I picked up Fujonis is because I heard the same phrase like 8 billion times. To the point where it actually gave me a bad temper. I was really, I got really upset when I keep hearing the same phrases over and over again. Constantly. And my parents keep lecturing me over and over again about the same things. Constantly. Now I don't. In fact, uh, learning Japanese at this pace when I was observationally gave me time to think about how I learned Fujinese. Yeah, this is reminding you of how you learned in school and it feels great. Yeah, it's been a really long time. Like, I haven't learned this way in a long time. I uh, just so everyone knows, again, as a reminder, I've been in education, like, I, I would even argue to this day, even out of education, I spent 95% of my time in education. And even at the level of like PhD, once you leave a certain perspective, like I would say once you become older than 18, you start observing things in a different perspective. And oftentimes, anything that's outside your perspective becomes negative. It becomes a negative stress. Uh, so nowadays, I slow down because I suck at it. I suck at slowing down, really. I suck at slowing down and letting other observational skills take over. So what is the charm of repeating the same thing? Well, now I got a chance to uh, think about all my uh, Fujinese experience, all my Spanish experience, um, I got a chance to tell stories with friends or with people I've met, like Indy. We exchange lots of really peculiar observations because our goal isn't necessarily how fast we do the goal we set out to, but the journey along the way. Not negative, just crunching it in less time with an efficient learning algorithm. Not at all that different. It is absolutely different. Like what you just said, if you're telling me it is not all that different, I cannot even comprehend expressing how, like how off the mark that comment is to what I'm doing right now. Crunching things in less time with an efficient learning algorithm, I'm legitimately not doing that. So it's really that different. It, it really is that different. Unless you're talking to someone else. You might be talking to someone else. Sorry, I, I just realized I missed a couple messages. So you might be talking about someone also, with languages, you get to enjoy new communities, and that really opens up your mind to new cultures. So it's quite fun to take it slow and let the whole thing embrace you. I wouldn't say I'm a slow learner nor a fast one. ADHD makes learning quite funky. Understandable. Understandable. Uh, in terms of like uh, the idea of ADHD, um, again, I've only seen a psychologist once in my life. And that was because of the whole like gifted story with language or vocabulary and stuff. But generally speaking, I would not be surprised. I've said this to my loved ones and friends all the time, but I would not be surprised if I had some characteristics that may be very relatable to people with ADHD. So it's not uncommon that the people around me when I'm talking about certain things and certain strategies and whatnot, it uh, people with ADHD finds it appealing. However, I do not know. Uh, so, um, 
You can make it slower. I just made it faster since I had the time. Oh, actually, that's a pretty good point, Kimo. That is a pretty good point. So, uh, when you said uh, you want to make things faster because you have time. Right? And I have time to make it slower. That's actually quite great. I I actually think I I I I can get behind that. I definitely can get behind that. It is definitely not much different in that manner. I can make it slower and you can make it faster because both of us have time. Fair enough. That's actually very sound. I I dig that. So um now we can reach a commonality here. So we've reached a bridge, right? So at least we're not at uh, at least we're not in the ballpark where we're having trouble understanding each other, right? So my appreciation of full effort now is slowing things down and uh, observationally taking in as much as I can. As I can. In the meantime, you're making things faster because you're becoming more focused on the task at hand. So your focus, your focus objective is to learn, say, X language as quickly as you can. It's very focused, it's pinpointed, it's optimized. I'm basically doing the opposite because I have time to do so. I spent most of my time doing what you have done and I'm okay with not doing it anymore. So. Back in the day, you know, it, it was fast, fast, always fast. It was so fast that I slammed into the sun. And funny enough, internet hustle culture is a great example of that. Slam into the sun. Uh, I don't really particularly like that anymore so if uh most of those people they usually slant fly by me so fast it's okay you know i'm driving at five sorry i'm american but by 50 mi 50 miles per hour with a speed limit at 50 miles per hour and you know it's still okay to go 70 miles per hour and pass me on the fast lane. Go for it. Meanwhile, I'm having a conversation and just taking in a conversation with, if you say, well, you could have friends and talk to it. Sure, absolutely. Well, I'm also having a conversation with myself too. Right, there are, there are things we both do that are very alike. And the only difference I guess you could make is that we're moving at different speeds. What we observe at 50 miles per hour is not what we observe at 70 miles per hour. So that's where we disagree about the whole, like, in less time with the efficient algorithm. When you're moving life at 70 miles per hour, you definitely do not look at life the same way at 50 miles per hour. It's remarkably different. And being in the fast lane and then now being in the slow lane or slower lane uh changes one's pers perspective so that's good pretty good wrap up for today it went kind of long i only wanted it to go like an hour right so we slowed down a little bit which is ironic right i'll learn some japanese but yeah thanks for the share Ima. i don't necessarily think that if i had to use the word appropriate again Fast refers to the volume, more new words a day. Fair enough. Okay. I mean, if we're talking about relatives, I could just change these to volumes if you want. But yeah, I mean, that's a conditional. I'll keep, I'll keep that in mind. Fast refers to volume. 
I mean, in case of volume, right? Volume, the closest thing to the life, life analogy for volume is time. Really, not necessarily volume. So like, how much volume do I accrue going 50 miles per hour? Well, you could measure volume in distance, I suppose. Because distance is one dimension of volume. Uh, perhaps I travel less distance, but I had more conversation and thoughts. But perhaps you could argue that you have just as much conversation in the distance that you've traveled. Right. You just reach the end of the deck faster in days, but it takes about the same in hours you do. Yeah, but you aren't doing the same thing I'm doing. That's the difference. You definitely reach the end of the deck faster, for sure. And I definitely use about the... I definitely do not reach the end of the deck as you do. The volume is the same. Because where I decide to distribute my volume, you are not distributing. Your volume only includes the deck. My volume does not include just the deck. You're focused. I'm unfocused. So I don't just collect volume from the deck. I collect something else from the deck. Or like not from the deck. I invite things into my deck. So if your deck is composed, say your deck is this. Right? My deck is this. Whoa, that sounded a little loose. Here's your deck. I will most definitely appear... I will most definitely get to the end... Later. Whoops. I put an extra T. Because as my... As I'm going through the deck... Other people's decks are being added to my volume and that's why it's still speed because it's a rate at which you reach the end of your deck you're focused this is very focused this is unfocused the deck is larger because it's unfocused it includes other people's decks other objectives other things and you don't know them Deck is a technical term there. Well, if you want to focus on that, that it's a technical term, this analogy is still is relatable to a lot of people. Your focused deck, your priorities are smaller than my priorities. My priorities include yours, but it's not the only priority. You want to learn language very fast. I want to learn culture while learning a language. I want to get to know the community. Oh, the Anki? That's fine. We're not, we don't have to make it literal. You don't have to say literal stuff. We're not using literal stuff, just figurative stuff, right? Let's expand our horizons just a wee bit. Just hear me out a little bit before constantly rejecting uh, the analogy. If your life is very focused, you'll get it done faster. Absolutely. Like, you're very focused. That's nice. I just don't spend my time focusing on that. If I'm trying to complete your deck and someone else has another deck to share, figuratively, I'm saying figuratively, it's not really a technical term. It's a abstraction. Figuratively, their deck becomes part of my deck. I spend time talking to Indy every day. Like, whenever Indy shows up, I create a story that deals with learning Japanese and linking it with Fujinese, which makes it less focused. Why did I spend two hours talking about this and not learning Japanese? 
because I have other people's decks. Other people's decks and other people's interest. When I was burning out, I was a specialist. A specialist is impersonal. They only relate to a very specific subset of people. So, a specialist tend to be trading off charisma. So it's about what I think. What I find technical. What is important to me. What I want to focus on. What I want to achieve. Someone derails me with one question. Like, if Indy says something, I'm going to derail and my deck is going to be gigantic. Am I ever going to get to the end of the deck? No. I'm not, not even close. I don't think since, since I've met two or three people learning language, I haven't ever achieved my goals at the end of the day. Like, if I went into the day thinking that I was going to complete a lesson that I planned, nah, it's, it's probably not going to happen. The moment someone says something... I'm going to derail for them because that's the journey. Does it make me happier? Yes. It certainly doesn't help someone who doesn't care about any of anybody else's deck. So. Or care less about someone else's deck. And I know you said that you are offering wisdom. Offering wisdom. But I would graciously and respectfully ask yourself, did I ask for that wisdom? Even though I welcome it. I still accept it, obviously. But generally speaking, when you're really focused, that's how you become more efficient. You only talk about the things you're interested in. You're you're you rare you rarely or you try not to spend too much time entertaining other people's point of views because it will distract you from your focus. So when someone talks to me, I would say, "Oh, sorry, I don't have time to talk about that because that's not my focus. I need to learn Japanese." So if you're going to learn talk about Spanish right now, I can't talk to you about Spanish. This is a Japanese only learning channel. I don't say that. And it won't frustrate me if someone continues to talk about Spanish. We already talked about Spanish, French, Polish. I had a Russian person who couldn't communicate with me, I suppose. And I always talk about Fujinese. Random Mandarin stuff because I met a couple Mandarin people who caught caught me writing uh counting uh counting one two three like counting to ten and then i wrote some uh i wrote some like talked about chinese right quote unquote chinese a little bit because i have a fujinese background that stuff took up like an hour and i love it it's fantastic i know two or three people who don't eat who aren't even interested in japanese like they're just not interested what they what they talk about is how learning language is exciting is great so we spend a lot of time talking about how it makes us feel The both the good, the bad, the however, like how frustrating it is, all the weird things. So that's kind of the thing I'm looking for. I'm not looking for that's that's getting to know community. Hey Lotus. Uh Genki Deska. Uh Lotus is the guy that used Genki Deska first, right? And every time I see Lotus's uh, name, I think of Genki Deska. Uh, is Anki, is Anki gonna teach me that? The answer is no. 
because it doesn't say Lotus reminded you reminded you of Genki Deska. If you, it can if you want to. Lotus? That's interesting. I disagree with you. Fundamentally, in every way, logically. So somehow you managed to know Dragon Lord Lotus by saying Anki. Hey, guess what? Dragon Lord... So Anki is going to say Dragon Lord Lotus wanted to tell you what Genki Deska means. Go for it. Personally, go for it. Convince someone. Try to convince someone other than myself, because I already had it happen, that you can do that. Go for it. That's the journey. Not, not the goals. That's the journey. I wouldn't have ever anticipated that Dragon, Lotus, Dragon Lord Lotus will forever remind me of Genki Deska. I think it's way easier to have real people you remember things about versus trying to make up stories. Lotus, what do you think I'm going to say to that? I, I'm actually kind of curious. What are you going to what do you think I am going to say about that? I feel like we know each other a little bit well enough that I think maybe Indy. Indy might know what I'm going to say about that. I, I know you are saying that about... Uh, how you feel, but what what do you think I'm gonna contribute to that? It starts with a B. <laughs> not but not but with three T's, but both both. I I I like doing both. So no no no. But what what I mean is I agree with you. I actually, I, I actually understand what you mean. I, I definitely feel that way too. Uh, generally speaking, if I had to choose, I wouldn't choose either. I just do both, right? You know what I mean? Like, I just want to do both, and that's what I, that's what we do all the time. We like talk about, like for example, right? This, this kanji, right? This kanji. Yeah, this kanji uh, is Indy's creation. I'll never forget this because this means 10 mouths. And when you have 10 mouths in the same room, you're old. But because you told me this doesn't describe a person, that's how I remember it. So not only do I remember that this is 10 mouths where Indy, uh, 10 mouths where Indy is old, but I remember that Lotus, you, told me that people don't use this word to describe people. So, this is how I remember this. That, that's, that, that we, we won't ever forget this. And the reason why is because if you flip it on its side, it kind of looks like a Jew, you know, Jewel Kutsi, a uh, Gucci, or Kutsi, Kuchi, Kuchi. Like the mouth, Kuchi. Kuchi, sorry, Kuchi. I haven't done any Japanese today, so Kuchi, right? But uh, the way we, uh, the way I came to this was because it's related to, uh, whoops, wrong stroke order. Yamaguchi, right? Yamaguchi. But this is, I, I think I've seen this somewhere as the kanji for chi, right? But anyways, if you flip it, if you flip it vertically, you know, 10 mouths, and that's how we came up with the 10 mouths, which is connected to being old because we had the story about the generational thing. My, especially my grandparent, my grandfather, 
my, an image of my grandfather uh, came up. And then later on, like I would say 30 minutes later, I, I use this in the terms of being old. And then you mentioned that, uh, yeah, people don't typically use this kanji to describe people. So, and then I talked about the first time this uh, icon, this I, uh, kanji was used is to describe saifu, saifu, right? A wallet. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I don't have anything that isn't an object yet, which I didn't know yet because we haven't really gone through like if there are even any usage rules in Duolingo. If there is, that's great. If there isn't, you, I, I can thank you for this usage rule, right? Okay, let's wrap it up. One last message. It's about the journey for me. And wait, let's make this a little bit more scientific. I'm more about the kinetics, not the thermodynamics. But then again, this analogy kind of falls apart because kinetics do deal with rates. While uh, thermodynamics deal with like N and averages but life's a journey i wanted to talk about the story about fujinese but i'll get to that while we're learning because it's going to come up the fujinese stuff anyways that's a good segment i don't know how i'm going to summarize this segment but yeah nerdy way to make an analogy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's the science side in me and i'm not even a i'm not even a chemist uh kinetics and thermodynamics let's just say that's a those are some principles that are only dealing with the methodology of some of the uh tools that we use in biology but it's largely a more of a colligative property and chemistry related thing and i wasn't a chemist i haven't been a chemist for quite some time all right so it's it's time for a review lesson oh before i do it though since i finished the digression i want to take a bathroom break i'll be right back thanks Here's a funny little thing I thought about. I did br I did really bring a lot of Fujinese today. Uh I I'm going to I have to I have to come come out and tell you guys a secret. My friends. My friends and peeps. I have a confession to make. I have been secretly in the last couple days been cheating. 
I've been cheating on Japanese because I've been learning Fujianese in my evening time. And I came with a lot of like Fujianese stories and terms that will probably show up and slow me down in this session. So just thought I'd let you guys know. <laughs> I told myself that I'd be a, a little bit like more focus on Japanese, but because uh, I have so much time thinking about all the words that I keep having to repeat in Japanese on Duolingo, it made me think about all the... I'm doing Japanese quite fast. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Let, I, I'm gonna share some one. It's really fun. I, I promise. Cheating on your main language? No good. Yeah, yeah. So here's one. Here's one. I don't know if you guys know Mandarin, but I'm pretty sure tongue uh, tongue is uh, soup, right? Like uh, la tongue, like hot soup, right? Like like hot as in spicy soup, right? Tongue can't talk since I got a bookshelf with twenty something language. I can't I can't talk since I got a bookshelf with twenty some. Dang, there you go. So tongue, right? Uh, la tongue. Uh, at least uh, my Mandarin is bollocks. Okay, it's it's bollocks. Um, so when I thought about it, it's like, dude, I just realized that that just sounds like tongue. So, uh, tongue. Uh, tongue. Tongue in Fujianese. I let I, I let you guess what tongue is. Tongue is in Fujianese. Because we had uh, a lot of food items, so I was thinking to myself, man, I keep hearing like sushi, ocha, like jusu all the time. Like, what what food items do I even have? Like gohan, right? Gohan. Uh, I don't even know how to say that in Mandarin. Like, fun. I think it's fun, right? Gohan, fun. Fun in Mandarin. That might be Cantonese. I have no idea. So, fun, like, he fun or chi fun, right? And in Fujianese, it's bong. So wrap your head around that for a moment. <laughs> the the term is bong. Yeah, si bong, si bong to eat uh to eat rice, si bong, uh, as opposed to he fun or chi fun. Is is because of Japanese. I, I, uh, sushi is just sushi, by the way. My parents legitimately, when I asked them, uh, how do you say sushi? And they sometimes say, like, it's, uh, ni, ni bao, like a fish dumpling or a fish bag. <laughs> That's the closest I can get. Like, it's just sushi. So there you go. At least, at least you guys know if you say sushi to my parents, they'll know exactly what you mean. No, like it's kind of like a uh, katakana, right? It reminds me of katakana when you say juice. It, in fact, if you put juice, right, juice in a sentence, it a, a lot, a lot of the synthetic voices would say juice, and it just comes out as juice. Like holy heck, it really does sound like juice. <laughs> It, when I read it, it's like, yeah, juice. Nice. Um, things like thank you, right? Arigato gozaimasu. That's actually one of the phrases that we just got. I know it's arigato, but the full phrase that they introduced in this unit was arigato gozaimasu. So arigato gozaimasu uh, is the classic Mandarin is uh, I can't even say it really well, like su su, 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 su right? Um, and the reason why I don't say that really well is because I do say thank you quite a bit in Fujianese, but Fujianese does not help you say thank you in Mandarin. It's Hidang. Uh, Hidang is the, my most common use <laughs> of how to say thank you. So, yikes. That's not close. Not close at all. Uh, and then you have like Kanto thrown in. I'm pretty sure like, um, 
No, no, maybe, maybe it's Mandarin. See, I, I'm constantly doing that over and over again. I just don't know. It just comes out of my mouth. So, whatever. Well, let's just keep going. I, I'm sure I'm going to remember a bunch of things. Oh, clothing. Uh, if you want to say clothing in Fujonese, it's eater. And I have no idea how to say it in Mandarin. Eater. I started trying to think of if I wanted to represent Fujianese in Romaji or Kana, how could I do that? So how would you write Eater in Kana? I'll leave it up to those uh, Japanese folks who know way more than me right now with their Kana. Now, show me how you can represent Eater in Kana because that is fun. It's it's kind of like doing Romaji for uh, cognates, right? Katakana. It's kind of like doing Katakana for English words. Oh, and I also noticed this one thing where um, I think Fujianese a lot of times don't have comprehensive word replacement. So what they do, what my parents often do is they meld back and forth. So they just slip in in and out of Mandarin really, really frequently. So it's like Fujianese kind of blend into Mandarin back to Fujianese. So like whenever there's a word that is more commonly used in Mandarin that's like a little bit more complex or contemporary, it just slips into Mandarin and slips back into Fujianese. That's probably why I always, uh, I tend to confuse what is Mandarin and what is Fujianese and then what is Cantonese and what is Mandarin. Because oftentimes I've grown up with the idea that you're slipping, uh, you're slipping in and out of those languages. And that's kind of why I kind of enjoy Spanglish, Japanglish and, and stuff. I'm always very comfortable with the idea of slipping in and out of the language. All right. Hey. Yamaguchi-san no dress wa kawaii desu ne. Okay. Yamaguchi-san no, Yamaguchi-san no dorasu a doresu. Doresu wa kawaii desu ne. Okay. All right. Miss Yamaguchi's su. Miss Miss Yamaguchi's su. dress. Is kawaii. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, kawaii, isn't it? Kawaii. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Oh, is there a color? I, I was colorblind yesterday. I was literary colorblind. Literarily colorblind. Not literally, but literarily colorblind. I don't know what if there's a word for that. But, dude. I could not see color. Like yesterday, I made four or five errors where I legitimately set the color word several times and immediately when I went to translate, the color word just disappeared. And both ways. I did it when English, I read over the English, it's like, there's the color word. There it is. It's red, blue, white, or black. Those are my first four colors and I legitimately just, it just disappears. The color is gone, which by the way, um, the colors, right? I have as a review. Hold up. Okay. Uh, we have, right? Aka, Akai, right? Red. I'm going to use Romaji, Romaji for now because, uh, I haven't wrote these out in Romaji. Uh, Shiroi? Yeah. Shiroi? Shiroi? Is it Shiro? Yeah, yeah, I think it's Roi. Shiroi, which is white. Right? And then Uroi. And this E is just like because we're describing things. Right? In certain contexts, you could just say Kuro. But black. And I actually don't know this stuff yet. Duolingo didn't actually introduce the E stuff yet. Uh, I just happened to notice that 
you can use this as, as an identifier. So that's all I know. It's just a pattern, right? So, Uroi, Uroi, and then Aoi. Obviously, Aoi is blue, right? Sorry, guys. It's it's uh, Aoi. Aoi, but Aoi. Aoi is blue, right? So, um, just to throw in some fun, I always I asked myself yesterday, how you say it in Fujinese? So, red is Oing. Oing. And I have no idea how do you represent that in Kana? Oing. Oing. Come on, guys. I know you can help me here. How, how would you get a Kana, a Katakana of Oing? <laughs> so that's what I thought about. It. One day, I want to be pretty comfortable enough with katakana that I could write katakana for the Fujinese. Ah, e, hmm. Uh, what is that? Ah, e, hmm. Do, aindo, an, aindo, aindo, ain, no wait. Uh, uh, what's the last one again? That's ku with a dakuon. What's ku with a dakuon? Gu. Oh, aingu. Interesting. Aingu, Aingu, Aingu. Interesting. You have the classic colors, the oldest ones in the Japanese language. Other colors are newer to the language. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, Hideyoshi. Uh, Hideyoshi yesterday talked, uh, said that there's gonna be like a quote unquote a history lesson incoming when we start learning the non classical uh, colors. And I agree with you. It's also the same uh, when I learned Fujinese colors as well or picked up Fujinese colors there um and these ones are uh classical too so oing oing ba uh u oing ba u gai uh oh no one blue is uh ooh, it's like na not ja Nai, ba, dai, dai, no. I have no, I have already forgotten. We don't use a uh, blue too much. Wong, wong, wong is yellow. Wong, wong. And you know what's funny? Uh, you remember we talked about counters? Uh, the whole counters things? I don't usually say red, white, black, or any color without the counter, without quote, not the counter, but a identifier in uh, Fujinese. And I don't know if I'm, we're going to learn if this is the same in Mandarin in the future, so I'm really looking forward to it. But it's really ang sight, ang sight, bot sight, u sight, uh, like a lot of times. So you say red color, white color, black color. As opposed to just that's red a lot of times i i often say it's a, a lot it feels a lot more natural to say that thing is red colored as opposed to that thing is red and that's kind of an english thing a lot of times it, it's a, a lot more comfortable just saying that is red as opposed to that is a red color because it sounds redundant if that is red there's a chance it's usually inferred that it's a color. But generally speaking, Ignite, Ignite, Badite, uh, Usite, like it, it gets like contracted a little bit. And I say that quite a lot. Like Ignite as opposed to Ignite, right? Kind of an interesting thing. I'll learn one for Japanese soon. Is that green? Uh, someone already spoiled a little bit that it's green. It's probably green. <laughs> it's 
anyways, let's keep going. I had more to say about the whole color thing. Uh, it was part of my lect it was part of my uh, earlier remarks. Not green, the color counter. Oh, the color counter. Oh. Oh. Okay. Wait. How do you count colors? Oh, yo. Oh, I I see what you mean by quote unquote the count. Yeah, the color identifier. I see. Yeah, that's that's sweet. See, that's the stuff that's great. I I love that stuff. You just keep talking about other languages in the context of the language you're learning. Okay. This is old. Uh, how, can I even say this is old? Sorry, guys. When, when I, if I had to tell my parents this is old, I would just say, Gee, ya old, oh, huh? <laughs> As in, like, um, I all I said was this is old in English, like very old. <laughs> like I I don't know the word for old, and there I do know a word for old, but probably not in the way this is old. Just like uh, Lotus, when you mentioned that the word this word um, old uh, that they're probably using here is not used for describing people. I only know the word for describing people that's old. Yeah, now. Or very old, like now. Like knowing uh, for for people, yeah. Like now knowing, now knowing like old people. As opposed to like, if you call like a refrigerator, like binger, right? Binger, binger. Now being there, that would be make really that would make some funny faces. Like you just refer to the refrigerator as a person, and that that refrigerator is an old person, like implicitly old person. But you're really actually literally saying old refrigerator, but you're describing the refrigerator like it's a person. And I get it. I get why. If I said, uh, what is it? Atara, atara. Oh no, it's not atara. It's a uh, Oh, I misremembered this. Wait. Oh yeah, who do we, right? Who do we? Um, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's still correct. Like if I call a person who do we, right? Who do we hito? Yes. Or something like that. Who do we hito? Yes. Then it'd be probably I'd probably get some pretty funny faces since you don't typically use who do we to describe a person and I totally get that and I still do it because I have no other way to express it for my parents and then my parents would tell me what the word is and I don't know it today who do we uh who uh uh I talked about this yesterday Lotus um the that the who the who thing um it's very common in uh Fujonese but now I can't think of a word with it. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. It's a very common, uh, it's a super common thing. So when I think about speaking Fujianese, I can hit the who, right? Who. Um, there are others too. There are other sounds that are quite, quite remarkably great. Jiane is my favorite one. Jiane. If you say Jiane to someone, it means you know. Like Jiane no. So if you say Jiane, Jiane is Jiane means I know. As in you're acknowledging the person. So like if someone tells you a hey, don't forget to don't forget to clean your clothes uh clean your room, Jiane no. That's it, Jiane. Lots of uh, overlap. There's fun little overlaps. I already talked about the see you dom uh, see you domolo uh, for English. See you domol domolo. Uh, it means we ran out of soy sauce. There's no more soy sauce. But it sounds like see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, one of my old workers. One of my old workers, like when we were in a restaurant, they're like. 
Oh, why do they keep saying that the soy sauce is uh, run out? And I'm like, what do you mean the soy sauce run out? And he's like, see you tomorrow. And I'm like, see you, see you tomorrow. Oh, it's see you tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I that And that stuck with me. I was, by the way, I was six years old. I think I was either six or seven when that whole see you tomorrow thing happened. Like, we ran out of soy sauce, guys. See you tomorrow. <laughs> so if you go around in a Chinese restaurant and, you know, Americanized Chinese are going to have people who, you know, a vast majority of them are going to be Fujinese, right? When you say see you tomorrow, just remember that somebody back there thinks you are complaining about running out of soy sauce. You're not really complaining. You're just saying this. We ran out of soy sauce. So just make you giggle. So when you walk in the next time and say, thanks, see you tomorrow. So someone back there is thinking, wow, see you tomorrow. What the heck? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I need more stories like these, guys. Uh, who do we... Uh, who do we... Who do we... Oh, wait. Do I need... Oh, this one. Yeah, this would be an incomplete sign, so we... Uh, do it that way. So... Who do we... Who do we this? Yeah. These are one of the weird idiosyncrasies of duolingo uh kore kore wa furui desu ken san no aoi t-shirts wa chotto uh ken san no aoi aoi t uh oh man they always emphasize the t a little bit more hold on ken san no aoi t-shirts wa chotto t-setsu uh t-setsu wa chotto so ken san wa no Aoi T Setsu wa Choto. Aoi. Okay. Oh, Aoi. Okay. Calm down. Kensan no Aoi T Setsu wa Choto. Uh, Alright. So I don't really like Kens. I see you. I'm not going colorblind today. I am not going to be literary colorblind today. If there's anything I'm going to try not to do is not to forget my colors. We're not in the Wizard of Oz or something. Uh, I, I will see color. Well, actually, that's awkward. I, I want to pretend like I'm in the Wizard of Oz. I want to see color. So I don't. Whoa. You know what I just said? Oh, man, that's going to if that take out of context, that can get a little hairy. Maybe I should stop saying that. <laughs> a little bit. Sorry, sorry. I don't know if that's a dad joke or not. That that's that's a very sussy way of uh, saying that. I don't really like Ken's blue shirt. Um. Uh, honestly, I don't even know how to say shirt. Yeah, I only, I only describe it as. Yeah, I don't know how to say shirt. I know how to say pants. Ko. Ko is pants. And it's kind of like ko. But you have to be like ko. -oo. So ko. -oo. Ko. And the whole thing slurs down. So ko. Ko is uh, pants. I don't know what shirt is. I should ask my parents what shirt means. Like, how to say. Amiseta, right? <laughs> yes, yes, camiseta. Definitely, definitely camisete, sorry. Seta, camiseta. Yes, definitely. We're going to get to the point that all of us are going to be learning different languages all at the same time. And we're just going to spend so much time on one sentence because we're just going to say it in like seven different ways just for fun. And that's gonna be great. 
I want this neck. I want this red necktie. Okay. Uh, sono sono akai necktie wa neck. Oh, necktie ga hoshi desu. Right. Sono sono akai necktie ga hoshi desu. Neck necktie ga hoshi desu. Or I could go nya 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 nya. Oh, hey, I uh, you know how we I already know inu right inu, inu, and neko. Dogs and cats. I think the cat is similar to Mandarin, but the dog I'm not so sure. So, dog in Fujianese is kenyang. So it kind of reminds me. It kind of reminds you of canine. So Kenyang is dog, and are you ready for cat? Mao. <laughs> so what does a cat go? Well, you could kind of think about yeah, it's meow. It's it's really close to meow. It's meow Mao. That's it. Just just Mao it. Just Mao. Uh, that's a cat. In, in fact, if you say meow, my parents would probably know you're talking about a cat. Yeah. That, that's that's all I got, folks. That's all I got for now. Uh, then Japanese says cats go. The Japanese say cats go. Oh yeah, nya yeah, nya nya nya. <laughs> Yeah, nya nya. Nya 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 nya. Nya nya. Uh I actually didn't ask my parents what do cats go? So here's the funny thing, Lotus. I don't actually know what my parents think cats what sound cats make in Fujianese. Like I never asked. I don't think it's Mao. <laughs> <laughs> like Mao, like, I don't think a Mao goes Mao Mao. <laughs> so, I I don't know. But yeah, dogs and cats, Kenyang, like Mao. Oh, and then I said, uh, I said Anne in a Mao goes Mao. <laughs> yeah, Mao. Yeah, Mao. That's a good one. Mao, Mao. Yeah, Mao. That's that's really good. Um Yeah. Alright, let's keep going. I don't know how to say necktie either. Uh oing. Oing is red. Moishin Moishin Dik G E Oing. The closest thing I got is Puidai, which is belt. <laughs> I don't know what necktie is, but it, like something to tie. Pui dai is probably the closest. Like it's like a string or like something you tie. But I I know I've heard my mom said necktie before. Cause as a kid, I I needed a necktie for like orchestra and stuff. Now we just don't wear ties, so we stop using the word tie. Um, let's see. I, I like I have been talking to my parents. Yeah, it's a Western thing. And I, I think they combine uh, neck and tie. Yeah, I played in orchestra. Well, in high school. I was a violinist. Yeah, self-taught violinist. Yes. I, I was the early days. The very early days. I still have my violin sitting in the room. But it's been a while. Been quite a long while. Kono. Had to give it up for science. That's a double entendre, by the way, but I gave it up for science. <laughs> like a double meaning. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Kono. Kono Akai. 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 
Makai necktie. 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 Neck. 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 Right. Necktie. Necktie. Gahoshi des. Gahoshi des. Moving right along. Oh, I can say something about this too. By the way, it's 500 yen. Um, a jian. I would use the word jian, which is like just a placeholder for money. Jian. So, uh, nuwa, nuwa jian. Uh, nuwa nihon jian. What am I? Nibon jian. I don't actually know if there's a Fujianese word for yen other than just saying yen. I mean, they're used to saying yen anyways, or n, uh, not n, but yen, um, because of Mandarin yuan, right? Yuan, as opposed to yen, but most people just simplify to yen because yuan is, I mean, it kind of sucks doing the yuan. <laughs> so, nguwa, nguwa, 500. Oh, which by the way, the reason why I want to do this and it's so fun is because I watched Xiaoma go to Manhattan's Chinatown, right? Manhattan's Chinatown. I, I saw like an older video of him where he had a friend teach him Fujonese for a bit. And then he used Fujonese during a, it looked like Lunar New Year at the time because the whole streets and stuff had like fireworks vendors and fireworks were going off probably lunar new year and what really just made me sparkle with joy is the joy that he brings to the Fujianese people in Manhattan when they suddenly notice that he was speaking Fujianese there's there's something really I know Japanese he gets the same reaction when he does Japanese and like Indonesian uh, like that other guy who does like Indonesian and whatnot but it's there's something really magical about when you try to learn a dialect and then you use it next to people who expect that their language is dying right or like their language is not being used or preserved anymore and my grandfather always had that same sparkle so when i try to speak to him Japanese, and Basically, it was like a montage reel of seeing all these older people. They're they're largely vastly older because um, with your knees, when if you're in Manhattan, the only place that you'll find Fujini is in the older generation, the generation that will likely not pass on Fujinis to their future generation, right? Not my generation, basically. So when he was speaking to it it wasn't even so much as the initial culture shock in my opinion it, there was a culture shock as seeing a white person multi-generational white in appearance person speaking Fujianese but I think a lot of it comes from the, just the idea that someone else is interested in that dialect it's one of the rare like it's one of the smaller dialects of China like Fujianese is quite small and it belongs almost exclusively to a group, a very specific group in the United States. And my parents are part of that group. So, kind of fun. I haven't said this much Fujianese ever when I'm playing, because, you know, when you're playing video games and doing learning other things, people could care less. I mean, it's already pretty tough when you're learning Duolingo and people don't care about Duolingo only to come by and tell you how much they don't care about Duolingo. Rough, right? It's going to happen because it's people want to get things done, right? They want to get things done. They want to learn things. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that, that they're getting it done. The people around me struggle with getting uh, being worried about getting too much things done. I'll tell you how much they hate the thing you're doing. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. It's entertaining. True. True. Well, I find it entertaining. I mean, I know you're kind of subtlety there, but I, I do find it entertaining. It's very challenging. It's a challenging task, right? 
when you do in science that's what you're doing every single day every single day in science when you discover something or when you try to discover something you're trying to convince people that have a hard time believing you because that's the whole point you have to be very vigorous and do your dual diligence due diligence for as long as possible composed to present an idea that's otherwise strange or unfamiliar to everyone else so i am most certainly very well equipped in doing that since that's pretty much what you do for a living as a scientist when you discover something you know what it's even just as difficult convincing yourself it's real I spent seven years convincing myself if the thing I did was accurate or precise enough to even present. Yeah, seven years trying to think like, hmm, is it good enough? Like, I, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even think I have enough rigor in it. And then you have to present it to someone else in order to graduate, right? Yeah, is this real or am I imagining it? Am I stuck in the hypothesis driven uh, pit? where I only want to see what I want to see and focus on confirmation bias. It's the scariest thing, in my opinion. So oftentimes I only talk to uh, the people I talk to that are very close that actually ask me for advice are those individuals who are stuck in that pit, but not about science. It's about their lifestyle. Like they're the people who are stuck. Like that's the depressive cycle. When someone's in depression, like they're declining in their health that's the cycle i'm describing they are constantly looking for what confirms their suspicions not what can it be or what you can make it be kind of thing so yeah i am biased in that way too. i always look for the other argument or the other alternatives or the other counterpoints I really dislike using the word argument because most of the time you're just sharing three different alternative perspectives and they're not really at odds with each other. You get to choose, right? The more you know, you get to choose. Doing it the fastest way means you only know how to do it the fastest way. Right? Right. So how can you relate to someone who does it in a slow way? Philosophy. Uh, 500 yen. So. Uh, go. Okay. Go. Yaku. Go Hyaku yen. N. Go Hyaku en des. Guy knows and try to give them advice. <laughs> And I have to say this very loosely. I only give advice solicited it. Like they have to solicit me for advice because I am incredibly uncomfortable being a person who has, uh, who is given too much responsibility as I always have a problem of accidentally doing something I'm unintended. Right? So. Um, it's that's my bias uh, if you feel compelled to take the risk and give advice unsolicited that is your choice to make I'm not suggesting you should always behave the way I do just for uh, in my experience in my life in science you err on the side of caution more than presenting advice that you're un you know you may not be comfortable with so oftentimes comprehensive knowledge makes one incredibly questionable about one's own credibility because you spend most of your life being criticized by your peers not in a bad or a good way you're always an uphill battle you are one person against the community the community critically analyze you to strengthen you still feels like a monumental task so i'm not always just against one person i feel like it i take on everything and that's 
kind of my comfort zone. Go. Go. Yaku. En. 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 Des. Des. <laughs> If there's any uh if there's any synthetic voice that has a lot of personality, it's really this one. I I love this uh synthetic voice personality. Go. Yaku. And yes. <laughs> Sometimes I want to be this person, you know, just completely lacking of energy but still feeling good. Uh did I mess up here? Go, Yaku, and this. Yeah, go, Yaku, and this. Ano yasui mise wa ii desu ne. Or a moody person. I, I, I don't know. Is the best. Yeah, I, I don't know. Something about me. Uh, when I look at this like moody character, I always want to think that, and it's probably because of anime. A lot of times, it's probably because of anime and maybe some Western animation. So you know the gentle giant archetype. Gentle giants are everywhere in media, like where you have this gruffy like, you know, sundere, right? You have this gruffy sundere, and you you know there's a loveling heart in there somewhere. I, I don't know something about that, and it's also with that girl too. Like she's. Like, yeah, whatever. It's like, oh, you know you want to hug. <laughs> Sorry, that's such a that's such a classic uh anime duo. It's such an anime duo. Like you have the Sundere that just isn't isn't having it, and then you put it right next to a character that is brimming sunshines that just constantly hugs the person. And classic. It's classic 101. The foundation of a cast of characters, you gotta have the gentle giant and the sundere, right? It, either a gentle giant or a sundere, it's fine. They're not necessarily the same, obviously. A gentle giant could just be really soft hearted, but shy and recluse as opposed to like actively rejecting. And then you have the sunshine rainbows go getter. Like, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, the whole yelling around like, Yatta! Gamba! You know, Gambate! Ganta uh, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> okay, sorry. Ano yasui mise wa ii desu ne. Ano, ano yasui, ano yasui... Mi? Wait. Yasui... Oh, mise. We got that yesterday. Store. Uh, mise. Uh, ano, ano yasui mise wa ii desu ne. Wa ii desu ne. Wait. Ano yasui mise wa ii desu ne. Wa ii desu ne. So, ano, ano yasui ma, uh, mise wa ii desu ne. Wow. Okay. Um, i, uh, mise. Mise is, uh, dang. Dying. Sorry, dying. Just dying. That's dying. So, G, G, Beng Ye, G, Beng Ye dying. Meng I, Meng I. Uh, Hine, Hine, G. Wow, like, I can't phrase it in this way. This is unique to Japanese. I can't. So, I'm trying to replace all the words. With Fujonese, but it it does it does not make sense in this order. <laughs> um, hine hine g. Uh, in hine g. Bengi dying. Ehoma. <laughs> so I basically said it in English, and I don't know if it's the right order. I, I actually don't know if it's the right order. Um, if I were to say it to my mother, I would say, I would first, is it, is this cheap, uh, is this cheap store nice? As opposed to this way. So, hine, hine, like as in, oh, and it's, it has ne in it, weirdly enough. Uh, 
इन्हें जी दस जी जी बेंगी सो इन एक्सपेंसिव बेंगी बेंगी डाइंग ए होम आई आस्किंग इज इट गुड आई एज लाइक मे बी इट मे बी यू जस्ट रिमूव दिस एंड जस्ट से दिस बेंगी डाइंग ए होम या जी बेंगी डाइंग ए होम which is the same phrasing i guess so you can fit it into here sort of <laughs> sort of so eho ma is just asking isn't it nice so isn't it nice so at, so eho ma is everything after wa so after everything after wa is eho ma and then everything before is the subject so ji bengi dying ji bengi dying is the subject and then wa Right. Oh, sorry. Not the subject. Oh, it's the topic, right? So, uh, ji bengi dying is the topic, wa, right? To establish the equivalency, and then is it nice? So, ehoma, right? Nice. I I actually, my parents give me this weird look now. Like my father would give me this weird look when I go up and say, "Hey, do you know how to say convenience store?" In Fujianese, I said, "Why? Why are you asking? Why you need to say convenience store?" I said, "I don't know. I just want to know what convenience store is, because I wanted to see how close it is to combine, combine, <laughs> combine, or like de pato." Um, the closest phrase I've heard when they're referring to something like a big store, a big store, like de pato, right? De pato and combine is "jing ai qi er." No, like the closest phrase that I think they say is "chine chiren," and I have no idea what that means. Actually, I because they can be referring to something. Like they would say, "Oh, I'm gonna call chine chiren," right? I don't actually literally know what that means. I just know it's referring to a place they go to buy things. So I have yet to clarify if that has something to do with either a grocery store, a department store. Or a convenience store, and now I'm so engrossed because of the way Japanese do it. Like the Japanese people, they they distinguish between those like immediately because of uh, Duolingo introducing depato and konbini, and then now、uh, mise, right? Just a generic store. Dang, uh, uh, dying, dying is store, dying. So, dying, yeah, yeah. Oops, I I'm starting to speak. I'm starting to use filler words in Fujianese by accident. I uh, like get on. Say that. A chicken store. Because I would say a get on. So a chicken store, literally get dying. Get is the word for chicken. So can ni ni watori. Oh, niwatori no mise. That makes sense. Niwari, yeah, you use the particle no. Yes, a store that has chicken. Yeah, okay, a chicken. Yeah, got, got it. Or a、uh, to, tori, tori ni, a, a, tori ni ku, tori ni ku no mise. Okay, yeah. So you're using the store. Right, you're characterizing the store with it with the、uh, particle no. Got it. Differences between our answers are if the chicken is alive or not. Oh, neat, neat. Uh, it does not distinguish between. I don't think. Uh, I don't think it distinguishes between live chickens and. Uh, where you get chicken for food. Generally, though, Gidang would probably insist that it's like more、uh, the meats you purchase instead. Oh, here's like chicken store versus chicken meat store. Got it. Got it. Oh, that's a good question. How do I say meat? Mut. Uh, Nick. Genie, genie, dying. 
I can say that too. Uh, Nuke is Nuke is meat. So gear Nuke dying, gear Nuke dying versus gear dying, right? I I still don't know if uh gear uh gear dying is referring to gear Nuke. Yeah, Niku is meat. I remember that Niku is uh Yaki Niku, right? Yaki Niku. Uh, that's something I only I know because I go to Yakiniku places. <laughs> like one of the bigger famous uh, Japanese places. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's like you, you something. Oh no, it's in like a dragon. They actually put it in uh, the Yakiniku place. Not not Conrai, but uh ah, it's like Ryu uh, Ryu Ryu Gyu something. But there was a location in Virginia. So then the phrase the word Yakiniku was um placed there. Anyways. Great great stuff. I actually know how to say quite a lot of things. Like how how do I do this? Um, how do I do this? Joon, Joon. Hmm, that's a little hard. Maybe not high. Cake. Dango. Uh, dango. Dango. Da uh, dying. Uh, beignet. Beignet. Skirt. Okay, we're not going to talk about skirt. I think I'll still use the word pants for skirt. <laughs> that almost sounds like beef. Uh. Oh, dango? Like gyudong? Or, oh no, oh, ryugyu. Oh, the ryugyu phrase? Or dango? Anyways, sorry, I'm talking really rapidly, so I can uh, chat delays and typing and stuff. Ano, ano yasui, uh, ano yasui mise wa i desne. Okay. Wow, that really flexes the tongue. It's beef like cow's meat. Gi, gya. Oh, gya. Oh, Yao, uh, Yao Nyu, Yao, Yao Nyu, Yao, Yu Nyu, Yu Nyu, yeah, Yu, Yu Nyu, Yu Nyu, Yu Nyu. Wait, I thought that was milk. Isn't Yu Nyu milk? <laughs> all right i'm sorry indy <laughs> no 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 don't no. no, like i just happen to know what mu milk is because i uh because you still we still use milku right wait 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 uh uh wait 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 um what what's the katakana for milk because because uh, there, there's still there's a katakana for milk as well it, when I was doing the katakana section. But I knew milk as gyu nyu. Uh, gyu nyu is the term that I saw first in Japanese. And I'm like, I it, it was really hard to remember because I keep thinking of milk. And um, actually, the katakana exists for milk. So I'm always curious if... Uh, Japanese people either use milk or gyunyu. Because gyunyu is like kind of cute. Sorry, the, the, the word kind of sounds very cute. <laughs> uh, okay, so beef is. Gyu, uh, gyu, gyuniku. Oh, gyuniku. Okay, gyuniku.
I forgot what. Wait, that's Sun. Sun. Saniku. Wait, wait, wait. What is the three lines again? Oh no, that's Mi Miku. Yeah, I forgot. Katakana, right? Katakana. That's me. Miruku. Yeah, Miruku. Miruku. Yeah. It's used often on like milk flavored candies or likely flavored drinks. I see. Miruku. Yeah. Miruku. Miruku showed up in the katakana section, and they said it was milk. And I was like, wait, I thought it was Gyunyu. But that would be the um hirakana. Hirakana. Hey, Milo. What's up? How are you doing, Milo? I know, I know. Yasui mise wa ii desu ne. Okay, that's like the fifteenth time I said this, and I should really uh, say what this says, huh? <clears throat> uh, I know that. Gotta check for color. Do I have color? No, I don't. Okay, that cheap store is i swear if they said that cheap red store i'm just gonna flip my table at this point a cheap a cheap store is uh wait yeah that cheap store is nice isn't it oh over there i forgot to put over there that cheap store over there right because it's implied and i would actually still it, it's kind of funny though when they say when people say that cheap store is nice isn't it it's still implied in english you, you see what i mean lotus so it's to me i think it's kind of nice that duolingo does do this uh, uh acknowledges that because like that cheap store over there is nice isn't it that's true that's true you could say that too uh but just like uh just like japanese if you say uh, that location or something that has a location it's actually kind of already in inferring that too in which case this type of phrasing is kind of close to each other they're both implying the same thing so i keep forgetting it's uh they the thing is that cheap store is over there you know that cheap store over there right sorry that cheap store over there not is over there that cheap store over there is nice isn't it and that's the same for uh fujinese too i wouldn't say over there i don't even know how to say over there now that i think about it wait can japanese people say over there is there a phrase for over there other than just saying like ano like say it in a different way ah uh... Soko. Oh, asoko. Okay. So there, we're gonna learn other prepositional stuff. Asoko. Okay. Got it. Takaiboshi wa chotto. I was looking up milk in the dictionary and found what the heck is that? Which is defined by witch's milk? Milk secreted by some neonates? Lotus. What kind of search engine are you using? <laughs> you might say across the street, but that's longer. I see. <clears throat> Fair enough. Uh, I think we're. I would say like hiner, hiner, like hiner. I, I'm like doing a pointing motion, but it's it's like hiner, basically like over there. You just look up milk in the dictionary, and you landed on witch's milk nice what kind of dictionary do you have the necronomicon or something necro necronomicon yeah hmm practicing some black magic here Takaiboshi wa chotto. i'm kidding i'm kidding though i actually do know that you would see that it that has actually already happened before uh looking in the dictionary like that i i'm i'm just joshing just joshing don't check him, PC. <laughs> Takaiboshi wa chotto. Uh, Takashi. Right. Takaiboshi wa chotto. Takai. 
高い高い,高い That's expensive right I forgot this word today when I was recalling 高い高い帽子,帽子、uh, はちょっとはちょっと高い帽子はちょっと Yes, expensive. Yeah. 高い高い帽子はちょっとこの傘も古いです What are you up to, Milo? What are you up to lately? It's really late, by the way. Are you getting enough sleep, Milo? Kono, <clears throat> Kono,、uh, Kasa, I'm umbrella blind. I need to remember, I need to raise my umbrella awareness. Whenever I hear Kasa, it just disappears from my brain. So, Kono, Kono, Kasa, Mo, Hurui, yes, I don't know what it is. When I think of casa, I'm thinking of house. Sorry, that was a dad joke. That was a ha ha joke, guys. Laugh it up. <clears throat> When I hear casa, I think of house. Good luck with that. Kono casa mo furui des. Kono casa mo. Kono casa mo furui des. Su casa es mi casa. Sukasa es mi casa. Es, es mi casa. <laughs> It's kind of funny,、uh, those phrases. I, I really like those phrases.、Um, when someone says,、uh, Sukasa es mi casa, it, it's、uh, very heartwarming. I, I've only had fond memories when people say that phrase. Because <clears throat> I sort of kind of feel that、uh, when a, like my family welcomes someone in the house, they're kind of saying the same thing, but they don't say the same thing. I don't know how you greet <clears throat> people, but here's a funny one. Okay, I got you another funny one when you want to greet someone. <clears throat> so.、Uh, Niho is Mandarin. It's very close to Mandarin, but Niho, as in, how are you doing? Right? Nice, like, how are you doing? It's more for the first time, or like you haven't seen the person in a long time. Like, Olai, Olai, Mugina, or something like that. I think that's, I just use Cantonese or something, but it, it's kind of like that where, like, oh, I, we haven't seen each other for a while. How are you? And then there's how you check up with someone who you know already. And I kid you not, a Fujonese expression of checking up someone is, Nye busy ma. Nijirung e busy ma. That is how you check up on someone. Or, like, how are you doing? The word busy is in the phrase. Like, no, no, it's not busy as in Mandarin busy, it's English busy. Ni e busy ma. And my parents say that. It's, it's actually part of their phrasing. The other way would be, um,、uh, what are you doing right now? Ni ji run jom mia. Uh, ni ji run jom mia. Or, like, today, recently, or ni. Um, what have you been doing recently?、Uh, that's how you would check up on someone instead of asking, like, how are you?、Uh, a lot of times. Or, nisiro moi, nisiro moi, have you eaten? Right? Nisiro moi. Furui. It's never always about your health. It's about, is your stomach empty? Come on in. We're going to fill up that stomach. Have you been busy lately? Please tell me about what you have been doing. It's not, how are you? Are you feeling okay?、Uh, oftentimes, like, did you eat? What did you do? Let's go. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. No time for these feeling stuff. Did you eat? And what did you do today? Done. Let's go. Okay. So, 
Pono Pono Casamo Fruides. Fruides. Uh, this is <clears throat> this umbrella. Is this old umbrella? No. This umbrella is also old. I'm not getting mowed today. Mm -mm. No, sir. No mo. No mo. Mows. Hana-san no kasa wa atarashii desu ne. Hana-san no kasa wa atarashii desu ne. Hana, san. No. I think I missed a color. Hana-san no kasa wa atarashii desu ne. I didn't miss a color. Okay. Kasa wa Pasporto Pasporto Atarashi. I meant I totally missed. Uh Des Hanasan no Kasawa Atarashi Desne. Okay. I was totally looking for I was listening so hard for color. Like uh, when she was saying the entire phrase, like, I know that word, I know that word, I know, I know, I know. Did I miss the color? But I had to listen to a couple of times to hear if there's a color in there. I probably missed the colors because, um, you know, uh, I don't, they don't. So here's probably my explainer to why I probably missed the color quite often is generally because up to this point um the the, the adjectives weren't in the attributive form so uh they have in uh, in duolingo they try to keep the particles right so uh hana san no right particle and then they often keep the object without an attributor <clears throat> so the object right the topics this is the topic this is the object Right? So the things before wa, but between no and wa, or another topic particle, between no and wa, usually there's just an object or the subject of the predicate. And now, since we have a lot of descriptors, they use uh, predicates, especially standalone predicates like e adjectives. To modify the subject and I often forget the su like the extra adjective because I think of the word that's next to the wa particle right so then I end up dropping it and that's a habit that I notice now so now I'm paying attention to that so I'm making sure that I can take in the cluster between the two particles <clears throat> and that's my way of reasoning why I'm missing so now I know Shiroi. why maybe how how and why I'm missing colors Shiroi. so that's how I'm making up for maybe not being able to catch that in the first place uh the, I love the particle system like I love these things the nose the the was the <clears throat> um the gaz and uh what else we got the yos uh we have more stuff i mean then we have the adjective stuffs now like right e uh she and the nas the knees yeah the knees the cause like it, it really you get so used to it the yeah the uh the gay yeah the gas dude it, it organizes it's so it's so organized i i don't know where i can live without this anymore and then we get to english <laughs> it's just joking i still see it in english uh but it, it's not there like for example it's not literally there right when you think of English, you're clustering too. It's just, it's not explicitly there where you have like <clears throat> your noun, noun phrase, right? Noun phrase, but you cluster them. And then you have like your verb, right? And then your verb phrase, 
And then you have modifying phrases, right? Gerunds, uh, prepositions, but you cluster them. You, you imagine them grouped together already, but there's no like literal thing that designates what they are, right? It, it doesn't tell you like, hey, this side is this. Hey, this side is this. And this is referring to this side, right? Literally in the language. And uh, that's what English doesn't technically have. It's there. Just they skip over that step. Yes. Whoop. We, we lost it. <laughs> we lost it in translation. So, yeah. Now you just can't deal without it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. Is not organized that well, yeah. yeah. I, I'm... This sounds like a cliche, but this is so Japanese. Like, and, and what I mean by that is I'm not even referring to the blatant thing that it is the Japanese language. I'm saying it's so Japanese culture. Like, this is so Japanese culture. The, the way the language is written. It, it's so Japanese. For lack of a better phrase. It embodies the Japanese culture. I do like how you always find what you're looking for in Japanese. Boa note on dia senores. Hi. Hello there. Sorry, I can't read that, but hello. Hello. Uh, perhaps, uh, Yosoko, konnichiwa. Genki desu ka? Or, hello, how are you? I can't, um, Nehoma. Oh, that's Cantonese. Whoops. Nihauma. <laughs> Oops. Or, um, I guess, uh, hola, como te llamas, como te llamas, that's, that's all I got, but hello, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Tudo ben uh, obrigado, obrigado, hmm. Todo ben obrigado. Everything's good? Everything's okay? Something like that? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Everything's okay? I'll take it that you're doing very well. Because emojis help. You love Japan? Nice. Nice. Have you been to Japan? Ray. I have not been to Japan. Oh. Although there are quite a lot of people that have as, ha, when I started doing this. <clears throat> That's Portuguese, I imagined. Um, my guess would have been Portuguese. Yes, and Brazilian Portuguese. Yep. Uh, I uh, The reason why I could probably say that was it is because I play a game... I play an online game called Neverwinter Online and a lot of times that kind of during that time period and that time frame during my evenings it lines up with that quite a lot but yes hello hello are you learning Japanese at the moment uh Ken's new wallet is nice isn't it okay Kensan, Kensan no, Kensan no, what is new? Kensan no new saifu wa. I'm just kidding. Uh, new is. Uh, atara, atarashi. So, uh, Kensan, Kensan no atarashi saifu wa. Ii, Ii desu ne. Right? Ii desu ne. Kensan. No. 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 Atarashi. Saifu. 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 So low energy. 
財布を。あは,はいい。はいい。いい。ですね。Let's double check. <笑>ケンさんの新しい。Yeah. 新しい。財布はいいですね。この新しい T シャツは可愛いですね。OK。OK。Let's see if I remember that.、Um, I lost the subject. この新しい T シャツは可愛いですね。この新しい店は、um, no. 店 no, that's not the subject. T シャツはかわいいですね。この新しい T シャツはかわいいですね。Yeah. Yeah, so this one is the same. I, I lost the. <clears throat> so my habit right now is I'm losing the attributive. I keep losing the attributive a form of an adjective. Every, every single time. I'm just so used to having like、uh, the common words flanking without two phrases. So I lost a Kono Atarashi t s h i r t s u T s h i r t s u T s h i r t s u wa kawaii desu ne. So I got everything except Atarashi. where Atarashi was sitting.、Uh, we're gonna have to practice that pretty, pretty close. <clears throat> この新しい T シャツはかわいいですね。Yeah. 花さんの傘はいいですね。え、hey? 花、けん、けん、さん、の。I heard Casa, so I'm not umbrella blind. I heard Casa. I don't know if there was an attributive adjective. No, I think it was asking. Ana san no Casa wa Atara. Chikatetsu. Chikat no, no way. Wait, I don't even know. いいね、oh, it's just いい adding.、Mm, okay, I'm having trouble also hearing the E ですね。Okay. ですね。花さんの傘はいいですね。So nothing here. 花さんの傘はいいですね。Okay. Slowly but surely. No, slowly but surely. Wait, how am I getting. All right, sure. You know what? Let's do this. Let's go. I, I should do kanji, but it's fine. We'll do at least one more.、Uh, arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Furui. 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 Okay. <clears throat> That coat is old. Okay. Oto. Sono. そのことは古いです。古いです。新しい。新しい。And, uh, 100。100。1000。Oh, no, 1000。古い。古い。八<笑> 8。And, uh, 9時。9時。Okay. Uh, let's try this. Uh, Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi san. Yamaguchi san no doresu. Doresu wa kawaii desne. Uh, kawaii. Yeah, desne. Yeah, that's fine. You got it. It's all good. San wa. Uh, doresu. Dores. 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 Wa. No. I meant to say no. Ah! No. 
山口さんのドレスドレスはかわいい,わい,いですね。ですね。あ、さん。せん。せん。あ、oh,、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、I don't really like blue shoes.、Um, you know what? I'm not the biggest fan of blue shoes either. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever owned a pair of blue shoes. <laughs> I've owned green shoes though. <clears throat> anyway.、Uh, Aoi. Aoi. Kutsu. Wachotto. 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 Aoi, Aoi, Kutsu, Wachoto. I want new shoes, okay. <clears throat> um, Atarashi, Atarashi, Kutsu, Kutsu, Gahoshi, 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 this. This red t shirt is cheap, isn't it? Uh, Sono, Sono, Akai. Itsetsu, Tisetsu, Tishatsu, sorry, Tishatsu. Tishatsu wa Yasui, Yasui desu ne? So, Sono, or Kono, I think Sono. Kono, 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 Akai. I'm, when I say、uh, Sono, I'm thinking of Kono in Kana, but I need to stop doing that. <clears throat>、uh, Kono, Kono, Akai. Akai. Kishatsu. Kishatsu wa. wa.、Uh, Yasui. Desu ne. Desu ne. My older brother's clothes are hideous. <laughs> I don't have an older brother. <clears throat> Unfortunately.、Uh, so, Ani. Ani. Ani no. Ani no. Uh, huku, huku, huku wa dasai, yes. Ani no fuku, ah, fuku, sorry, fuku, fuku, uh, wa dasai, yes. This. This cool jacket is six thousand yen. Reasonable price. Baseball price. So, Kono, Kono, Kakoi, 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 sorry, Kakoi, Sono, Kakoi, Jacketto, Jacketto, wa, Roku, Roku, Sent Yen, Roku, Roku, Sent Yen, this, Sent Yen, this. That's fine. Uh. Sono. Kono. I mean. I think Sono. Kono. Ono. Ono. Wait. It's still Kakoi.、Uh, Kakoi. Kakoi. Yeah, Kakoi. It's still Kakoi. For a moment there, I thought it was something else. Um. Kono. Kakoi. Jacketto. Skato. No, 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 no. Jacketto. Jacketto. Uh, wa, roku, sen, en, des. I don't really like expensive hats. Which one's expensive? Something ka. Taka, takai. Takai. Takai, yeah. Takai. Takai. Boshi. Boshi. Wa, I mean. Boshi wa choto. The kai boshi wa choto. Wa choto. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is 200 yen, so. I think I have to use, uh, kore, 
<clears throat> Kore wa. Yeah, yeah. Kore wa. Kore wa ni. Ni hyaku. Ni hyaku yen des. Kore wa. Ni. Yaku. Yaku. Yen des. This code is new, isn't it? <clears throat> okay. So. Oh no. That's how I said it. Kono. Kono koto. Kono koto wa. Atarashi desne. Kono. Kono. Koto. Koto. Wa. Wa. Atarashi desne. Kono. Kono akai dores. Dore. Doresu. Doresu wa steaky. Steaky. Steaky desne. Kono. Akai. 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 Doresu. Wa. Steaky. 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 Desne. Is that wallow their 1000 yen? Okay. <clears throat> ano, yeah, this is Ano, Ano Saifu. Saifu wa Ichi, Ichi, Ichi Senyen Deska. Ano Saifu. Saifu wa. wa What? Did you spell Ichi out? Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Oh, is it different? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do you just say you don't even Sen. say? Wait. Sen. Hold the phone. Oh. Do you just say? Sen. En. Really? Kare. Kare. There's curry in there. Oh, I guess. Oh, so it's implied. Okay. I, I think. I actually didn't know that. This is. There's only one other time. It was for 100, and I don't remember what 100 was. I don't remember 100 was, but I, I think it's just implied as well there, too. Kind of neat. I like it. Uh, Sumimasen. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sumimasen. Ah, uh, this is the other vocabulary. Okay. Sumimasen. Ikura, Ikura is how much, or Ikura, yeah, yeah, so. Sono, I mean, Kono, Kono Kuroi, Kono Kuroi dura, Durasu, Durasu wa Kura Desk ka. Okay, we'll try that. So, uh, sumimasen. sumimasen. Kuroi. Kuroi. Where are you, Kuroi? Kuroi. Kuroi. Dorasu. Doresu. Doresu. Dores. Dores. Yes. Dores. Wa. Ikura. Ikura. Deska. Deska. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Learn katakana. Oh, hey. It, they, what? All the way down here? Dang. All right, I guess. Wait. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so we have to open the door with katakana. Ah, uh, sure. Neat. Hey. Hey. 
ムムあれでで sorry でで Re is、uh, something else, sorry. Re. No. No. Uh, no. No. Yashi. Let's see if I remember any of these things. Yeah, Yashi. Oh, these things are different now. They're written so differently. Because、uh, I haven't done a kana thing since we installed the Japanese, uh, the Japanese font. Input thing for Windows that、uh, Yashi,、uh, the, what you call that Yashi, looked so much more pronounced. The, the strokes are like a lot thicker. Everything's so thick, so much thicker. Out of context. Sorry, kids.、Uh, kare. <clears throat> so, kare. Kare. Heso. 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 Yeah, man, these lines are so much longer. What the heck? Okay, let's practice this. Eya, Eya. which is a room? Uh, Soki. Uh, Noki. 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 Uh, <clears throat> Tsuya. 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 Uh,. Yama. Yama and Mura. 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 Hansamu. Hansamu? Wait, is that like handsome? <laughs> ha. Ha. Hansamu. Ha. Hm. Ha. Hm. Sa. Sa. Mu. Mu. Hansamu. Hansamu. Handsome. Ansamu. Rekishi. Uh, Rekishi. Rekishi. Uh, Mukashi. Mukashi. Where are you? Mukashi. Mukashi. Kareshi. 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 <clears throat> Mu? De. De. えでやのあのむタイヤタイヤえタイヤあーあーあーいやタイヤタイヤタイヤ<笑> OK yeah fair タイヤタイヤシアシアスレ I can't help but hear all the meaning of the words here I, I know I know I know I'm working on it Lotus please I know how you feel and it I think it's to me if I were in your position I, it would drive me insane it would slow me down so much I would say like this word the meaning this word the meaning this word the meaning and if I forget a meaning I'm like dude I need to know the meaning. It's, it's like I've been, I had to, like, it feels. I, I totally what you mean. You can't help but hear all the meanings of the word. I've been、uh, passively listening to vocabulary, and they often start with all of these words. And I'm trying to turn off my brain a little bit, just a little bit, so I don't slow down too much. But I totally know how that feels. I'm like brainstorming all these. Words because there are actually most of them are all words, you know what I mean? Like, that's such a waste of space if a combination is not a word. Now,、uh, if you think about it, right? This Japanese just ain't that not like that. Although, can you tell me? I have a better question Are there any two combinations of kana that doesn't mean anything? I don't think so, right? Meanwhile, can I think of an English example where it doesn't mean anything because there's not enough? I guess technically 
if you don't count abbreviations. Hmm. I just can't see how a language would use a combination, not use a combination. Heitsu does not appear to be a word. Oh, interesting. Heitsu. They should ascribe a meaning to it. You know what I mean? You know? Come on. Japanese people are slacking. I'm sorry, Japanese people. I, I didn't mean that, but you're slacking. Let's ascribe a meaning to Heitsu. Esu. Etsu. <laughs> Su sure. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, kamu. Uh, noru. Eso. Eso. Uh, ya yama. And shia. Ukurere? Ukurere? What the heck? Ukurere? Wait. Ukurere? Ukurere? Wait. That's who? Ukurere? 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 Okay. U. U. Uku. Ukurere? Dere? Ukurere? What does. Ukulele? Oh, that totally makes sense. Ukulele. Wait, now I want to ask Fetishes how he would say ukulele. Ukulele. Makes sense. Ukulele. Hey, Yasui. Oh, hey, Yasui. I actually, that's actually a word. Although it's not in katakana, though. This is hiragana. Anyways, Yasui. Hekomu. 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 Now these. Okay. Hmm. Yamori. Yamori. Uh. Uh, Henka, 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 Henka. Ya, oh, ya, ya, oh, ya. Okay, ku, a ko, o, m, ya, onka, konya, onya, onya, on, on, m, ya, konya. Tanomu. Uh, Tanomu. Helsinki. Helsinki. Oh, hey. Uh, I guess it means Helsinki. Uh, unless it means something else, but I'm familiar with this name per se. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of. I, I imagine it's kind of like Yamaguchi, where it actually. Or Nakayama, which it has like a naturey meaning, possibly. Helsinki. Helsinki. Helu. Shink wait. Oh no, wait. Does that work for katakana? Where you're describing someone somewhere else in like a different country? Do they have do they impart meaning from the katakana? Huh. Helsinki. Because this is Helsinki. Right? So hmm. Helsinki. Eh do? <clears throat> Heru? Helsinki. Helsinki? Chi. Chi. Mm. Chi. Helsinki. Introducing the Duolingo Family Plan. We'll Encourage all your favorite people to learn a language with unlimited hearts, no ads, and more to help them learn fast. Add anyone to your plan. Your family. Your friends. Anyone. 
save together, learn together with the Duolingo Family Plan. Honestly, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to Super, you have never seen the end of that ad? What the? I think it's a really cute ad. Lotus, I'm just saying. You're missing out. <laughs> I think it's a really cute ad. You know what? I I have a criticism for that ad. It 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 makes me really sad. You know why? It's missing the old people. Dude, what the heck? It's missing the old characters. You know, the mustache guy and the air wrap guy and the lady with the cell phone in her in her hair. Come on. It's got all the edgy people and the bear and the bear. I, it's not quite clear how old the bear is, but it doesn't have this lady in it. <gasps> Wait. Oh, you're telling me I have to learn all the katakana characters to unlock the new level. Wait, didn't I unlock? Oh. Wait. What? Hold. Hold on. Oh, I can choose to skip ahead. Oh, I see. I see. Do I want to do that? Yeah, let's do that for now. <clears throat> Wait, what does that mean if I hit skip ahead? Are you sure? We recommend that you learn. Hmm. Uh, wait. It says I'm missing 11. Let me see. What does 11 mean? Oh! All, I had to fill in these golds, right? 3, 6, 10? No, it can't be the combos. Wait, can I not count? 11. Three, six, nine, ten. Where's the eleventh? Or maybe it's this. No, that's fifteen. There, there are fifteen missing dakuons. Oh, maybe it's counting. No, <laughs> there's more. Yeah, let's let's just do it. Let's just do it. This is the perfect time. I've been saying for the last three days that my katakana is like heck a week. Heck a week. Because I uh, forgot things like da. I don't know what da is. Oh, no, no. Now I do because I saw it. But I mean, like, recalling. Recalling, like, just thinking about it without seeing it. I, it has sucked. So every time I, like, uh, try to recall something, I've forgotten the katakana for a bunch of them. <clears throat> Not without seeing them. And when I see them, it's fine. I can't seem to write them very, very well. Yeah, let's see if there's anyone that I just completely missed. Possibly, possibly, whoa. Okay. <clears throat> let's try it. Let's try it. Yup. Uh, yeah. It, it's been that long that they're... My yo. My yo. Me. And Mac group is still. Do. 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 Oh, and it's so weird now. Whenever I see, uh, when we ever talk about like characters, right? You know, like game characters and stuff. And I'm saying, like, do you, right? Do you? It sounds so nice saying do you instead of, uh, do you, right? Or Ryu. <laughs> So, so, I don't know that it's gonna be weird moving moving forward, and just saying do you, right? Uh, and before then it was Ryu, because Ryu Street Fighter Two, or largely Street Fighter because of Ryu and Ken, right? Now, and then somewhere in my teens because of anime it became do you, do you, and now it's just do. You. And weird, right? Weird. Weird. Times have changed. Okay. 
Oh. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. They're still writing it this way? I thought they would dis distinguish between the two. Okay. Ah! Oh! I don't want to talk about it. Mexico? 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 Ah, oh, that's harder to... That's harder to say than Mexico or Mexico. What is that? Okay. Mexico? We had this before. Uh... Me... 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 me. She... Me she go or ko Mexico 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 Really Mexico Mexico Wow Mexico Mex Mex Oh my gosh <laughs> Mexico? Mex Mexico? <laughs> Mexico? Mexico? <laughs> Mexico? <laughs> that's so- that's- that's tough. Uh... Mex- uh... Mex- uh... Get it. Mexico. Forget it. <clears throat> Iro. Iro. Uh, yome. Yome. Uh, yomu. Yomu. Uh, toki. 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 And, ro, roku. 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 Uh, iro. Iro. Yo. No, this is o. Toire. Uh, toire. Toi, to, i, re, re, toire, toire. Okay. Okay. Yo, yoku, yoku, yoko, yoko. Whoops. <clears throat> That's a problem. Yoko. Um. Toge. 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 Toki. Toki. Yo. Kiyo. And. Roku. Roku. Shime. Shime. Uh, yome. Memo. Memo. Me. Me. me mo. mo. Uh, shime. Shime. Iro. Iro. Yome. 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 Uh Toge 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 Uh Kyo 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 Roku Roku Oops Toki Toki America. America, of course. Uh, me di ka. America. Um, shime. Yomu. Uh, uh, toge. 
Udoku. Udo Udoku. Uh, Meshi. Yomu. Uh, I think this might actually take... Let's keep going Anago. for a little bit. Anago. <clears throat> uh, Kia. 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 Uh... Gumi. No. Yes. No. I'm just. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Toge. Toge. Gas. Gasu. 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 Ah. Uh, uh oh. Uh, uh, te go. No. Ah, uh, ne go. No, no, no. I know what ne is. Ana go. Na. Ana go. Ana go. <coughs> Negi. Onegi? Wait, Onegi? Negi. Oh, Negi. Negi. I got hungry for a moment there. Negi. Negi. Ne. Why you give me two nes? Ki. Negi. Green onions, man. That umami bomb. <clears throat> Gumi. Gumi. Uh, Anago. 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 Uh, Gasu. Gasu. The word umami will make more sense to you later, too. Oh, interesting. As in, like, uh,. Can you give me a teaser? Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. Never mind. I, I'm looking forward to it. It's fine. Oh, like maybe the parts of umami. Got it. I, I think. Man, now... Lotus, you can't tease me like that. That's not... That's not nice. Now, now I'm distracted. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, gorilla, 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 sage, sage, ah, uh, gumi, gumi, um, uh, toge, gasu, gasu, uh, anago, 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 anago. Anako. Yeah, not to be uh, confused with Kia. Ah, uh, Gia. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I missed the taco. No, I don't. I'm not. Gurasu. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Wait. Gurasu. Oh, this is glass because uh. Isn't uh isn't kusa? Kusa is grass, right? Like that grass. But this is gla grass, uh, like glass. Gurasu. 
instead of uh Usa. Usa. Grasu? Like they're not syn synonyms, of course. That's what I mean. Uh U Gu La Su. Su Yeah. Okay. Anago. Anago. Ragu. Ragu. Not to be confused with ragu. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, I've been watching this Italian American couple way too much, and uh, ragu comes up quite a bit. Um. <clears throat> go. Go. Gorira. Oh yeah, Gorira. Gorira. Uh, and then I screwed. Oh no, I confused this one. Uh, no, 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 not Kigo. this one. Kiko is not it. Never mind. Geru. Geru. Gasu. 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 Gigu. Uh, Gigu. <laughs> Gigu. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, immature alert. Uh, Kiku. Kurage. Kurage. Ku. <clears throat> Kurage. 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 Anago. Anago. Gori, uh, yeah, Gorira. Gomu. Gigu. Oh, <laughs> uh, Giri. And then I screwed this. Uh, I, Gia. Yeah. <clears throat> alright, alright, we need to learn more vocab. I'm sorry. Am I really gonna? Yeah. <clears throat> I have to do some soul searching right now. Hang on. The question is, do I go back on what I said earlier today? No. Ekin, righteous indignation, here we come. No, uh, Zo. <clears throat> so you take Soul. Zo. Yeah. So. So. Za. <clears throat> Za. These are new. We hadn't seen the Daku ones for these. <clears throat> za 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 G <clears throat> the other G G as you take two right G Z did you just zo do me Z I think you should do whatever is more fun. It's important for not to feel like a chore. Oh, uh, well, no, see. See, this isn't zeros and ones, uh, Lotus. This is all of the above. They're both fun. But now I'm thinking about what, which one I need to choose from. Because there's this problem when you're having too much fun. I'm pretty sure you're probably thinking where I'm going with this. I don't have enough time to have too much fun. I have to choose how I spend my time. <laughs> <clears throat> We're running out of time. It's like playing video games. <sighs> okay. Uh, say. say. Uh, 
Gay. Gay. This symbol is so. This this kana is so troll. <laughs> this katakana is so troll. Okay. Oh, T. Wait, Chi. Sorry, Chi. <laughs> all, all I can think about is the kanji shape now. <clears throat> it's not exactly the same, but so troll. Um. Why? Why? Why do this? Uh, ze. Ze. Te. Ozon. What? Ozon. Ozon? Ozon. Ozon. Cute. Very cute. O. O. Zo. Zo. Mm. Mm. Ozon. Zaru. Zaru. Eh. Ozu. Ozu. <clears throat> Ozu. Ozu. Jin. 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 Oh. Jin. I see dark holes. Uh, <clears throat> ze, zero. Uh, zero. Zero. Uh, <clears throat> uh, zero. zero? No, zero. Wait, zo no zoro. Goro. Oh, goro. Whoops. <laughs> right, that's it. That's a, uh, that's a ko ko goro. Um. Zoro. 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 Uh, Zori, Zoru, Zoru, and Zozo. Zozo. Oh, tell me, Zozo is something. It's an onomatopoeia or something, right? What goes Zozo? Come on, tell me something goes Zozo. Is it like zoom zoom? It is katakana. <clears throat> Zozo. No, you can say so so. Nothing, unfortunately. Oh, come on. Zozo is so cute. Zemi. 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 Saizu. Saizu. Saizan. Saizan. Sasan, sorry, Sasan. Sasan. Kazan. What? Whoops. Wait. Oh. Sasan. Sasan. Hirakana kicking me in the butt again. Like, I, I got uh, Hirakana and the Saiyan, Saiyan so. Angel. 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 Okay. Not happening this time. Go. Go jiru. Go jiru. Oh, uh, no. Go. Go jira. Oh, hey. Go jira. We finally found it. We can end the stream now.
We got Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla. 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 It's done. Look. Run. It's Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla. <laughs> We did it! Godzilla! 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 Whoops! Godzilla! 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 Fine. Godzilla! Godzilla! Um... Ga... Game... Gamera... Gamera? <clears throat> uh, koala. <clears throat> koala. Koala. Hmm. Oh wait, I keep getting stuck on gorilla. Gorilla. Weird. I saw that ten times now. At least. And then, Kujira. Kujira? Kujira. Kujira. What? Kujira. 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 A quiz? Ku... Ku... Ri? Kujira. 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 Zo. Zo. Za. Oh. No. Asia. Asia. A. G. <clears throat> ah. Asia. 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 Hmm. Asia. Asia. Okay. All right. I'll I'll take it. Asia. Ozone. Zigzag. Uh, <clears throat> uh, G, 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 Take care, Lotus. Thanks for hanging out and chilling. Yeah, have a great weekend, too. Enjoy your weekend. Best of luck with everything. Sui, sui, suiji, <clears throat> or sui zu? Yeah, sui su, zu, sui. Oh no, sui su, sui su, zu, sui zu. Uh, suzuk, oh, suzuki, suzuki, or suzuki, suzuki. Suzuki and then Suzu Suzume Ne <clears throat> Ne Zume Mi Ne Nezumi Nazania Nazamia What? Nazania <clears throat> Lasagna. Da. Da. Za. Ni. Ah. 
Lasagna? Lasagna? Lasagna. Lasagna. Introducing the Duolingo all right, family all right, plan. Alright, alright, we saw this today. Come on. You gotta chill. Yeah, we go through... We have to bootstrap two more times. I think we're gonna get this. Oh, the other Daku ones. Um, the D's. <clears throat> T's and D's. Tate, uh, Tate to E2, right? Zu, sorry. G, G, Zu. Yeah. Da, uh, Tate, uh, so Da de, Da de do G, Zu. Funny, I could have sworn this was already introduced. Okay, G. Yeah, off chi, right? Chi to G. Um, chi, wait, two. Wait, yeah, two, zu, and ta te to. Ta te to to da de do. Da. <clears throat> Da. Da. G. Whoops. Oh. G. I don't want to talk about it. Da. G. Okay. G. <clears throat> G. Z. 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 Da. 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 Zu. Zu. Ji. 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 De. 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 Do. 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 De. De. Da. 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 Dance. Da. Da n da n su su dan su dan su te de da de de to do 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 all right, we're just gonna match these up now. <clears throat> no sound, no problem. What the heck? They go straight across. Okay, I was about to say. Dorama. 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 <clears throat> That's cute. Do da ma. Do da ma. Drama, of course. That's why it's cute. Kare. <clears throat> okay. Kare. Sure. Okay. Sure. Taiya. Taiya. Tire. Uh, ta i a uh, wait. Oh, my. Oh, oh, it's yeah, no, nah, uh, never mind. That's honest mistake. <laughs> uh, Mukashi, <clears throat> Mukashi, Kareshi, Kareshi. Okay. Yamori. Yamori. Enka. Konya. Konya. Yaoya. Yaoya. And Hanomu. Tanomu. 
ウクレレウクレレおや。あウウクユクレレユクウクウクレレレレヤスイヤスイヘコムヘコムヘコムあハレルハレルあムレムレルムレルムレルむかしむかしかれかれしかれしむかしむさしむさしヘルシンキ That was my fault ヘルヘルシンキえエルルシシキヘルシンキヘルシンキ Oh, did I miss one? Mmm, I missed a mmm in shin mmm ki. Okay, it's fine. I got a. Taiya? <clears throat> アイテムアイテムあえあなおたつい、e. はいアイテムアイテムアイテムおうウェイアイテムアイテムいやタイヤアイテムアイヤヤヤヤヤヤヤヤイタイヤイヤタイヤヘルシンキアイミスタうんはいえルルシシンうんキキキヘルシンキーえ、let's see if the number goes up oh yeah what's that a one yeah there are only five left what the heck what's 46? uh what's 76? <clears throat> it can't be all the Dakuons. Oh my gosh. I think it's all the Dakuons. So all the Dakuons just, ca- just count as one symbol. That's probably what they're talking about. Because it's really just the two, two strokes. Okay, now I'm kind of curious if it always stays on Dakuons if we complete this section. Let's try it. ロとえとおおよよあめあめえとしうめうめよめろく
夜音トイレ「と」「い」「で」「予算」Lonely? Lonely? <clears throat> I feel like lonely is、uh, for lonely. <clears throat> lonely. よわい。わい。よわい。よわい。よわい。I don't remember. <clears throat> oh, this is わ。よわい。め、ろ、ろ、うん、と、め、おとめ、おとめる、さ<笑>、おとめる、ろ<咳>、よ、ロシア、ロシア、ろ、あ、し、あ。Russia. Russia. Russia. Got it. Yo. Yo. Those are very different. Hato. Hato. That's like hot dog, really. Hato. Doku. Meshi. Tome. Uh, Shiro and、uh, to Toshi Tonneru Tonneru. So to to m re. Oops, that's a do re or neru Tonneru Tonneru Tonneru. Yeah, Tonneru. <clears throat> Tunnel. Tonneru. <clears throat> Kanyo. Kanyo. Now,、oh, these are very different. What the heck? Tsuyoi. 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 Hey. アメツアメツヨーヨコヨコロあトコロウプストコロあファイヨーオトルオトスヘイヴィクターシメル How are you? Did you just get back from work? Or about that time, I suppose. A little later than you usually do? Or. Just considering the time. A longer day today, I imagine. Or usual. You had a small snack. Ah. Ooh, what did you snack on, Victor? Hit me up with your, um. I'll paint a picture. Hold on. It's a rainy day. 
You've got home from a long work day. You just want to chill and vibe. We are slightly scummy. It's a bit nippy outside. What kind of snack do you grab? And then what snack did you have today? Just saying. <laughs> Restaurant. <laughs> uh, restaurant. Um, I, I was just being playful, and because a lot of times the common question is, "What's your favorite snack?" You know. But if you're like someone who lived as long as I have, that's like, what the heck? Can I picture? Wait, okay. So, it's been a long day. It's slightly nippy outside. You're kind of tired and you just want to vibe, right? And you feel kind of like scummy, like, ah, it's been, it's been a sweaty day. What do you grab? I'm just being a little bit more specific because oftentimes I do feel that English is too imprecise when you ask, what's your favorite food? It's like, well, it depends. So I figured I'd just paint a picture for you. Although what yeah, I I am interested in what you eat. A sh ooh, yo, shredded squid. Are we talking about like the dry shredded squid, right? Spicy shredded. Squid? Oh, that's nice. That sounds delightful. Nice. Is that what you had today, though? Oh, when you had a little snack. Restaurant. Uh, restaurant. 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 You had a Twinkie? <laughs> a snack of champions. Nice. Very nice. A Twinkie. <clears throat> restaurant. Uh, restaurant. So, re... Do da hmm. Restaurant. Restaurant. Okay. <laughs> Twinkie. You eat dinner soon, right? I I hope that's not your whole dinner, Victor. <laughs> All right, have you had dinner and now you're having a light snack or are you preparing dinner? Here? Or maybe order something. It sounds like you, your, your job is long. You had lunch? What you have for lunch? Ooh, better yet, can you say it in Japanese? I'm probably not going to be able to, not going to be able to read it, but I'm actually kind of curious. You'll probably make something for dinner. I see. <clears throat> like I only got like sandoichi, right? There's a chance you might say sandoichi with I don't know. Go mitsu. <laughs> I guess. Wait. Hold up. Now I'm now I'm com like do you say tabemas if you say sandoichi do mitsu? Or do you say uh, them separately and say, because you have to say no me mas, right? So is is it the same as English where tabe mas is the catch all for eating and drinking? And then when you're only drinking, you only say drink and like no me mas. Or do you say them separately in Japanese? <clears throat> I need I need to know this. Like if you say uh, Mitsu, right? 
ミツミツとサンドイッチは食べます Or, yeah. They have a system for that? Oh, okay, okay. I'll hold off on it then. Nice. So they do have a system for it. Nice, nice. Good, good, good. Of course, they have a system for it. Oh, but I will use both verbs. Okay, fair enough. Nice. Of course, the Japanese system has a system for that. <laughs> of course. Uh, toge. Toge. So, what I'm doing right now, Victor, is、um, in the path of my units, the、uh, Duolingo literally told me you can skip this if you want, but you need to learn all 76 kana characters, which involves all 75 characters. I'm guessing they're counting the Dakuon, the Dakuon as one character, even though it's technically 25 sounds, right? Chili over rice, nice. This is probably getting a little more specific. What, what type of chilies? Did it have beans in it? Are you, are you calling chili with beans chili? No, I'm. Sorry, I, I'm being like an internet. Like an internet. Homemade? Oh, what do you put in your chili, dude? I, sorry, I haven't said dude in a while. It kind of made me、uh, secondhand guess my choice of words. Anago. Anago. <clears throat> Gamu. 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 Gum. Nice. Gamu. <clears throat> Gari. Gari. Gomu. Gamera. 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 Godzilla! 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 Sorry, Godzilla. Yeah, I always want to try to say、uh, emphasis on the first one because it's like Godzilla! 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 <clears throat> okay. You had a bunch of beans and cans that I had lying around and threw them together with seasoning. Solid. They got pinto beans, Christmas beans. What are, the, what are Christmas beans? Like chickpeas, corn kernels, summer sausage. Nice. And then I can already imagine the spices. Oatmeal as a thickener. Oh, that's clever. Like we're talking about like Quaker oaks, right? Or are you. Like quick, quick instant oaks for the thickener, or do you make your own oaks too? And then vinegar, yeah. Call it, help it、uh, break down. Jalapenos, yeah. Jalapenos. Instant oaks, yeah, instant oaks. I agree. Instant oaks work as a wonderful thickener. That adds like a bit of fiber, so you don't have to like use, I don't know, not as generic as like flour starch, you know, tossing a bit of flour starch. Eh, that's kind of mid. I think instant oaks work quite quite well. Agreed. Instead of using a flour starch. That sounds delightful. There is a lot of oatmeal and trying to find creative ways to use it. I see. Um, Savory kanji is a thing. 
I don't know if you make kanji at all, but you can just substitute uh, the rice for oatmeal. I can take like a go to your favorite like Google recipe thing and you can make like slightly salty savory kanji with the oatmeal. My parents do that all the time. They substitute uh, if they don't want to make like rice porridge, right? Getting the uh, rice all glutinous and soft, they just substitute with oatmeal. Cookies, oatmeal cookies, and chuck a lot of them into like some batter. <clears throat> it's always kind of munchy, munchable. Uh, our oatmeal and marshmallows. Uh, nah, that doesn't work. Yeah, kanji is nice. Uh, safe, light on the stomach. Can be, uh, it's, it's a good starter for blandness. <laughs> kanji is nice. True, it does sound like kanji. I mean, kanji is nice too. Dad jokes. I like it. I mean, haha jokes. Getting a little chi chi with me, huh? I see where you're going with that. Just a little chi chi. Cheap. <laughs> I meant cheeky. No, cheeky. <clears throat> um, let's see. Oh no, it's gonna get bad. Today we were all full of double meanings. It's gonna get pretty bad. I hope uh I don't yeah. accidentally offend people by really using that stuff what was streamer eating um the closest thing i could say is uh sweet corn potato chowder nah it, it's like less chowdery it's sweet corn and potatoes and the uh, cream like it's like cream of soup kind of thing, like cream of mushroom soup kind of thing, the base for that. Or like kind of like the chowder thing, but it's sweet because there's sweet corn and potatoes in it. I don't know what it's called. It's it's some Americana thing. And it does have red peppers in it. So it's slightly spicy. Like really mildly spicy. Not enough to get my lava mouth a sensation. They can kind of taste it. Yeah, probably... It looks like a, a there there it's the the little tang is coming from the peppers and it's quite sweet because there's a lot of sweet corn in it for whatever reason i think this is kind of a stereotype so it's not true for everyone however when it comes to the people that I know by extension, the Fujianese people, they really like this cream stuff. Like when we, when I think about it, like, man, people really like clam chowder. <laughs> so it's that type of like a soup base, the Americana soup base, right? Yeah, like they're really into that. And again, it's a stereotype, it's an antidote, but my folks really love clam chowder. So any form and twist on the clam chowder, like adding sweet corn and, and stuff, they're just into it. And funny enough, or ironically, I guess ironically, I don't take to it as much. I take to the like, give me a ball of salt soups. So Americana soups that I like are the balls of salt soups. So like standard chicken noodle. Like, Add three pounds of salt into the chicken noodle and I'm good to go. By three pounds, I mean, if I ever told my father, like if I ever gave a soup that I made to my parents, they'd be like, yo, what is the deal with the salt? The salt is like in, in the stratosphere. I, I, I don't know. I just took to salt a lot more. Weird. 
I'm a very salty guy. <laughs> <clears throat> Gumi. Yeah. And also, this is another stereotype, sort of, especially for like Chinese people. Pizza. It, we're not talking about like very fancy pizza. Just talking about really possibly bland lack of tomato sauce pizza. So, like, my if my if I bring home like a, I don't know. Uh, margarita pizza like from a uh, mom and pop shop they'd be like ah eh, it's okay but then when you like just go to costco and buy a slice of pizza they're like this is nice <laughs> <laughs> or like go go to pizza hut i mean admittedly it's probably a lot more nostalgia because uh, my parents were here when pizza hut was you know different back then not so much now not so much now yeah costco pizza although i am on the same page with my father and butter chicken like my father's love for indian food came out of uh knowing some indians um the restaurant that my parents used to operate was in like a slightly uptown place where you know you get your corner corner market corner market right if you ever go to a little small town like say like a slightly not city but town and you go to a corner there's generally a place where there's a quickie mart run by an indian people like Sorry if you're if you're sensitive to stereotypes, but this is literally what happened to my family, right? So there's gonna be a corner. They operate a restaurant along the city block. And that corner is occupied by an Italian American family that runs a pizza, an Americanized pizzeria. Across from that corner is a quickie mart owned by an Ind Indian group. Across from that is a nail salon owned by a Vietnamese family. And next to that building is my family, who's a Fujianese family operating an Americanized Chinese restaurant. I can't make this stuff up. There's a reason why stereotypes occur. But that was a life in early childhood. So if you ever see a painting picturesque thing, I could even draw this. It's... It's very classical. Very, very common thing. You sure you're not in California? Yeah, yeah. You might as well be close enough, right? Yeah, and Indian food's great. Oh, you like tandoori? Yeah, tandoori chicken. I gotta pump that spice. Although, I do have to admit, when it comes to Indian food, paneer sometimes give me the bubblies. Like, straight up paneer. Like, just throwing back the paneer in a, like, I don't know. Uh, having paneer in that one dish uh, it's not the Americanized one but uh, they, the substituting of paneer this is going to sound blasphemous but generally for my uh, stomach I substitute tofu but tofu is not strong enough to hold up to some of the way you make the Indian base but I would substitute tofu because my unfortunately my biology does not agree with an intense volume of cheese. So paneer is great though. It has the wonderful consistency or blockiness that reminds me of tofu. Respectfully, as respectfully as I can say about tofu. Or I mean about paneer. Gesto. Fish pakura? Oh yes. 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 Gesto. You know what? What is always off-putting looking, but I don't mind it. Uh, korma, or is it korma? No, not korma. It's the spinach korma. You know, it looks like green poo. <laughs> I don't mind that. It has like a really earthy taste to it. <laughs> 
Oh, is that what it's called? Wait. It, all I know is it just looks like really mushy uh, spinach, more or less. Dude. Oh, okay. Saga? Or something saga? Yeah. It, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a pile of... <clears throat> it's mint spinach or lots of mint spinach and I don't know it tastes very earthy it's not kale I can tell you that Oof, that thing would have been bitter a pile of bitter guesto <laughs> guesto guesto ge ge su su do to guesto <clears throat> What do you usually do in the evening? I take a couple spoon of those usually. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like my uh, potpourri of <clears throat> Indian stuff. Usually I go for some greens to settle the stomach, prepare the stomach a little bit. <clears throat> I'm that kind of guy. If I'm gonna eat lava, if I'm going to eat lava for dinner, <clears throat> I take in some cream beforehand, you know, pre-game, pre-game with something creamy before I uh, put lava in my, in my mouth. Things like Thai chili, right? Thai chili, ghost pepper, if any of that goes in my stomach, I'm pre-gaming with some, some, uh, Colloids, something milky. A tandoori, though. <clears throat> I can go for a nice cup of chai right now. <laughs> uh, Koru, Gorida, 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 Gorida. <clears throat> Gorida. Uh, giri. giri. Goro. 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 Oops. Uh, anago. Anago. And Gojira. Gojira. Gumi. Gumi. Okay. Negi. 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 <clears throat> ne. Gi. You made a rookie mistake the first time. I made tandoori chicken with a spice packet from an Indian supermarket. Go on. Go on. Uh, gi gigu gigu <clears throat> go <clears throat> go oh godzira 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 gia gia uh godzira sage Gamera, Gamera. Gamera. <clears throat> Grasu. Grasu. Gu. Da. Gu. Okay. Uh. Goma. Nanago, Nanago, Camera, Asu, <clears throat> Gorilla, Just 
Still not close. <clears throat> I used a boneless chicken and that stuff was spicy. I make sure to use bone and after ah uh, okay. Wow. That's some concentrated spice you have. Yeah, I see where you I see what you mean. What are your light dinner ideas? <clears throat> if you were going to make a light dinner of a long day, it's a weekday. On a summer's eve. -ning. On a summer's evening. Light dinner. <clears throat> what is a go to for you? Ozon. Ozon. Sazan. Sazan. Oh, so Jira. Size. Size. Uh, zero. <clears throat> zero. Oh. Ozone. <clears throat> Lasagna. Lasagna. <clears throat> da. La. Za. Za ni. Huh? Ah. Lasagna. Oh, you try to build something around whatever's on sale? That's solid. That's pretty, that's pretty pragmatic. <clears throat> Fair enough. Fair enough. If you are hosting someone... And you had one day to prep. And this host is coming from far... And this guest is coming from a really far away place. Let's just say this person is from... Great Britain. What would you prep? And it's fall. And they're arriving in the evening. <clears throat> Suzuku? Uh, Suzume. Suzume? Uh, Saizu. Saizu. Sue. Suezu. Suezu. <clears throat> ne. Uh. Nezumi. 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 Gojira. Gojira. Zero. Hot. Okay. I try with a Costco chicken and potato salad. Costco rotisserie. Oh, that's pretty solid. That is pretty solid. Excellent. Hmm. That, yeah, solid, <clears throat> very solid. We just go to Taco Bell. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um. <clears throat> That is a, that is a ye olde Americana experience though, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> awesome. You're a very prag- <clears throat> You're a very pragmatic person. I appreciate that. <clears throat> 
Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't. Hmm. Can I even answer that question myself? That's such a good response, though. Going to Costco and get chicken and potato salad. That's that's so that's really appropriate to lean in. Uh, you wouldn't like, for example, <clears throat> if this person lived in the UK and you just break out like maple tofu. Those first two days of that guest's stomach is going to explode. Like, the chances of them like really digging maple tofu, which is probably the dish I would go with. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. That might be a that might be a far far reaching proposition. You saw a video one time, a British person tried Taco Bell the first time, and his reaction was, I think I found a new love, and his name is the Taco Bell Chalupa. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty solid. Yeah. Um, also, when it comes to, like, lots of, like, insert European, right? Insert European into Americana. Go to, like, a barbecue place, right? So, even roasted chicken, like, simple... Uh, like elegance, so, you know, eloquent, uh, light eating is, is a very safe, appropriate bet. It's, it's often really consistent. Like nothing like blow your face, blow your face out of the water kind of things. So when you said rotisserie chicken from Costco and potato salad, that's, and then Taco Bell, that, that's pretty, that's pretty appropriate. <laughs> very pragmatic. <clears throat> Instead of, uh, I don't know. I don't... Oh, and... Usually they're okay. Uh, I feel like when you see those, like, react videos and eating videos, oftentimes you do still get the... It's... If you go with something sweet, right? Instead of <clears throat> savory, you get that. It's really nice, but it might be too sweet. Kind of thing. So you can't just hit up, uh, I don't know, your neighboring Krispy Kreme. And uh, I would get, oh yeah, Dickie's Barbecue Pit. Yes. <laughs> but I wouldn't hit up like, there is a chance I might grab like one Krispy Kreme donut. Like buy like four Krispy Kreme donuts. Just original glaze, right? As a, as an addition to the the entree the costco and the potato salad maybe like one original glaze krispy kreme donut something that's like readily available something like that as a dessert thing and then ask them do you want to eat lava with me because if you want to eat lava, we're going into a Szechuan house and getting our face numbed while pouring lava into our stomach. You've been warned. But feel free to say no. <laughs> you, you gotta inhale lava. That's, that's, you know... That's not the, the non, that's the non-American side of me. Saying like, yeah, we need some lava now. We're not hitting another Italian restaurant or something. <clears throat> Sa... Za... Hmm. Sazan. <clears throat> Gojira. Gojira. Daizu. There's a funnel cake shop in your city? Go on. Go on. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. Funnel cake. That is a solid choice. Oh man, that's a great idea. In fact, I live in a place that funnel cakes are readily available. It's actually, you know, I live in a Pennsylvania Dutch place, right? So funnel cake is right up next door, right? So that's pretty solid. Yeah, funnel cake. Very solid. Go to Costco, grab a uh, box of chocolate chip cookies. That's probably pretty safe too, right? Chocolate chip cookies, although it's not 
the mainstay it's it's pretty much americana 101 at this point <clears throat> when you get your standard chocolate chip cookies maybe something like an entomins box of chocolate chip cookies Naizu. <clears throat> <clears throat> or your local bakery, whatever your local bakery, grocery store place has. Pretty solid. <clears throat> it has to be in everything? Hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Is that a. Sorry. My friend always said, an everything cookie? Wait, what, what's in an everything cookie? Explain to me the everything cookie. I'm actually... We, we don't consume a lot of cookies in the household. <clears throat> I'm guessing like raisins. Chips. Various chips. Maybe nuts. Some sort of nut. You take like five cookies and toss them all together. Oh, okay. I see. <clears throat> oh, you know what? Personal favorite or personal identifier of my region? Probably some sort of like ginger snap or snickerdoodle. Ginger snap or snickerdoodle. Yeah, like a standard sugar cookie. I, I'm sure they're, they're going to tell me like, well, it's biscuits. And I'm like, all right, we'll go grab some biscuits. Here's some biscuits and give them ginger snaps. <laughs> Maybe prepare some uh, tea as well. For the biscuits. Ozone. Ozone. <clears throat> Sorry, I, this, this is uh, how oh. I think about stuff a lot. I think about hypothetical situations because it's kind of fun to hear how other people interpret their situations. So. One tablespoon pure vanilla extract, okay. Sure, unbleached flour. Flake corn cereal. Huh. And then more toppings. Semi sweet chocolate, yeah. Large shard or disc. Of regular toppings. Coarsely chopped mini pretzels. Oh, that's interesting. And then toffee bits. Oh yeah, such as Heath. Yeah. <clears throat> that is a very base. That's a good base to uh, just toss anything on there. That's for sure. <clears throat> Indeed. Ozone. Ozone. Mm. Suzuki Sazan Sazan <clears throat> Saizu Saizu Uh Ozo Ozon Ozon and Ku Oh Uh Kujira Kujira Zero Zero. Zero. <clears throat> Zaro. Zaru. Zaru. Jimu. 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 Ku. Fujira. Fujira. Zuki. Uh. Su Suezu uh, uh, Zoru Zoro Zoru Zoru Nezumi Yeah, so more salt. Yeah. It it can be quite end up going too sweet indeed. <clears throat> Yeah, it looks like I'm going to be doing katakana for the rest of the day. That's not too bad. 
I want to complete this door officially. All right. <clears throat> it's a good review. I've been putting off Hirakana and Katakana practice for some time. Hey, I, I didn't end up going to complete these things. Okay. <clears throat> da. Da. G. 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 Zu. Oh. De. De. <clears throat> De. G. Uh. Do. Do. De. De. Zu. Zu. Da. da. Model. 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 Okay. Mo. Mo. De. De. Mo. De. Ru. Ru. Model. Model. Oh. De. Mo. De. De. Ru. Model. Mode. Model. Demo. Okay. <laughs> Demo. Edo. Edo. Muda. 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 Uh, nodo. Nodo. Ah, <clears throat> uh, tada. Tada. Dame. Dame. Uh, deco. Deco. And dere. Dere. Daia. Daia. Da, da, da i, i a, a da i ya 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 da i ya da i ya diamond da i ya da i ya hito de hito de sando what the heck what does Sando mean? This dude, that can totally go for a sandwich. Sandoichi. Sandos. Sando. And? Oh, that's fair. <laughs> that's that's actually fair. I was uh, talking earlier about uh, we learned the katakana for Sando uh, Sandoichi uh, Sandoichi. And I'm like, well, you can just. There's Sando too. Sando. Sando. Dance. Unfortunately, we won't know. Dance. Dance. That's actually dance. <clears throat> uh, Daya. 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 It's always fun to imagine uh, doing uh, katakana is kind of fun because uh, Duolingo doesn't necessarily give words all the time. They just mix and match all the characters. So you practice uh, kana. So I practice kana in that way. Just break, break up all the kana and put them all together. And there are some good ones that end up being... There are some that end up sounding like something, but it wasn't that... And then the ones that do sound like the thing is kind of funny when you see it and then you hear it. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's one of my favorite parts of doing uh, katakana. Uh, sando. Sando. <clears throat> uh, this is he. So. Do. 
で、人で、人で、人で、人で、うぶす、人で、あん、だ、だんつ、だんつ、だんつ、あ、いや、はい、だんつ、え、ね、かえ、で、かえで、かえで、かえで、アイデア、アイデア、うん、what could that be? あ、あ、い、あ、で、あ、アイデア、アイデア、アイデア、アイデア。Of course. Well, the I kind of didn't give that away, but I, idea, idea. <clears throat> of course. So, da, da. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? Learning katakana reminds me of a. What is that? Ab lib game or like. It's a Americana board game, or is it an Americana tabletop game? Where, like, Mad Lib? No. Something like that. Where you read the card and it sounds like something else. And then when you,、uh, it's like、uh, different English words put together, but when you say it, it sounds like something else. It sounds nonsensical at first, but it represents a different word or a different phrase、um, that sounds like it, but they. Deliberately, um, it's something like Mad Gab or something. So, the whole point is it's, um, there's a timer, and you're supposed to read the card. And when you read the card, it's like, uh, I don't know. Say, like, celery, right? The word celery, but you compose the celery with different English words that isn't celery, or like a sentence composed of、uh, what katakana is doing, katakana is doing, where you make it sound like something else, but using the la same language. And、uh, you go through as fast as possible, so you, you know, score as much as you can within the time limit. <clears throat> I think it's four players or something. Might have been called like Mad Lib or something like that. That's what this reminds me of. I do this for fun, you know. I, I would take like an English word, like matching. Ma. Mata. Mata. Chi. Nagu? I don't know. Ma. Mata. Matachi? Matuchi? Matachi? Ma. Matsu. Matsuchi? You know, like Matsuchi? Where you put in a T S U? Or it could be like Ma.、Uh, ma. Chi. Ma. Chi. Ma. Chi. That kind of thing. Really, really fun to mess around with. Because then you're kind of messing around with the kana, right? The, you're imagining the kana while、uh, taking anything you see. Like, haru, haru do. Ah, ah, hard. Ah. You're trying to imagine it. <clears throat> Anyways. Yeah. Wait. A. D. Da. Uh, G. Do. Z. Sando. Sando. Sa. Uh, uh. Sa. N. Do. I put Sendo.、Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. 
あれでインドインドインドはい Of course they would put sendo or wait sando sorry sando I'm getting a say say san uh say sa say sa both say sa between hirakana and katakana I'm laxing up I'm being too relaxed not doing my due diligence Oh hey I know this one doresu That's actually a vocab word doresu <clears throat> Neat. That's also kind of rewarding too. When you're doing、uh, the katakana, katakana、uh, exercise, and then when they're randomly generating all these pairings, it actually lands on a katakana that you learn from the lessons, from the units. Not, I wouldn't imagine it's a coincidence.、Uh, And they try to include words, and then they tell you on the bottom in some of the lessons、uh, what the word means, <clears throat> what the kana means.、Uh, en? <clears throat> And we did find out that some of them don't have meanings. So there, there are randomly combinatorial examples.、Uh, do, do, ram, do, rama, do, rama. Oh, yeah. Dra, drama. I think that's drama. Do, rama. Do, rama. Dansu. Dragon. Dragon. That's cool. <clears throat> We know what that is. Dora, 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 This might tell us what Sando is. Sa. Mmm. Do. It's. It is sandwich! Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hold the phone. Shut the front door and hold the phone for a moment. Was Sando a <clears throat> English thing? Like an American English shortening? Or was it taking the Japanese interpretation of Sandoichi and then now people say Sando? Or which came first? I'm so confused. But Sando. Sando is sandwich. I totally forgot about it. I guess. Maybe. I feel like I've seen this combination of kana before. <clears throat> hmm. So Sando is sandwich. Okay. <clears throat> The more you know. I was just kidding. But okay. Alright, we got the. <clears throat> The Bobby Boo Bay Bowl. <clears throat> Bobby Boo Bay Bowl. Or like Bobby. Bobby B Boo Bow. So, ha, ha, he, ha, he, ku, e, ho. Okay. Ba. Ba. Okay. B. Mm hmm. B. 
ปีป้าป้าบืบืปีปีป้าบืจีบืไ <coughs> I thought this was oh who <coughs> who เบ who right เบ right เบเบโบ okay บูบูบูซอมบี้ซอมบี้น่าสวยน่าสโซอืมบีซอมบี้ฮะบีป้าโบโฮเฮ้ยเบ้เว้ยเบ้เฮ้ยบูบูเบ้เออบูบูเฮเทเรบีเทเรบีโอ้เฮ another another one that we've learned เทเรบีเทเรบีตุ๊ชีตุ๊ชีตุ๊ชิอุเมอุเมดรีมอุเมหรือว่าอุเนะอุนาอุเมดรัสเซียเยอะอุอุเมอะรัสเซียรัสเซียอ้ารัสเซียรัสเซียโดโดชีอะโรเซียรอนรีรอนรี don't think we have a don't know if that's a word รอนรี弱い it it kind of sounds like lonely 弱い弱い弱い um ชิเมรุฮามิตซุฮามิตซุโอตุสุโอตุสุคันยอคันยอเออโตโตโคโรโตโคโรโตโคโรทอนเนลุทอนเนลุทอนเนลุโอนเนลุโตนเนลุลุทานอไรทานอทานออันยอคันยอทุยอีทุยอีทุยอี太い太い太い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い弱い
つ強い強いロシアロシアロシア Oh, that's different from. <clears throat> oh, wait, maybe that's the same. So, not used to seeing the Roma G <clears throat> Any, anymore. Restaurant. 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 Okay. <clears throat> um. Today. De- すすどうとだだうんレストランレストランあレストランあんよあんよよわい Uh, oh, eat. <clears> Toy <throat> oh, day. La Rondi. Yo, yo, son, yo, son. Yo, why? Can yo? Mexico. Mexico? Oh my god, Mexico. Me- uh, it's a、uh, Mexico. <clears throat> Mexico. 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 It's,、uh, it's a headache, man. Me. Ki. Su. Or me. Oh no, it's she. Mexico. 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 <clears throat> Mexico. Mexico. <clears throat> When it's said fast, it's. You, you don't see it. You don't hear it. At least in my opinion. The door is open. Oh, there wasn't 76. We did it! Okay, the door is open. <clears throat> We did it. There were some fun ones in there. Okay,、uh, let's learn some new. Oh,、uh, this might be the summary, actually. Yeah, let's do it. We'll get through、uh, five lessons for this one, right? Oh, hey!、Uh, it's re,、uh, resu, right? Restoran. 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 Resu. Do da n Restaurant. 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 <clears throat> I like their、uh, classic. It's so interesting、uh, the imagery that they decide to go with for restaurant. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. That imagery is so interesting. What an interesting choice. Honestly, that's as American as I can be. My imagery of a restaurant doesn't.、Uh, the first thing that shoots into my head, I don't see this. I actually see a, a quite a little different image than this. But I get it. Restaurant. <clears throat> restaurant. This restaurant is good. Alright, alright. <clears throat> oh wow, I haven't missed anything today, interestingly enough.、Uh, この,この restaurant. Restaurant. は、いいですね。Uh, this is this. Wait, this 
restaurant is nice, isn't it? Udon wa ikura desu ka? Wait, is that really saying what I think it is? Udon? Udon wa. Ah ha 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 ha. Udon wa. I mean, I already Udon wa. Udon. Udon is classic. <clears throat> it's like saying ramen. Ramen. And I sometimes say ramen. Thanks to Chinese, I suppose. But udon, udon wa. Uh oh, how much it costs? Ikura, uh, ikura. So udon wa ikura desu ka? How much is udon? Is the udon, udon? <clears throat> All right, time to check. Object. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> uh, udon. Udon. Kono restaurant wa nigiyaka desu ne. Kono restaurant. Rest. Uh, Restaurant. Restaurant. Wa. Uh, Niki. Niki yaka? Niki yaka. Lively? Niki yaka desu ne. This restaurant. Whoops. Is lively, isn't it? Niki yaka? Yeah. Tempura wa ikura desu ka? Tempura. 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 Of course. Classic. Tempura. It kind of even looks like tempura, really. The, the kana actually even looks like tempura. <laughs> uh, or maybe that's just the staring at kana for too long. Uh, tempura. Tempura wa uh, iku, ikura desu ka? Tempura wa ikura desu ka? How much is the tempura? A bit? What? We're gonna have a phrase for a bit? Cute. Tempura wa 500 yen desu. Tempura. Tempura wa 500 yen desu? I think that's what I heard. Tempura. Tempura wa 500 yen Des? Soba. Oh, oops. Soba. Soba. <gasps> soba. We have soba, soba as well. Oh my gosh. Des. They should have just started with all these. Tempura wa 500 yen desu. Yeah. Tempura wa 500 yen desu. Kono tempura wo kudasai. Oh. 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 To through with. Okay, how does this fit in it? Let's see. Oh no. Oh no, tempura. Oh. Kudasai. Kudasai. Oh. Oh. What? Oh. Hmm. Oh. Say what? Oh no, tempura, oh. Kudasai. Oh!
this temp tempura, please? <clears throat> yeah, so this oh. is a interesting. Wonder what that's. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I know it's a particle, but uh, when I was stuck there, I was wondering what the particle does. Oh, it's. I know it's an object marker, but I didn't realize you can just end with the object marker. <laughs> so, like, I was curious if it was serving for another particle. I so uh, we've seen the particle once already, the all particle. But I haven't ever seen it end next to, like, just end, uh, without a pred- like, where the predicate is, right? So, you can end with an ult without a predicate? Or was that a fragmented response? Well, is that just a fragmented response? Oh, that's how you order things? Okay, okay. I see. Yeah, I was looking for a predicate. That's that was the problem. I I got lost in by saying like, oh, that's just how you order things. Ah, okay, okay. Um, someone did tell me that though. Someone did tell me er way way early on, like maybe day two, that uh you can still write and say something that is a fragment, right? It's acceptable. Like for example, uh, uh, who is this umbrella? Uh, who does this umbrella belong to? And you can just say Watashi no, right? Just Watashi no with no uh, particles, right? I mean, without no predicates. It's just Watashi no. Yeah, so for a moment there, I'm like, what the heck? Where the heck is the particle at? I mean, where is the predicate at? And that makes sense now. I did just didn't... It took me a while. I'm like, am, am I supposed to find <laughs> the predicate somewhere? Okay, okay. That's... I mean... I, I'll have to get used to that. Uh, so interesting. Uh, sushi... 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 Sushi te soku wa e shoku shoku e shoku wa uh, ikura ikura desu ka? Okay. <laughs> Again, I actually find it, um, it's not, uh, a lot of people feel like, um, it, it's very negative feeling when you're trying to figure something out. I actually find this very entertaining. Like, I like being bewildered. So when I get bewildered, I remember it more vividly. But uh, a lot of individuals will probably just jump right away and say, you know, that's a particle and that's just like, this is how to explain it and stuff. So like, I, I get it. Fair enough. But man, that is a weird feeling when suddenly you're looking for predicate and you realize how often you're relying on a predicate up to this point. And there's no grammar, right? Grammar still hasn't come up yet. And that's kind of one of the things that people... Actually, quite a lot of uh, the most one of the most common comments so far in my 23 days of Japanese is people keep harping on the idea that there aren't any grammar points. And I get it. That was the today's uh, digression about uh, grammar points, and there aren't any grammar points. It's kind of fun trying to figure it out or put the pieces together. Uh, sushi. Okay, sushi te teyoku, uh, te sh shoku, shio shoku. Sushi te shoku wa ikura desu ka? Sushi te shoku wa ikura desu ka? Yeah, te shoku. Sushi te shoku wa ikura, ikura, ikura. I'm saying it correctly, but I feel like there's a missing syllable. Okay, sushi te te shoku. Sushi te shoku wa ikura, ikura desu ka? Ikura desu ka? Sushi, sushi te shoku wa ikura, ikura desu ka? It'll be okay tomorrow. How much is the 
Tsushi. Tsushi. Tekura. Ah. Teshoku. Teshoku. Sushi Teshoku wa ikura desu ka? Sushi Teshoku wa ikura desu ka? Teshoku. Yeah, Teshoku said. Teshoku said. The sushi Teshoku. How much is the sushi meal set? Right. Tempura Teshoku wa ikura desu ka? Tempura Teshoku wa. I couldn't hear. Tempura Teshoku wa ikura desu ka? Ikura. Yeah. Wa ikura. Ikura desu ka? So. Tempura. Tempura? Tempura. Wa. Oh no. Tempura. Uh, te shoku. Te shoku. Wa. Ikura. Ikura. ikura desu. desu. Ka. Tempura teshoku wa ikura desu ka? Tempura. Tempura teshoku wa uh, ikura desu ka? Tempura. Tempura teshoku wa ikura desu ka? Sumimasen. Ocha o kudasai. Sumimasen. Ocha o kudasai. Okay. Got it. Excuse me. Green tea, please. Okay. Oh, what a. Hiru. Oh. Uh, Hiru Gohan, which is lunch. Hiru Gohan. Hiru Gohan. Uh, Udon. Udon. Uh, Ban Gohan. Ban Gohan. Ban Gohan. Dinner. Uh, wait. Dasei. What the heck? Dasai. Dasai, sorry. Dasai. And then. Atara, whoa, 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 no, no, no. Uh, this is Atama, Atama, uh, Atama ga i. Atama ga. Sumimasen. Smart, smart. Ramen o kudasai. Sumimasen, ramen, ramen o kudasai. I, I kind of like this. I, I do enjoy this, the way they order food. Yes, excuse, I mean, excuse me. Ramen o kudasai. Sumimasen, udon o kudasai. Udon o kudasai. Sumimasen, udon o kudasai. How much is the curry meal set? Okay. Tare, tare, te, uh, te sho, te shoku. Yeah, sho shoku. Yes, okay. Uh, kare te shoku wa ikara, ikara desu ka? Right? So. Steki. Whoops. Just kidding. Um. Kare. Uh. Te shoku. Te shoku. Te shoku. Teishoku wa ikara ik, i, ikura 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 yes. desu ka? Uh, are are teishoku teishoku wa ikara desu ka? Sushi <coughs> te, Sushi Sushi te shoku wa ikara desu ka? Getting a little closer. Sushi te shoku wa ikura, ikura desu ka? Okay, hey, that's alright. It's not too bad. Just gotta get a bit more articulate. Mitsu. Mizu. Mizu. Saka terebe terebi terebi mizu o kudasai Oh hey mizu mizu o mizu 
How come I didn't get this Mizuo. kanji yet? Oh, this is my new kanji. Mizuo. We got we got uh Mizu. So Mizuo Kudasai. Water, please. Mizuo Hitotsu Kudasai. Dotsu. Hitotsu. Dotsu. Oh. Dotsu. Hitotsu. Hmm. Okay. Mizuo Hitotsu. 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 Hitotsu Kudasai. Okay. Oh, Tatsu. Tatsu. Interesting. Tatsu. Tatsu. Itotsu. Tatsu. Tatsu. Okay. Good to say. Ah, ah. Interesting. Ah. An interjection. Ah. Ah. Ochao kudasai. I want to get used to saying ah instead of oh. I say oh a lot instead of ah. But. Fine, ah, uh, that's good. Okay. Ah, Mizuo Kudasai. Ah, ah. Mizu, Mizuo. Mizu, Mizu. Oh. oh, Kudasai. Kudasai. Ah, Kohi o Kudasai. Ah, Kohi o Kudasai. Okay, we're good. Uh, ice coffee. You can't have any introduction you want. Interjections are written in hiragana. Oh, okay. So can I just like O it and E it or A it? And that's just be, it'd be okay. It wouldn't throw people off. Well, I, mm, it's like A is like I too, right? But in context, you can probably just throw in anything. Eto. Oh, ooh, I like Eto. Yeah, true. Eto. Hmm. I like it though. I have heard it though quite a bit. It though. I want to naturally put in interjections now. Uh, sometimes when I'm looking for an answer, I'm I'm constantly telling myself doko deska. <laughs> like, um, you know, when I'm searching in a word bank, I'm like, man, like doko deska or eh to express shock with excitement. Yeah, yeah, or or disappointment. Apparently, apparently, or disappointment. Like, eh? 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 And then the shock one is like, eh? <laughs> we, I did this yesterday, but it, it's often my impersonation. It's my over exaggerated impersonation of a uh, mass media portrayal of Japanese characters. When, when someone, like, when you tell someone extremely exciting things, and they're like, eh, eh, that that's more like a suspicious disappointment thing. And then you have the eh, mm, which is a shock one, kind of funny. Uh, I think someone, uh, a stand-up comedian does a much better impression. Have you heard the One Piece alphabet of laughs? No, I have not. You watch One Piece? Sorry, I know that's a, a side side note, but not really. What is the ja, pizza one piece alphabet of laughs? Ja. 
I'll have to look that up if it requires a video. Uh, the other the other day, I rewatched the yesterday. I rewatched a John Cena's. Yeah, look it up. I yesterday I watched the John Cena's uh, been chi uh been chilling right be chilling, being chilling, uh little like recording commercial thing, and because uh, uh I imagine a very young person told me like I they wrote been chilling with the ice cream and I forgot that I totally forgot that and I told the person like the last thing I remember with John Cena is technically the Mortal Kombat Peacemaker character but the last the first thing that came to mind was the da da da, da thing yeah so then I watched the clip and I get it Ben Chilling Ben Chilling for a uh, for ice cream and I started thinking that's where I led to all the Fujonese thing today, earlier today, but I don't actually know what my parents call ice cream. Like, uh, Bing Doi. Bing Doi is like pop uh, ice cream popsicle thing. It's just the combination of Doi, which is chopstick, and ice. So Bing Doi. Bing Doi. And, um, it might be... Yeah, Bing, you could put like Bing in front of cream. I only know the word for sauce. <laughs> Bing K, Bing K Loon. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's probably like the sauce or cream or something like, uh, uh, there's another word for ice cream. It's not bing chilling. It's not bing chilling. It's uh something else. Uh sh uh shui gao? No. Shui go? Shui go? Something like that? Shui go? Like go is the thing I'm thinking of. The go. Like gao. Go. The uh like a cream. Like dango. Kind of thing. Dango, bingo, kind of thing. So I could say like in uh in Fujianese, I would say something like bingo, which is just ice the uh, cream. And when you say like dango, it's about like a, it's a cake, right? Dango is a cake. So you think about the cream thing. So that's what I would think of. And I was at a loss. I was like, Bing chilling. What does Bing Chilling sound like? It, it sounds like Bing Chilling, and I get it. I get it. The meme is basically you're just chilling, but it's ice cream. I, it took me a while, and I forgot that John Cena did a commercial or something. He's very... Okay, without sounding really weird, but John Cena is this like character, you know? He's like very... He's like an embodiment of masculinity. But it, he was really adorable in that commercial. And I kind of like that. I, I am a big fan of the whole gentle giant archetype. He, he, you know, John Cena is like very much like Dwayne Johnson, where they kind of got in this role where they're very lovable personalities, at least on behind the camera or in front of the camera. But they're like, they're, <laughs> they're built, right? Anyways, I love that contrast. And anime, the Japanese culture really does a lot to kind of celebrate that, where you can have people who are incredibly stoic and powerful, but still incredibly soft-hearted and charming, right? As opposed to the long eight of Egon, you know, years beyond of the Western culture, where like maybe far more at its peak 20 years ago, where you have the big buff guys being incredibly strong and like aggressive and you know arrogant and foolhardy kind of thing so it's kind of nice anyways been ch <laughs> being chilling I, I had no idea <laughs> it only took me going back and like I get it being chilling it's kind of like a Korean bing su right bing su 
Uh, shaved ice. Bing Su. What was the particle from 30 minutes ago? The particle? O? Oh? This O. Oh. Pizzo. Pizzo. Ja. Ja. Oh, you can just go with Ja, huh? Okay, then. Well, then. Ja. <laughs> it comes full circle. It comes full circle. Ja. Yeah. And Ja. So, um, what you call it, uh, Victor, uh, for the longest time, Jane, Jane is, um, the thing that I always say to my parents, like, Ja, uh, and it means, it's very similar. Ja. It actually means the same thing, in this case. So, if you just shorten it to Ja, 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 it's fine. So, in Fujianese, when you say Ja, or Jane, I, I add ne because it kind of does like the emphasis in ja ne do wa. Ja ne do wa. So ja. It means like, yeah, got it. Okay. Fair. That kind of thing. Ja. So it's like, okay then. <laughs> I I didn't think, because the only, uh, ja. whenever ja was introduced, it was ja, janai, right? Janai, or ja ne, sorry, ja ne, instead of ja in this context but it's kind of uh humorous i may be a coincidence i don't know if it's a coincidence or not that ja. there's an interjection that would imply well then okay sure ja right ja pizza o pizza o kudasai do i have to say okay then i suppose ja okay then pizza please you love how Duolingo adds random interjections? I do enjoy that. I certainly love adding interjections. Uh, English, I had interjections all the time. So it feels right at home. Quite, quite a bit. じゃあ、カレーをください。じゃあ、カレー。カレー、カレーをください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。ジュースを2つください。
but water is G. So water is G. So nang yi ji. Nang nang yi ji. So I don't know if I would ever say nan ji where it's two just like two water. So it's two? Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Futu, uh, futatsu. I get it. Futa, futatsu. And yeah, okay, I get it. Fair enough. Yeah. Nangi. Nangi soi. Ito, futo, meat, yon, itsu. Okay. I see. I guess we'll count up at some point too. And just say futanari, bro. <laughs> futanari. <laughs> what does that even mean, futanari? Is that a questionable thing? Why are you capping? Did I say something? Oh, okay. Let's not do that again. Okay. No, no more of that because uh that is not good yeah oh oh you mean hermaphrodites that's okay hermatitism is that's fine but i don't know how japanese people take hermatitism but for me uh let's try to keep that down to a minimum if it's something disagreeable that's usually when people first hear uh, huta. Okay. Well, to me, in English, hermatitism is not, like, that's not, it's just something. Um, but if it's disagreeable, if it's a disagreeable term for Japanese people, then fair enough. But I am well beyond that maturity at this point. Hermatitism is, uh, hermatitis, uh, hermatitis. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not very good with that word. But anyways. It's an adult tag more than a social topic. I mean, that's fine. Hermaphrodites is also probably not less of a topic, but more of a condition. Anyways, well, I guess how <clears throat> it is a hentai theme. I imagine it is a hentai theme for sure. I'm most, uh, the funny, the funny thing here is, I mean, I'm almost 40 years old. You can probably talk about hentai and stuff, but, um, the, my biggest concern is if it's just a disrespectful term. Then I need to know if it's contextually a disrespectful term or just some special interest term. Because um, it's not, that's a different perspective, right? Okay. Well, yeah. You're out of your mind, you're baked out of your mind on NyQuil. Well, hopefully you don't <laughs> do something that, uh, and get it and get yourself in sketchy waters, right? But if it's a hentai, uh, like word or something, that's fine. We're adults here, okay? So, but disrespectful words, that's a little different. Uh, kohi, kohi o, kohi ho, o, uh, hito, hitotsu. Hitotsu. One coffee. Please. Kuda, kudasai. Alright. Uh, oh my gosh. You would put in shichiji. Shichiji. I can shichiji. I'm never gonna escape shichiji. And then mitsu. Mizu. Mizu. Wow. Oh. That one's a little extended. Uh, and then throw in watashi. Watashi. Uh, hachi. Hachi. 
And then... Nihon? Ni... Bento of Tatsu Kudasai. Bento of Tatsu... Bento of Tatsu Kudasai. Two box luncheons. Please. It's kind of nice that, uh... After learning the last unit, the last unit, the sentences got really long. Like, they were really long. And now we're introducing new vocabularies and the sentences kind of, sort of, or not, quote unquote, the phrases. I'm going to, it's more accurately saying the phrases contracted a little because holy heck. Yeah. It's, it contracted a little because... Sometimes it gets a little, little uh, it exhausts me very long. So, um, what was this? Ja, uh, ja, ja, <laughs> ja. I, I'm so used to it. Like, that's good. That's good. That's this is natural. This is unusually natural. Ja, pizza, pizza, o pizza. Kudasai. o kudasai. Kudasai. Just saying ja is good enough, actually. Ja. Uh, is is so close to Fujianese? It's it's kind of nice. Uh, one udon udon mill mill set, please. <clears throat> so, uh, udon udon teishako uh teish uh teishoko tei Teishoku, shoku, teishoku, teishoku, hito, hitotsu, kudasai. Udon, udon, teishoku, teishoku, hitotsu, kudasai. 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 Hey, uh, let's get three more, two more lessons. Including the oh, three more lessons, including this one, and it's set up for the review for next time. Mizuo yotsu kudasai. Uh, Mizuo yotsu. Yotsu. Okay. Yotsu. 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 Kudasai. I guess we are gonna count up. So four waters. Mitsu. Mizu, Mizu, Mizuo, Mizuo, Yotsu, Yotsu, Kudasai. Eto, Mizuo, Kudasai. Eto, Eto. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, oh, uh, take care, Victor. Thanks for stopping by. Eto, this. Although it's Eto. Interesting. I'm guessing it's kind of like a e a where uh, most people have shortened it in uh, regular speak. It's like e a. Um, there was a lot of comments about just saying e a or ya ya. And uh, um, I imagine it's just eto instead of eto eto eto. Eto Mitsuo Kudasai. Mizu Mizuo Kudasai. Onigiri o hitotsu kudasai. Onigiri? Dang. Onigiri o. We're getting everything. Yeah, and eti, yeah. I, uh, on YouTube. On YouTube, since I've been looking up a lot of Japanese stuff and like language stuff, um, lots of the people, uh, they do contractions as well. Um, what I mean is, uh, they do compress the kana, uh, in language, in Japanese, j just like, uh, English, where they just shorten things, like, add things, add modifiers, like, hey -o, instead of hey, hi, right, hey into hi from hello. Uh, onigiri, onigiri o hito, hitotsu, hitotsu, kudasai. Uh, 
one rice ball. I don't even say rice ball anymore. I say onigiri. Onigiri. onigiri I legit just say onigiri instead of a uh, rice ball most of the time these days. I don't think in any other cuisine I would say what rice balls. Closest I have in Fujianese is Niran. 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 Uh, no. Nikyu? Nikyu? Is it Nikyu? It might be Nikyu. 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 It could be Nikyu. No, that kind of sounds like fish eggs. <laughs> Fish balls. Fish balls. I don't think I've ever said rice balls. Boom. Boom gyu. <laughs> oh, but it could also mean gyu as in dumplings. Oh. Uh, yeah, gyu means a lot of things. On the intonation. Okay, anyway. One rice ball. Onigiri wo. Onigiri wo hitotsu. Hitotsu. Okay. I heard. Sumimasen. Uh, onigiri. 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 Oh. Tatsu. 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 ください。すみません。おにぎりを二つください。いや、二つ、二つ、ください。えっ、ー、と、コーヒーをください。You've never learned Chinese food words after like 18 years? Me too, actually. I, I don't think I've ever learned new Chinese food words. So, uh, what are some Fujonese words? Uh, they, I think they sound largely the same, right? No, never mind. Like fun, uh, we just talked about this earlier today. Fun, like fun is bowl. Like that's I don't know if there's a Mandarin word close to bowl. And uh, and sushi is just sushi. My parents so like I asked my parents like what is sushi? Like fish balls is the closest thing to sushi. <laughs> Sorry. If there are any like cook uh, food connoisseurs out there, that probably was the most insulting thing I could probably probably say. Comparing sushi with fish balls. Jianu, <laughs> uh, right? Jianu. Oh, one. Oh, is one really? Is is one really rice? Huh. I only I only uh heard of fun like uh a fun or two fun or maybe it's one a one mm. hmm one three I have no I sorry like it's gonna we're gonna have to wait till Mandarin for that it's a bowl oh one oh oh bowl Rice is fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One. One. Uh, which, by the way, in Fujonese is the same. Uh, is it, uh, the intonation is different, though. It's uh, one. Which, maybe it's the same, now that I think about it. It's one. So it's not... Uh, I, I don't know one, three, if that's what it is. But yeah, none of that really helps. Because uh, I actually have no idea what that phonetic stuff is. But... And the symbol stuff is. I do. I do see it on YouTube videos, though. I I can't read any of that, uh, obviously. But, oh, one, one, maybe it's the same. Like Iga. Uh, whoops. I just swapped to uh, Mandarin. So e one. So 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 one. So one, as in like one bowl, like so one, as opposed to. 
Ego one. Maybe. Three is a weird one. Two is up. Four is down. One is high and flat. Ugh. Gosh. What does Duolingo do? For, for Mandarin. <laughs> I we'll, we'll find out. Uh, it'll be like uh, two or three months before we'll find out. For myself. But that's kind of funny. えっと、コーヒーをください。えっと、コーヒー、コーヒーをください。3 is how and ni how. Okay, how? えっと、えっと、コーヒー、コーヒーをください。ください。what about the dot one? Is that dip into the rise? I don't know. I have no idea. Ni hao is uh, all I can... That's all I can pronounce. Like what I mean is... I have no idea if I'm going down or up. Like ni hao. That's, that's the closest thing I would say. And then in Fujonese is ni hao. Oh, oh. Oh, you might be responding to Victor, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> That's the dip into the rise. Oh, you're responding to Victor about what the dotted one. The dip into the rise. How do you even... <laughs> Mandarin's gonna be so much fun, too. <laughs> Dang. Uh, uh... Fall and then rise. Interesting. So, one thing's for sure is though, um, I have vocal training. I have vocal training for Chinese. I have vocal uh, vocal training for Chinese. Uh, it's it's a lot harder for Japanese. So, I'm actually picking Japanese as one of the ones that are farthest away from my proficiency. And then uh, Spanish comes after Mandarin because I actually have Spanish schooling. So then, uh, even the writing portions are going to be a little bit offset. So we started with the deep ones, the deep cut. And also, by the way, just so anyone knows... Yeah, take care, Victor. Thanks for chiming in one last time. Also, just for the record, Duolingo, the CEO of Duolingo is uh, uh, Latina. Or not Latina, Hispanic. Well, like Central American, Central American, Guatemalan. Guatemalan, to be precise. And the flagship language for Duolingo is Spanish. So all the comments about Japanese in so far, Japanese is actually the second tier, second tier uh, language. So what I mean is um, in development cycle, it, it was like around A, right? The S tier, the flagship, the flagship language was actually Spanish and the others. So they are the longest and it's actually because of Spanish being one of the core foundations of this language. So whenever someone says like, it's crazy when people say, oh, I had this experience. And then they just assume Duolingo is the same experience around. There are worse experiences. Actually, I have known that other languages are even lower, right? There are, uh, there are newer languages and lower languages that Still needs fleshing out but when we go to like spanish the japanese is it's pretty okay but there are languages above that in duolingo's development cycle and spanish is one of them historically as well ah. Ah. Onigiri wo. Ah, okay ah, onigiri wa... mitsu, mitsu. Mitsu. Oh yeah, we just jumped to four. We skipped Mitsu. over three. Mitsu. Yotsu. Mitsu. Mitsu. Kudasai. That's a little confusing. Mitsu. Three uh, rice balls. Please. Oh! It's O? Oh, it's I. <laughs> 
コーヒーを3つください。Oh my gosh, you need to, you need to distinguish between interjections. The JQX don't exist in the West. They're retroflex promotions. Yeah, sure. When the letter ones are joined with you, the, yeah, I'm not gonna. As much as you're gonna share with your pronunciation,、uh, even though I don't understand all the phonetics, I have all the sound training for those syllables. I just. Eventually, I need to associate them, but this would be an inappropriate time to associate them. Sumimasen, kohi o mitsu kudasai. Sumimasen, kohi o. Sumimasen, kohi o mitsu kudasai. Wait, you can do that? Wait. Sumimasen, kohi o mitsu kudasai. Oh, never mind. Somehow I just lost the meat too. Ah, kohi o yotsu kudasai. Alright, alright, which one's ah? It's o, right? <laughs> ah, ko, kohi o yotsu kudasai. Heckin' O, ah. Eto, tempura o kudasai. Eto, tempura o kudasai. It's also a little bit relaxing because it ha happens half the, half the vocab I'm familiar with already. Eto, o cha o kudasai. えっと、お茶くだ、お茶をください。グリーンティー、プリーズ。えっと、ケーキをください。えっと、ケーキをください。<笑>えっと。<笑>じゃあ、おにぎりを四つください。じゃあ、あ、oh, I like、I really like じゃあ。It's so close. Ja ani, ja oni, onigiri, right?、Uh, ja onigiri, onigiri o yotsu, kudasai.、Uh, which one's ja? Oh, okay then. Yotsu, <laughs> onigiri.、Uh, おにぎりくださいラーメン定食を四つくださいラーメン定食あおやラーメン定食あ定食定食食定食ラーメン定食を四つくださいラーメン定食をよ四つください。四つください。お、四つください。え、yeah. for ramen meal sets plate。Yes。じゃあお茶を三つください。<笑>じゃあお茶を。みつくださいみつくださいみつくださいみつくださいじゃあお茶お茶をみつくださいじゃあお茶をみつくださいあオッケーだんあ Three, three, all c h a t and three green teas, please. Ja, bento o yotsu kudasai. Ja, ja, bento o, uh, bento, uh, bento o yotsu kudasai. Okay.
じゃあ弁当弁当を四つ四つくださいうどん定食を三つくださいうどんうどん定,定食を三つください三つくださいオーケーはい3うどん定食定食くださいじゃあカレー定食を三つくださいオッケーじゃあカレー定食を三つください3つくださいはいじゃあじゃあ,あ3つあ,あ what was it? カレーカレーエッチョくださいおにぎりを三つください。あ、uh,、おにぎりを三つ。Wait, why is it? Oh, that was the previous mistake. What did I do? Oh, right. It's an O. Ah, ah. <laughs> right. Ah, ah. おにぎりを三つください。Okay. Three. Uh, two more lessons. Salad. Sadu,、uh, sada, sarada. Really? Sarada? Huh. Sarada o mitsu kudasai. Sarada o mitsu kudasai. <laughs> sarada. Sarada. Interesting. Uh. みつさるだくださいおおきいですねおおきいですねおおきいおおきいおおきいおおきいおおきい We got it another kanji unlocked おおきいですねおおきいですねああ。It's big, isn't it? <笑>その弁当は大きいですね。その弁当は大きいですね。その。その弁当。ああ、弁当。は大きい。大きい。大きいですね。ですね。その弁当は大きいですね。Big just stretch out your arms really far. <笑>すみません。サラダを四つください。あ、すみません。サラダ、サラダを、あ、四つください。四つください。す、すみません。すみません。サラダを四つください。四つください。え、ください。すみません。サラダを四つください。Excuse me. 四つ。Four salads, please. みそ汁はどうですか ?What is it? What's actually it? I mean, that's what they're saying. Stretch out your arms really far. Miso shiru. Miso shiru. Miso shiru. Miso shiru. Interesting. Miso shiru. 
味噌汁。So, miso, shiru. So you can combine them. Interesting. Nice. Miso, shiru.、Uh, that's more or less, I guess, most how most work. Tong. Miso tong. I don't actually know what miso is. Did they just say miso? The etymology for Oki or O is a man with his arms way out to say it's really big. Oh, 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 oh. I see. Neat. Oh, I see. I got it. Yeah, that does look like a man with the arms stretched out. Got it. Oki. The O. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Uh, miso, miso shiru, shiru. Miso,、uh, miso shiru. Wa, uh, wa. Wa do desu ka? Wa do desu ka? Interesting. Miso shiru wa do desu ka? Oh, yeah, uh, do, yeah, uh, do, uh, yeah, do, do, right, do desu ka? Oh, wa do desu ka? Oh, yeah. It brought back another one. Wow, it's been a while since, we, since I've seen the doll. Huh. How's the miso soup? Mi, miso shiru, uh, miso, miso shiru wa do desu ka? Nakayama san, miso shiru wa do desu ka? Okay. Nakayama. Na, Nakayama san. san. Wa. Wa. No. Wa. Wait. Nakayama san. Miso. Are they separate? No. Miso, Miso shiru. Miso shiru. Wa. Wa. Do desu ka? Do desu ka?、Uh, why did you.、Desu. Why did you pop it all the way over there, please? Stop. Nakayama san. Miso shiru wa do desu ka? Miso shiru wa do desu ka? Tanaka san, miso shiru wa do desu ka? Okay, okay, I get it. I get it. Kono soba wa yasui desu ne. Soba. Okay, there's soba. Kono soba wa yasashi. Wait. Ya, yasui. Yasui. Whoops. Yasui desu. Desu ne. Okay. So no. Uh, so no soba wa yas yasui desu ne?、Uh, this soba. Oops. This soba is cheap, isn't it? Oh no soba wa yasui desu ne? Soba. Soba. So no soba wa oishi desu ka? So no soba. So, so no soba wa oishi desu ne? A、uh, desu ka? So no soba.、Uh, so no soba wa oishi desu ka? Oh my gosh. These combinations of. Ooh. Kinda hard to. Kinda hard to see. Okay. Um. Is. That. Soba, tasty. Yeah. Sono, yeah, sono, sono soba wa oishi desu ka? Yeah. Oki. 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 Uh, Jew. Jew. Oki. Oki. Uh, Mizu. Mizu. Uh, Chichi. Chichi. And Juni. Juni. Naomi san, miso shiru wa do desu ka? Naomi san, miso shiru. Miso shiru wa do desu ka? Ah,、uh, Miss Naomi. 
How's the miso soup? This pizza is big, isn't it? <laughs> uh, kono, uh, kono pizza wa ooki desu ne? Kono. Kono pizza wa pizza wa ooki desu ne? Desu ne? Uh, this soba, this soba is cheap, isn't it? Uh, kono. Kono soba, kono soba wa yasui desu ne? Kono. Kono soba. Soba. Wa. wa. Soba wa yasui. Yasui. Yasui desu ne? ne. Hmm. One more lesson. Black tea? Oh, interesting. Specifically, black tea. So it's probably kuro, kuro cha. Or, oh, kocha. 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 Oh, interesting. Kocha. Huh. Neat. Very neat. Kocha. Eto, kocha o yotsu kudasai. Eto. Eto kocha kocha wa yotsu kudasai. Uh, okay. Speaking of bing bing chilling, bing chilling and bingo and. Lots of other phrases that I can think of, but uh, let's see. Ah, uh, ah, uh, e oh, aisu, aisu, kuri, kuri, ma, mu, ice, ice cream. Okay, <laughs> ice cream, ice cream, <laughs> ice cream. Got it. Some are meant to be read sideways. Yeah, I noticed. Indy shared about that. Ko and Kocha is in a mutation of Koro. It's a localization. That doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Uh, what you're circumventing is not what is, it isn't. It's how I remember it, so... Regardless of what you say, I know it's Kocha because I think of Kuro. But thanks for the information, FYI. I didn't say it was a mutation, but hey, you can infer that if you want. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, oh, hito, Oh yeah, there's no, uh... There's no, there's an, there's an actual, um, beat there. Uh, ice cream, well, ice, ice cream. Ice cream, oh, hitotsu, hitotsu, kudasai. Iced. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Chisai desu ne. Chisai desu ne. Chisai. Oh, we got chisai. Chi. Chisai. Okay. Chi. Chisai. Chisai. Okay. Chisai desu ne. It's small, isn't it? <laughs> uh, chisai. Chisai. Ah, kocha o futatsu kudasai. Ah, kocha. Ai, kocha. Kocha o, ai, kocha o, u, utatsu, right, utatsu. Uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, kocha, ah, uh, kocha, kocha o, utatsu, utatsu, kudasai. Which one's ah, uh, o? <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah, uh, dotsu. 
Go to two black teas, please. Scoshi Oki, this ne Scoshi Scoshi Scoshi. Oh, I have heard this phrase before. Scoshi 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 O Scoshi Oki Des ne Wow. <laughs> Oki. Interesting. Scoshi. <laughs> uh, Desne. Uh, it's a bit big. <laughs> it's. <laughs> uh, these phrases are hilarious. Scoshi. 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 <laughs> Scoshi. Ice coffee, of course. Ice Ice coffee. Ice coffee, wa do deska. Uh, how's the ice coffee? Yamaguchi san, ice coffee, wa do deska? Yamaguchi san. San wa. Ice coffee. Ice coffee. Whoops. What? 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 Do deska. Do deska. She's addressing Yamaguchi san. Chisai. Oh, right. Chisai. Chisai. Ah, chisai. Chisai. Ken-san, ice coffee wa dou desu ka? Ken-san, ice coffee wa dou desu ka? Ken-san, ice coffee wa dou desu ka? Chisai. Chisai. Oki. Uh, uh, Tanaka. Tanaka. Uh, Mitsu. Mitsu. And Nihon. Nihon. Okay. This pizza is a bit expensive, isn't it? Okay. Oh no, pizza. Ooh. Wait, hold up. Hmm. We can still do that. So, kono kono pizza wa kono pizza wa uh sukoshi sukoshi is sukoshi expensive. Uh, it's probably su su uh te tekai yeah tekai tekai so kono kono pizza wa shikoshi tekai desu ne kono kono pizza wa shikoshi shikoshi tekai tekai Yes, ne. Yes, ne. This tempura is small, isn't it? Okay. Uh, kono kono tempura wa jisai jisai yes, ne. Wow, I still remember the time when jisai was a butt and oki was a butt, but now now it's like it's nice seeing these words again. Kono. kono. Oh no, tempura. 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 Wa. Wa. Chisai. 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 Desu ne? Desu ne. Hooray! <laughs> that、uh, celebratory bear smile. Alright! 
uh i love it i love it i love it we got we got so so much more oh and we got the rest of our kanji so tomorrow we're gonna do the wrap up for this food thing right food ordering food and thing then hit up that kanji So we got what? Mizu? Uh, Mizu? O? O? In Oki? And Chi? Uh, Chi? In Chi Sai? Neat! Oh no. Oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it just keeps going. Yeah, every, every unit there's kanji. Nice. And I guess we cleared these things but i really need to hit some more hirakana i think i'm rustier on hirakana than i am on katakana hmm all right oh that's a wrap today maybe i'll have some content tomorrow actually nothing oddly enough not much has happened today but we'll probably start right away. I was only expecting to spend the first two hours talking about something. But hey, when guest comes up, we talk about stuff. All right, folks. There you have it. End of day 23. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening. Always feel free to, you know, comment, share. Be ready to discuss. Arguments aside, I suppose. Have fun learning, sharing stories. Learning a language is more of a life's journey than it is a sprint to the end, in my opinion. Agree to disagree, I suppose, if you reach an impasse. But life is a journey worth living, much like learning a language as a life skill, improving your form of communication, illustrating compassion and culturalism, right? Learning a language is a lens, in my opinion, into cultural cultural sharing as opposed to a forceful projection of one's own opinions and culture onto another person. You don't usually end up encouraging people to learn language or share in your culturalism if you do not exercise passion or compassion, in my opinion. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Keep on learning, immerse in culturalism, I suppose. Until next time, mata ashita. Gane.